inform for all participants both on site live from the Universitas Bakri Campus at the Diplomatic Room Bakri Tower, Jakarta, Indonesia, and also online through the Zoom platforms to get ready. So before we start, we would like to inform you about the general rules during the conference. First, please kindly stay seated and stay present. Be aware of your surroundings. Next, please fill the Become Pack attendance form, as can be seen in the screen. Do not interrupt other speakers by any distracting sounds or movement. Last is to do respect. Because the key to a successful hybrid international conference is to remember that you are in a meeting. So please kindly give your full attention to the participant as you would if you were in the same room. Before we start the program, let us watch the safety induction for Diplomatic Room Bakri Tower. Selamat datang di lingkungan Universitas Bakri. Saat ini kita berada di ruang diplomatik room lantai 40 dari gedung Bakri Tower. Apabila Bapak, Ibu, dan Saudara perlu restroom, tersedia di seberang pintu ruangan ini. Keselamatan karyawan dan tamu di gedung ini adalah faktor utama yang menjadi perhatian manajemen kami. Untuk itu, kami mohon sejenak untuk safety briefing ini. Di setiap lantai terdapat floor warden yang bertugas untuk memimpin proses evakuasi apabila terjadi keadaan darurat yang mengancam kesempatan kita bersama. Keadaan darurat akan ditandai dengan bunyi sirine panjang dari petugas. Pada saat darurat terjadi dan sirine panjang berbunyi, ikuti instruksi dan petunjuk melalui pengeras suara. Ikuti instruksi dan petunjuk floor warden untuk tetap tenang, jangan panik, karena kepanikan akan merugikan kita. Jika terjadi kebakaran, ikuti instruksi dan petunjuk melalui pengeras suara. Kita harus bergegas dengan tertib meninggalkan ruangan ini menggunakan tangga darurat terdekat. Terima kasih. So once again, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So it is being a great honor for us on behalf of Bakri International Conference on Communication, Management, Politics, and Accounting, the Compact 2023. Okay. Okay, we go to the, yes. All right, once again, good morning. Okay, so once again, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is being a great honor for us on behalf of Bakri International Conference on Communication, Management, Politics, and Accounting, or become PEC 2023. My name is Santi Rahmawati. To be standing here as a master of ceremony in this international conference, and welcome to each and every one of you for being here with us today in the Diplomatic Room Bakri Tower and also virtual through Zoom platforms. So before we are going to the main program, all the participants can see the agenda or the conference program of Picompec shown in the screen. So after this, we will have the welcome remarks, opening speech, the global research ecosystem introduction, continue by the keynote speaker sessions. And then after the lunch break, we will have the academic online parallel presentation session in six breakout room. After that, we will have the awarding ceremony and also the closing ceremony. As an additional information on the awarding ceremony, we will announce the award for the best presentation, best student achievement, 
best paper, and session chair recognition. So we recommend all the participants to stay until the end of the conference today. So before we start the agenda for today's conference, we would like to play the national anthem of Indonesia, Indonesia Raya. So for all on-site participants, please kindly stand up straight to show the respect. And for online participants, please remain seated. for your attention and for on-site participants in, in the Bakri campus, please be seated again. Thank you. For all the success of this conference, let us first open this conference by prayer. For all the success of this conference, let us first open this conference by a prayer which will be delivered by Bapak Rustam Fauzi, S.A.M.A.K. So please welcome Bapak Rustam Fauzi. Can unmute first, Pak? Uh, would you please to unmute the microphone first, Pat? Okay, thank you. All right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera selalu bagi kita semua. Ibu dan Bapak dan hadirin sekalian, mari sejenak kita mengangkatkan kedua tangan kita, seraya menundukkan kepala untuk bersama memanjatkan doa, dan meminta kepada Allah SWT agar apa yang kita lakukan dalam kegiatan Bakri International Conference on Communication, Management, Politics, and Accounting di Rudi Allah SWT. Mohon izin pada kesempatan ini saya akan membimbing doa menurut agama Islam dan kepada ibu bapak hadirin yang beragama di luar Islam kiranya dapat menyesuaikan menurut kepercayaan dan keyakinannya masing-masing. Astagfirullahaladzim, astagfirullahaladzim, astagfirullahaladzim. الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم وأتوب إليه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد الشاكرين حمد النعيمين حمد يوافي نعمه ويكافي مزيده يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك الكريم وعظيم سلطانك اللهم صل على محمد صلاة تنجنا بها من جميل أهوال والآفات وتقديلنا بها من جميع السيئات 
wa tarfa'una biha indaka ala darajat wa tubalighuna biha aqsawayat min jami'il khairati fil hayati wa ba'dal mamat innaka ya Allah sami ngari bumuji budawat ya qadiyal hajat ya Allah ya Tuhan kami kami ucapkan syukur atas rahmat nikmat dan karuniamu sebab engkaulah kami bisa hadir di sini ya Allah ya Rabb jadikanlah Bakri International Conference on Communication Management Politics and Accounting ini sebagai majelis ilmu yang akan bermanfaat buat kami sekarang dan di masa yang akan datang jadikanlah ilmunya bermanfaat bagi kami orang di sekitar kami masyarakat dan negara ya Allah ya Rabbana seminar ini ada untuk memperoleh dan memohon ridhomu maka berilah bimbingan pengajaran dan petunjuk kepada kami untuk menjalankannya hingga selesai atas ridomu kami mohon bantulah kami agar acara ini dapat lancar dan berjalan dengan baik ya Allah ya Rob jadikanlah kami yang hadir di sini sebagai umat yang taat umat yang manfaat umat yang terus mengabdikan ilmu di jalanmu ya Allah wahai yang maha pengampun dan penolong ampunlah dosa kami dosa kedua orang tua kami dosa guru-guru kami dan dosa para pendahulu kami. Tolong dan bantulah kami untuk menjadi penurus yang amanah, yang bisa memberikan dampak baik untuk negara ini. Ya Allah, Ya Rob, hanya kepadamu kami mohon, kiranya engkau selalu membersamai setiap langkah kami ke depan. Ya Allah, Ya Mujib, Tuhan yang maha mengabulkan. Sesungguhnya, tiada yang dapat mengabulkan doa dan permohonan kecuali engkau. Oleh karenanya, Ya Allah, kabunkalah doa kami dan permohonan kami ini. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa ilam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna minal khasyirin. Allah mengsurna ikhwanan al-mujahidina fi gaza wa fi kulimakan. Allah mengsurna fi kulifakan fi falestin fi kulimakan. Rabbana atina miladunka rahmatan wa hayilana min amrina rasyada. Rabbana ya Allah atina fi dunia hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina azaban nar. Ya Allah wa kina azaban nar. Ya Allah wa kina azaban nar. Taqabbal minna innaka antas sami'ul alim wa atubu alina innaka antat tawwabur rahim. Fa in tawallaw fa qul hasbiyallahu la ilaha illa huwa alayhi tawakkaltu wa huwa rabbul arsil azim. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil, ni'mal maula wa ni'mal nasir. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin al-fatiha A'udzubillahi minasyaitonir rajim bismillahirrahmanirrahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin arrahmanir rahim maliki yaumiddin iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdinash shiratal mustaqim shiratal ladzina an'amta 'alaihim ghairil maghdubi 'alaihim waladdallin Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Bapak. So hope this Become Pack 2023 will be a successful conference. Amin. So now, without further ado, let's open our agenda.
It is an honor to me to inform you that among us here we have Her Excellency Rector of Universitas Bakri, Professor Insinyur Sofia Alishahbana, MSc PhD IPU ASEAN Engineer. His Excellency, the Dean of Faculty of Economics and Social Science, Universitas Bakri, Dr. Dudi Rudianto, SAMSE. Her Excellency, the Conference Chair of BCompact 2023 from Universitas Bakri, Dr. Jurika Lucianda, SAMSE, AFA, CSRS, CSRA. Her Excellency, the co conference Chair of BCompact 2023 and founder and chairperson of Research Synergy Foundation, Dr. Hendrati Dwi Mulyaningsi. His Excellency, a keynote speaker, the CEO, PT Latifi Media Karya TV1 Indonesia, Mr. Taufan Eko Nugroho Rotora Siko. His Excellency, a keynote speaker from Central Queensland University, Australia. Professor Lee Di Milia, PhD. Her Excellency, a keynote speaker, Director of Transnational Education, ICEPS, or the Institute of Continuing Education and Professional Studies, UITM Malaysia, Wan Nurbani Wan Nurdin, PhD. Your Excellency, all session chairs from Thailand, Malaysia, Taiwan, Philippines, and China. Last Excellency, distinguished guests, delegates, faculty members, and all participants of BCompact 2023, ladies and gentlemen. So once again, good morning and welcome to Bakri International Conference on Communication, Management, Politics, and Accounting, or BCompact 2023, which is organized by the Faculty of Economics and Social Science, Universitas Bakri, and Research Synergy Foundation, supported by Scholar Fame, Reviewer Track, Research Synergy Institute, and Research Synergy Press, F1000 Research, Cogen, Open Access Journals, and Taylor and Francis Groups. So the hybrid international conference held on 15 November, both virtual and on-site. Joining us also from Universitas Bakri Campus at the Diplomatic Room Bakri Tower 50 floor, Jakarta, Indonesia. So this year, conference theme for the BCompact 2023 is advancing sustainability, so strategic approach for a changing world. We welcome all the strategic partners from the Faculty of Economics and Social Science, Universitas Bakri, and member of the Research Synergy Foundation Global Research Ecosystem to BCompact 2023. We also welcome all participants, scholars, and practitioners from various countries such as Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, sorry, Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, Australia, Thailand, China, Morocco, Taiwan, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, United States of America, Tanzania, Oman, and many more. So we believe at the BCompact 2023, you will gain a lot of insight through the knowledge of them from the interdisciplinary field of study, and this will lead to a fruitful future collaboration and research opportunities. We are sure that the discussions in this international conference today will be a lively and interesting one. So therefore, we will provide all the participants and attendees to discuss further about the research presented in this BCompact 2023 in the Global Research Ecosystem Community Platforms. So in these platforms, you can connect, interact, comment, discuss, and even find opportunity to collaborate with other scholars in your research field worldwide. So to join the global research ecosystem community platform. So you may simply scan the QR code shown on the screen, or you may also sign up using your Google mail or email account on link. So next, regarding the material of the conference, the virtual background the conference program, and also the abstract book can be accessed at the link that you can see in the screen, bit.ly slash vcompact strip material. Next, for the Q&A and the e-certificates, the Q&A can only be asked after the speaker have finished delivering the speech and the moderator will manage as per the time available. So 
For the on-site participants, you may also raise your hands and also ask the question directly so we can have a live interactions. And meanwhile, for the online participants, please kindly write your questions in the name in the Zoom chat box. Yeah, and also the name of the speaker that should answer it. And for the e-certificate, for the attendee or the audience will be provided for the participants that only registered in the global research ecosystem community platforms and actively involved in asking the question or giving feedback in the sessions. And this is also important information about how to claim the e-certificate, particularly for the attendee. In order to get your certificate of attendance, please do the instruction as can be seen in the screen. And later, the committee also will type it again in the Zoom chat box. For the video and audio, all online participants are required to mute their audio. And the host has every right to mute any participants' audio and remove who are deemed disruptive without wording. So ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants and attendees of Big Compact 2023, moving on for the next agenda, we would like to invite Dr. Jurika Lucienda SAMSE as the conference chair as of the as the conference chair of Big Compact 2023 from Universitas Bakri to give the welcome remarks. So before that, allow me to read her profile first. So Dr. Jurika Lucienda is a lecturer in accounting study program at Universitas Bakri. She completed the Bachelor of Economics and Accounting in 1994 from Sekolah Tinggi Ilmu Ekonomi Perbanas, Jakarta, and now we know as the ABMII Perbanas. And in 1999, she continued her master study, Master of Science in Accounting at Universitas Gajah Mada Yogyakarta, and also obtained a Master of Science in Accounting in 2001. And she holds a doctorate from Universitas Gajah Mada Yogyakarta in 2019. And her expertise as a finance analyst and also sustainability reporting specialist and assurer has been recognized by achieving a professional qualification from the American Academy of Financial Management or AAFM, an Institute of Certified Sustainability Practitioners or ICSP in the field of sustainability reporting. She started her career as an accounting lecturer in 1994 at Universitas Islam 45, Bekasi, and joining Bakri University, Jakarta as a lecturer in the accounting study program in July 2010. So her research interests in management accounting, behavioral accounting, and her article also have been published in several research journals, both international and national journals. So please welcome Dr. Jurika Lucienda. Thank you, Bu Santi. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let us express our thanks to Almighty God because of his mercy and grace, we can gather hybrid on site in Universitas Bakri campus and virtual through the Zoom platform to attend the Bakri International Conference on Communication, Management, Politics and Accounting or Contact 2023 with the theme Advancing Sustainability Strategic Approach for Changing World. My gratitude, distinguished rector Universitas Bakri, Ibu Professor Insinyur Sofia W. Ali Shabana, PhD, IPU, ASEAN Engineers, and Dean of Faculty Economic and Social Science, Bapak Dr. Dudi Rudianto, SAMSE. Thank you for all support that has given for this conference. In this great opportunity, let me give my highest appreciation to the conference committee from Universitas Bakri and also Research Synergy Foundation for making this conference run very well. Also, I would like to thank all keynote speakers in this conference, 
Mr. Taufan Eko Nugroho Roto Rasiko SEO PT Latifa Media Karya TV Fan Indonesia. Maybe later he will come. And Professor Lee Dimilia, PhD, as the Dean of School of Business and Law, Central Queensland University, Australia. Dr. Wan Nurbani Wanudin, as the Director of the Transnational Education Department at ICEPS University Technology, Mara, Malaysia. Moreover, appreciation and recognition to the session chairs presenters and attendees coming from at least 15 countries around the globe. We have 40 papers. This, uh, there is one paper with two presenters to present this afternoon and more than uh, 200 attendees joined this conference, 24 reviewers and 13 scientific reviewers support this conference and six session chairs and three keynote speakers. Bakri International Conference on Communication, Management, Politics and Accounting, or BCompact 2023 is an international conference organized by the Faculty Economics and Social Science Universitas Bakri and Research Synergy Foundation. Support by Scoervain, Research Synergy Institute, Reviewer Tech, Tracks, Research Synergy Press, F1000 Research, Congan Open Access Journals, and Tyler and Francis Group. We are thrilled to greet all participants of the Compact 2023 with the theme Advancing Sustainability Strategic Approach for a Changing World. As we gather for these occasions, we embark on a journey towards sustainable solution aimed aim at addressing the global challenging of our era. The conference aimed to provide a platform where researchers, students, practitioners, policymakers, and various stakeholders can come together to explore innovative approaches for establishing a new interdisciplinary framework. By assembling experts from diverse fields and regions, the conference holds the potential to pinpoint creative solutions that contribute to more resilient future for all. This problem is very interesting because it raises the sustainability issues that sustainability has become integral to the corporate agenda. I hope that this conference could be a platform for sharing knowledge among researchers and students to give insight feedback and novelty in sustainability issues from now to the future. Moreover, organizing this conference has been a privilege for us. Our sincere thanks to the conference organizing committee, the AD trio board and program chair for this valuable guidance and outstanding contribution to be compact 2023. We encourage active involvement exchange of insights and participation in stimulating discussion throughout the plenary and academic sessions. Embrace the opportunity to discover new perspective and leverage the discussion to learn from one another. A warm welcome awaits you at this conference. We hope that this year's event will both challenge and inspire you, fostering the development of new knowledge collaborations and friendship. I hope you are happy and enjoy the conference. Once again, thank you all. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much for the very warm welcome remarks, Dr. Jurika Lucianda. As the recognitions and also the appreciations from the organizing committee, we would like to give a token of appreciations to our beloved conference chair. So in this occasion, we would like to welcome Dr. Hendrati Dwi Mulyaningsi as the co-conference chair of BCompact 2023 and also the founder and chairperson of Research Energy Foundation to give a token of appreciation to Dr. Jurika Lucianda as the conference chair. Please welcome Dr. Hendrati.
Okay, thank you, uh, Miss Santi. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you for our uh, conference chair, Dr. Jurika, for coordinations, cooperations, and also a lot of meeting that we have already done before. And thank you so much for a really great uh, cooperation. Thank you. Moving on to our next agenda, we would like to invite a Dr. Hendrati Dwi Mulyaningsi as the co conference chair of BCompact 2023 and also the founder and chairperson of Research Energy Foundations. So, before that, allow me to read her profile first. So, Dr. Hendrati Dwi Mulyaningsi has shown great commitment on creating the global network and research ecosystem. So this GNR ecosystem has been developing since 2017 and up to the present and having increasing number of members up to more than 25,000 scholars from all around the globe. So her passion in how to create an impact and co-creation value among all the stakeholders in RSF has made her focus on upholding integrity in the scientific process through enhancement of a research energy foundation support system them, as like reviewer track, scholar vein, research energy institute, and research energy press. So thus her work in this area has met her as the nominee of the impactful leadership award from the Talbert Foundation, Swedia at 2019. So as a lecturer, she has been working in the university since 2008 and at present in Indonesia as the assistant professor. And she holds her doctoral science of management, graduated from School of Business and Management, Institute of Technology Bandung, or SBM ITB. And she has strong interest to her research project as well as her research field in the social entrepreneurship, social innovations, and knowledge management. So as a researcher, her work studies and research on this research field met her being invited as a reviewer in many reputable scopus and also web of science indexed journals and also as a keynote speakers in many international conferences in Philippines, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Australia, Japan, and United States. She also has shown her great patience on writing her research study into some book chapter papers and contemporary scientific article that has already been published in Springer, Emerald, Taylor and Francis, and in many reputable international journals and publisher. So before Dr. Henretti take over to explain the global research ecosystem introduction, we would like to uh, we would like to play the Research Energy Foundation profile first. We believe that everyone should have equal access to learn, share their knowledge, and enhance their research capabilities. Enhancement, empowerment, creating impact and value are the most needed aspects that researchers and scholars encounter. Recently, upholding integrity in the scientific process has become one of the issues that we are aware of and need to be tackled. To tackle the problem arising in the research communities, we should collaborate among all stakeholders to accelerate the impact to our society. Thus, Research Energy Foundation support and commit to all stakeholders by creating a global research ecosystem. We are a digital social enterprise platform that focuses on developing a global research ecosystem. We build collaborative networks among researchers, scholars, professors, and practitioners globally for the realizations of knowledge accelerations and to contribute more to society and humanity. From 2017 to 2021, more than 20,000 scholars have participated in our programs from Asia, Australia, Africa, America, and Europe continents. With the average of the increasing number of members by more than 5,000 each year, 
we continuously strengthen the global research ecosystem by having four support systems that are ready to help members from across the world. First, we have ScholarVein. It's a system that we developed for scholars to contribute more. Supported by an established IT system and professional team, one of the superior services we provide is the Integrated International Conference Management and Operating System. ScholarVane system has been conducting the International Conferences platform both in person and virtual effectively and efficiently in terms of time, cost, and resource. From 2017 to 2021, the system has served over 8,448 scholars from 85 countries. Scholar vein coverage areas include but are not limited to the online submission system, pre, during, post of conference, scientific review system, global marketing system, and publication system. All-in-one scholar system for transparency and credibility in every scientific forum and activity. Review Track is a home for thousands of researchers and reviewers from all around the globe, with whom we partner to create a global network to assist in the assessment and feedback of your research. Artificial intelligence powers our reviewer track, ensuring that the scientific process runs smoothly and reliably. The main goal is to emphasize the importance of the ethical process of blind or double-blind peer review. Call for reviewers and collaboration with our university partners are just a few of the projects under reviewer track. We also provide reviewer workshops and training, annual reviewers recognition event, and many more. As a result, reviewer track represents our dedication to uphold scientific integrity. Research Maggie Institute is committed to being your research learning partner by providing some learning programs such as online lecturing session, as expert forum, as editor forum, global research ecosystem network group, RSF Research Academy, scientific and academic writing e-coaching clinic series toward publication in reputable indexed journal. Research Nagi Institutes provide the most needed research learning topics, cutting-edge research tools, and expert opinion from different backgrounds to put a global perspective for all researchers and scholars. Research Nagi Press, we are providing and managing international journals for your institution toward global and reputable indexers. The mission of Research Energy Press is to deliver breakthrough professional journal management using strategic paper collaborations. Increasing diversity and resulting in good quality of scientific research for all researchers, professional and academicians through a standardized scientific process. We help you to manage international journals to global standards. You can even publish your scientific work in our journals, conference proceedings, and books. And now, Research Synergy Press publishes more than dozens of international journals, conference proceeding series, and single conference proceeding. Empowerment and encouragement are the two keywords that drive our social programs for leveraging the impact, such as conference grant, International Service Program Paper Writing Collaboration Connecting Research Parties or Stakeholder Gathering The Annual Social Entrepreneurship Challenge Shared Value Co-Creation Programs We believe that every individual, organizations, and research community has the same opportunity to share the value of creating an impactful program together with us. As a social enterprise, our aim is to provide a good research ecosystem and platform for researchers to share, discuss, and disseminate their ideas. In addition, it helps you to improve your research and contribute to the knowledge. Therefore, creating social impact and value is our priority. In the other hand, you can collaborate with us to our worldwide scholars and initiate betterments for the academy, society, and humanity. 
Research Synergy Foundation Global Research Ecosystem is the perfect combination among researchers, scholars, professors, and practitioners. We embrace all of our members to lend in hand, take action for a better society, and grow together with the Research Synergy Foundation. Okay, so now without further ado, please welcome Dr. Hendretti. The time is yours. Okay, thank you, Miss Anti. Okay, uh, may I share my screen? Okay. See. Okay, first of all, I would like to say thank you to all the participants that has already been here uh, to attend this conference. Uh, there are more than 250 uh, participants that already participated in this conference and it comes from 15 countries. And also this conference is already supported by more than 30 university affiliations that already including it, they are supporting this conference as the reviewer, as the session chair, and also as a keynote speaker. And thank you so much for the host university uh, and also it here, uh, uh, Bu Rektor, uh, Prof. Sofia, and also all the faculty member, Padudi and, uh, and, all, uh, and Bu Jurika, and also all the faculty member and as organizer and committee in Pusa Bakri, thank you so much. And uh, in here, I would like to uh, share that uh, regarding with uh, what we have already done in uh, these six years, uh, because we already, uh, okay, sorry. We are uh, as a social enterprise uh, since 2017, and uh, we, we have, a, uh, we have uh, an aim and objective how we can be focusing in developing research ecosystem. As already mentioned uh, to uh, Ms. Hanti and also in our video that our member right now, uh, more than 25,000 from all around the world. And the increasing number every year is 5,000 because we have more than 20 conferences. For example, we have more than 20 conference each year and each conference it already participated more than 200. So it's mean that every year we have a lot of uh, participants and a lot of uh, scholars that come from all around the world. And all participants is not come from academician, but also they come from uh, uh, government and also industry. And we are here also having, okay, so he, Uh, okay, my, my apologies for technically matters. Okay, so this uh this is the founders. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. So this is the founders of uh this is a foundation. We are uh female. Uh, all, all of us is uh female uh, girls followers, and Miss Annie and Miss Anti. Um, I apologize, Miss Annie cannot come to this conference because we have a lot of programs also parallelly in the same time, and Miss Anti and he uh, me here, and uh to welcome to all of you to our big family, and from two thousand and seventeen until up to now, uh it will it more than twenty five thousand scholars that already participated and already become our members. And they participated it not only in conference, but also in many programs that already being created by our support system. Okay, we have a lot of uh, agendas uh, because we have four support systems, scholar veins. This conference is supported by scholar vein and reviewer track. 
because this review text is embedded with scholar wins. And this conference is being supported by 24 review tracks from our uh, reviewer. Okay, so this is our support system that already supported this conference. Before this conference, we have a pre-conference uh, workshop and it is uh, supported by our learning platform is called Research Synergy Institute. And this Research Synergy Institute is one of our support system that try to uphold the integrity regarding with how enhance the quality of applications and minimize gap between editorial requirements and also author capacity. And then this conference uh, mainly is supported by Scholar Vents. And in here, Misanti is uh, the director of the Scholar Vent as also the uh, radio track. And the Scholar Vents, uh, as uh, when you are submitted into the system, so this Scholar Vent is embedded with a uh, review track. And uh, we have uh, more than thousand of reviewer and accommodate more than thousand research of field. So before we have conference, we are called for reviewer to support the conference. And then uh, we are also having publishing house. It's called Research Synergy Press. We have more than 20 international journal and some of them has already been submitted into Scopus and it takes three years. And then uh, mostly uh, our uh, journals has already been indexed in reputable indexer as like DOAG and then uh, uh, okay, wait. DOAG and also ProQuest and uh, Copernicus. Okay, and this is our review process. And this is the way how we upholding the integrity regarding with scientific process. So after you submit into our system, we will check all of the uh, plagiarism content review and also a language review. So alongside with the LOA to all of the presenter, to all of the author, we will give the feedback. So this is the purpose of this feedback is how to make them and to how to make them have an opportunity to enhance the quality of their publication and then they have an equal uh, opportunity also to be published in reputable index of journals. So in here we are supported by more than thousand of reviewer and this conference has supported by twenty four reviewer that come from more than twenty countries. And then uh. Every uh, conference, we have a timeline like this one uh, regarding with our review process because it is very important to all of us uh, because every uh, author, every article that already been submitted here, they will know the stage which in which part, in, this, in which state that they are already been there. So they will have uh, this timeline in every website of every conference, including this conference. So you can check it out in the website uh, regarding with the timeline of your uh, conference, and then please submit your full paper to make an, 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 an equal opportunity to be published in some reputable index of journals. And then uh, we have uh, our international journal, more than uh, 20 international journals, and you can check it out also in our uh, website in uh, Journal Research Negi Press. And then uh, we are also affiliate with Teller and Francis for the output of publication of this conference because we are one of the advisory, uh, advisory gateway in F1000 research uh, is already indexed in Scopus Q1. And we are officially affiliate with Teller and Francis with the Cogan Open Access. There are nine international uh, journals open access uh, in Cogan uh, that are already being affiliated with uh, the foundations. Okay. So alongside with our programs that relate with the research, we have also another program, uh, it's called a social program. Since we, uh, our form of the organization is social enterprise, we have a social programs. We have conference grants and uh, every year we have support uh, early career researcher or young scholar that come from undergraduate and also postgraduate, especially for the master student. They have an, that uh, have an uh, excellent uh, uh, outstanding research. So we will give grant for the conference grant and ISOTRA. We, we support more than $50,000 every year to all these young scholars. And then we have also international service programs and we invite many of university, especially university that they don't have enough budget to conduct the conference. And then we try to help them, to support them, and then to make the conference with the reputable index uh, conference with the zero budget. 
And then we have a social entrepreneurship challenge. Uh, it relates with how we encourage the young scholar, the uh, the undergraduate student, to have a an, an, like a sense of crisis regarding with how to to solve the problem alongside uh, around their community or the society. So in here we are already in the third year, collaborate with uh, Macquay University Sydney. And then we have also paper writing collaboration because we can see that this conference is not only the conference, but also uh, like a grand networking. And we ca I can see that uh, there are many of researchers, a, a young researcher, a young early career researcher, and also a uh, senior professor. And I said that this is a really great combination. And they can uh, uh, make an extended program with, uh, regarding with how they can extend the uh, uh, collaborations. Uh, it can be a uh, university and university, or it can be uh, personal to personal. So it depends on how you can conti uh, continue these collaborations. And then we try to connecting research party and stakeholder. Through this conference also, we found that there are many of opportunities. Since this conference already being supported by more than 34 university affiliation that uh, already support this conference. It is including session chair, uh, keynote speaker and also a uh, scientific reviewer. So there are many uh, many uh, opportunity to collaborate uh, in, in the future. And then we, we are also uh, encouraged to all of you to have a, a program together uh, because all of you beca already become our members. So we are uh, uh, welcome to all of you because we have many programs, not only call for the paper, but also call for the session chair, call for the keynote speaker, call for the a trainer uh, for our workshop, uh, our webinar, and etc., and also call for uh, editorial board and etc. So they ha we have many programs regarding how we can enhance uh, our uh, quality of our uh, research and etc. Okay, and then this is our last uh, support system. Uh, this conference will be supported by this uh, uh, support system. It call it our community platform. Post conference of this uh, uh uh this conference I mean like after this conference uh, we have a post conference communication so in this platform we encourage to all the participants that they have a fruitful discussion uh, in the conference because uh, they are only limited uh time only fifteen minutes and I such so I think it's better to have continuing discussion through this platform because many of uh, presenters they have a really good content and then there will be a lot of discussion among participants uh in this uh, conference and also among uh part uh attendee and also uh session chair and uh, presenter so they can continue discussion in this web community. Okay, so uh, be a part of us, and I, uh, on behalf of Lisa Sinegi Foundation, I welcome to all of you to become our big family. Thank you so much. Have a good day and have a great conference. Thank you. Come back to Miss Santi. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Henrati Dwe Bolianingsi, for the very comprehensive and also insightful information that certainly will bring benefits here yeah, to all the participants in Become Back 2023. So, Next, we would like to give the recognitions and also the appreciations from the BCOMPAC 2023 committee. We would like to give a token of appreciation to Dr. Hendrati Dwi Mulyaningsi. So in this occasion, we would like to welcome the Rector of Universitas Bakri, Professor Insinyur Sofia Alisha Bana, to give the token of appreciation to Dr. Hendrati. Please welcome Professor Sofia. Yes, Prof. Okay. So a, a certificate of appreci appreciation is given to Dr. Henrati Dwi Mulyaningsi uh, as a co-conference chair. So I give the certificate. Of
Distinguished participants and attendees of BCOMPAC 2023, ladies and gentlemen. So now for the next agenda, we would like to welcome Professor Insinyur Sofia Alishahbana MSc, PhD, IPU ASEAN Engineer, as the Rector of Universitas Bakri to give the opening speech. Before that, allow me to read her profile first. In 1992, Professor Sofia earned a Doctor of Philosophy or PhD degree in the Department of Engineering, Mechanics and Austron Austronautics at the University of Wisconsin, Madison, United States of America. Her dissertation was titled Rotating Annular Plate Response to Arbitrary Moving Load. Professor Sofia obtained her Master of Science in Engineering Mechanics from the same department at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in 1988 and prior to that, in 1986, she completed her undergraduate studies in civil engineering at the Bandung Institute of Technology, Indonesia. Professor Sophia began her academic career as a teaching assistant at her alma mater, the Engineering Mechanics Department at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, USA in 1988. And she also worked as a research assistant during that time. So after returning to Indonesia, Professor Sofia became a faculty member in the Department of Civil Engineering at Tarumanagara University in 1993. So she held various positions at the same university, including Vice Chair of the Master Program in Civil Engineering, Vice Rector for the Administration and Finance, Chair of the Master Program in Civil Engineering, Chair of the Doctoral Program in Civil Engineering, Director of Postgraduate Program, and Vice Rector for Academic Affairs at Tarumanagara University, which he held until 2009. So in March 2010, Prof. Sophia joined and was inaugurated as the Rector of Bakri University. In addition to her active role in academia, Professor Sophia has also served as the research and development manager at PT Wiratman and Associate from 1993 to 1995. And she has been a senior assessor for the National Accreditation Agency for Higher Education, or BANPT, under the Minister or the Ministry of National Education of the Republic of Indonesia since 2001. So without further ado, please welcome Professor Sophia. Thank you very much for a nice introduction. I hope it's not too long. <laughs> okay, so good morning and a warm welcome to the Universitas Bakri Conference on Advising Sustainability, Strategic Approach for a Changing World, or simply we call Be Compact. I'm deeply honored to stand before you today as the Rector of Universitas Bakri and open this impactful event. Today's conference holds a special purpose in sustainability issues. We have gathered here to discuss and deliberate, and deliberate on strategies that will lead us toward a more sustainable and environmentally conscious future. This theme is not just timely. It is a call to action that we cannot afford to ignore. In recent years, the world has witnessed significant shifts in our climate. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, special report on global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius, our Earth average surface temperature is projected to increase by 1.5%, 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels between 2030 and 2052. If current trends continue, this temperature rise has severe consequences for ecosystem, weather patterns, and sea levels underlining the urgency of our discussion today, according to IPCC 2018. Sustainability is not a choice, but, not a, re but a responsibility. As the world grapples with various global challenges, from climate change to resource depletion, it is imperative that we adopt a strategic approach to ensure a better, more sustainable world for future generations. We cannot underestimate the importance of the knowledge shared, the solution proposed, and the collaborations that will emerge from this conference. Unsas Bakri has always been committed to fostering a culture of sustainability, innovation, and social responsibility. Unsas Bakri has been named the preeminent private institution in Jakarta 
according to the Times Higher Education Impact Ranking in 2023. This accomplishment marks the third consequences year that Bakri University has accomplished since 2021, 2022, and 2023. This accomplishment enhances Universitas Bakri's standing and contribution as the preeminent private university in Jakarta in the pursuit of the Sustainable Development Goals. Time Higher Education Impact Rankings evaluate the university capacity to incorporate the Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs into diverse phases of campus life through the implementation of several indicators. These indicators include the university contribution of the Indonesian Youth Sustainable Development Goals Summit, development of Indonesian Geopark through the Geopark Study Center and execution of Zero Hunger Campaign. We firmly believe that education play a very important in transforming our society for the better. As we, know, as we come together today, it is our hope that we can contribute significantly to enhancing sustainability through our collective wisdom and collaboration. The Global, the global Risk Report in 2022 by the World Economic Forum highlights that environmental concerns, including climate change, loss of biodiversity, and natural disasters are among the top global risks in terms of likelihood and impact, according to World Economic Forum in 2022. This conference has been carefully curated to facilitate insightful discussions, share groundbreaking research, and establish a network of like-minded like -minded individuals who share the same passion for sustainability. We have brought together experts from various disciplines, from environmental science to business, from technology to policy, to offer a diverse and holistic perspective on the challenges we face. The World Bank's report, The Growing Global Migration and Its Implication for Agriculture in 2020, undergoes the urgent need for sustainable agriculture practices to address the food security challenges posed by population growth and migration. During these two days, I encourage you to engage in open, respectful, and meaningful dialogue. We are here to learn from each other, to challenge conventional wisdom and to develop actionable strategies that can truly make a difference in our rapidly changing world. Our commitment to sustainability extends beyond this conference. Universitas Bakri is dedicated to implementing the outcomes of this event, and we are eager to collaborate with all of you to put our co collective knowledge into practice. Together, we can be the change makers who lead the way to a greener, more sustainable future. I would like to express my heartfelt appreciation to all the keynote speakers, Mr. Taufan Eko Nugroho Rotorashiko, CEO of TV1, Professor Lee Dimila, PhD from Central Queensland University, Australia, and Dr. Wan Norbani Wan Nurdin, from Universita Teknologi Mara or UITM Malaysia presenters and the participants for your dedication to this cause. Your presence here today enriches the dialogue and under, underscores the significance of our collective efforts. According to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals report in 2021, there has been progress in many areas, but significant challenges remain in in achieving the SDGs, particularly in areas related to climate actions, life below water and life on land, UN 2021. In closing, I would like to encourage all of you to make the most of this conference, share your insight, learn from one another, and be inspired to take action. The future of our planet depends on it. Once again, I warmly welcome to all to be compact and wish you are a fruitful and inspiring conference. Let us join hands to advance sustainability and embark on our journey to strategic change for a better, greener, and more prosperous world. Thank you very much. Thank you so much once again, Professor Sofia, for supporting the Compact 2023. It is an honor to us, Prof. Thank you so much. 
All right, next, as the recognitions and appreciation from the organizing committee, we would like to give a token of appreciation to Professor Sofia for his opening speech. So in this occasion, we would like to welcome Dr. Hendrati Dwi Mulyaningsi as the co-conference chair of BCOMPAC and also the founder and chairperson of Research Synergy Foundation to give a token of appreciation to Professor Sofia. Please welcome Dr. Hendrati. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hanti. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, Prof. Uh, Sofia, for being with us today and also giving a really, really warm welcome to all of the, uh, the audience and participants. And thank you so much for the supporting for this conference. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much once again, Prof. Sofia and Dr. Hendrati. Okay, so before we continue to the next agenda of BCOMPAC 2023, so we will have the group conference photo sessions. So for all the participants in the online through the Zoom platforms, you may open the cam and also use the BCOMPAC Zoom virtual background. And also for the on-site uh, participants in the Bakri campus also to get ready, okay? The committee can stop share first, okay? All right. Okay, let me check. Okay, remove the spotlight first. Okay, one more. Oh, hold on. Okay. So the committee also already ready to get the... Okay, let me check once again. Okay. All right. Okay, so if you are ready on my count, okay, we will go to the first window first. Okay, on my count, one, okay. Okay, thank you so much. All right, one, two, three, smile. Okay, lovely. And then hold the smile, please, because we will capture the next window. Okay, the committee. All right, for the next window, one, two, three. Okay, thank you. And the next one. All right. Okay, so once again, thank you so much for all the smiles, yeah? And also the wonderful energy yeah, in this today's conference. So hope that our positive vibes can be spread to all the people around us. Okay, the committee can share the screen again. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, the previous slide. Once again. Okay. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, next slide. Ladies and gentlemen, so distinguished participants and attendees of the Big Compact 2023. So, now we will move on yeah, to the keynote speaker sessions. So today we will have three keynote speakers who are really the expert yeah, on their fields. And the keynote speaker sessions will be moderated by me, Santi. So in this keynote speaker session, we will have, thank you so much, Pak Taufan. Pak Taufan that already joining in the diplomatic room, Bakri Tower, as the CEO of PT Latifi Media Karya TV1 Indonesia. And also the next keynote speaker, that also already joining on site from the diplomatic room Bakri Tower Jakarta Indonesia. Thank you so much, Prof. Lee Demilia PhD from the Central Queensland University Australia, and of course our keynote speaker of as the director of transnational education ICEPS UITM Malaysia, uh, Dr. Wan Norbani. All right, next slide. So without further ado, let us welcome our first keynote speaker for the Big Compact 2023. Okay, so the first keynote speaker is Mr. Taufan Eko Nugroho Rotorasiko, who is the CEO of PT Latifi Media Karya. So thank you so much once again, Pak Taufan. 
So Pak Taufan, allow me to read your profile, Pak, before you delivering the keynote speech. Sure. Okay, thank you, Pak. Okay, committee can share the screen for the profile. All right. Okay. Okay, so Pak Taufan Ekonugroho Rotorasiko is the CEO of TV1. Concurrently, he also hold the position of the CEO of PT Merah Putih Berkibar, director at AMP Buzi Hydrocarbon since January 2021, and also the president director of PT Quantum Accessindo Nusantara. So his wide-ranging expertise also include his tenures as CEO of PT Multicontrol Nusantara from June 2004 to May 2018, so where he provided invaluable insight into a corporate management. So earlier in his career, he honed his technical skill as a GISA manager at the PT Bakri and Brothers and as a software engineer at Verizon and Bell Atlantic. So beyond the corporate landscape, so Pak Taufan also has played pivotal roles in Indonesian youth organization, serving as a chairman of the Committee Nasional Pemuda Indonesia from 2012 until 2014. So his commitment to positive change extends to role as a chairman of Karang Taruda, chairman of Gerakan Pemuda Sehat, and chairman of DPP PPS Betako Merpati Putih, focusing on youth development, health, and cultural preservations. So since 2016, Pak Taufan also also has been the chief of investment at the Indonesian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. So showcasing his dedication to promoting economic growth and entrepreneurships. So his academic achievement, including an MBA from the UCLA and US Singapore Executive MBA program, and also a bachelor's degree in computer information system from Strayer College earned with the Magna Cum Laude honors. So without further ado, once again, please welcome Pak Taufan. Thank you so much, Santi. That was a bit too long. <laughs> Actually, a quick introduction to be enough, but thank you, appreciate it. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Okay, uh, first and foremost, I would like to extend my sincere appreciation to Universitas Bakri or Bakri University for the esteemed invitation to deliver the keynote address at the Bakri International Conference on Communication, Management, Politics, and Accounting, and Accounting. Uh, today, I stand before you to delve into the fascinating world of television and how it has evolved uh, with the rapid advancement in technology, particularly the remarkable impact of artificial intelligence. This transformative journey is exemplified uh, by the case study of TV1, where the convergence of AI and television in management strategy has been a game changer. The television industry, like many others, have experienced significant changes over time driven by technological advance, advancements. In recent years, the influence of artificial intelligence on, on television has been profound. A striking example is the Apakabar Indonesia program to TV1, which started its AI-powered broadcast on Instagram and TikTok platforms in 21st of April uh, this year, 2023. Karni Elias, the chief editor of TV1, proudly proclaimed the use of AI to create avatars as presenters, making a technological milestone in Indonesia's media landscape. In the ever-competitive television industry, where new players continuously emerge, staying relevant and maintaining market position is a constant challenge. In the context, AI holds the potential to be a strategic game changer. The integration of AI into television management strategies can enhance competitiveness, create value propositions, and enable companies to thrive in a fiercely uh, competitive environment. Uh, beforehand, maybe uh, the previous slide, uh, I would like to introduce you some of the TV1's uh, uh, next slide. Uh, next slide. Uh, yes, this slide, okay. Um, in TV1, we have a policy uh, when we started to introduce the AI avatar, all of our AI avatar has a real presenter behind it. So our policy is not changing uh, human resources uh, with AI, but how we can actually work together using AI to, uh, uh, to create a, an innovative products 
and increase productivity. One of the potentials that we see right now using AI is the capability of uh, talking with different language easily. So these days, our uh, content, which usually um, uh, in Indonesia, now can be also translated using AI, using different uh, kind of languages. So this increase our market uh, uh, market share. Instead of just focusing on Indonesia, now we can uh, uh, sell, we can uh, produce our content with different kind of languages, uh, English, Arabic, Chinese, uh, and all those kind of uh, different languages. So this is uh, one of the policies that we um, uh, stated in TV1, AI is part of our uh, new way of working, not AI replacing uh, human resources of the future. We have studied the thought application of artificial intelligence in television industry management and uh, management strategy using grounded theory analysis, a case study on TV1, employed qualitative methods to gain a deep understanding of the subject matter. Constructivist uh, grounded theory, as proposed by Charmas 2005, guided the course of research data collection and analysis. The primary data for the study was collected through interviews with five top-level management representatives from TV1, including myself. And these interviews were transcribed and analyzed using grounded theory, which enabled us to uncover insights and draw uh, meaningful uh, conclusions. The research uh, TV1 uncovered the spectrum of insight regarding the current state of the television industry and its adaptation to AI-driven changes. The key findings are as, are as follows. We can go to the next slide. Financial resources, the transition from analog to digital broadcasting, often due to analog switch off, has posed financial challenges for the industry. Reduced revenues has been a common consequence. Uh, digitization and competition, the digital era has introduced a new competitive landscape. Television sessions now compete with social media platforms and face a shift in advertising revenue towards international platforms. This has led to changes in market preferences and taste. Uh, decreased income, many television companies have seen a decline in income. This is attributed to a range of factors, including the pandemic's impact of the economy, uh, reduced advertising budgets, and the changing media consumption habits of viewers. And lastly, organization structure, the need for strategic and organization overhaul has become evident in the face of these challenges. Adapting to the digital age requires a resuffling of structures and establishing truth. In the light of these findings, it becomes apparent that AI represents a significant opportunity for the television industry, primarily in content production. By integrating AI into content production processes, TV1 and other players aim to enhance efficiency and quality. This is made possible by utilizing sophisticated data analysis and automation, which are essential for the meeting uh, the evolving demands of modern viewers. However, the road to adopting AI is not without its challenges. These hurdles primarily resolve around resource constraints. Implementing AI necessitates human resource with technical expertise, adequate financial resources, and the necessary infrastructure as we venture into the digital age. It is clear that overcoming these challenges is imperative to stay competitive and relevant. Maybe I'd like to spend a few minutes to explain the slide that we have. This is actually generated by AI. It created um, no more than one hour and a half. Uh, this information is the information of sales revenue of TV1 since it started in 2007. Uh, since uh, uh, till uh, this month, uh, till yesterday actually, uh, the numbers are getting blurred. It's a heated map, so with this one, we can see easily, and this is provided by AI, that the highest sales is in 2014, July month, easily. So one of the findings that we found using AI, uh, right now, these days, we, we've heard a lot of information overload. With AI, actually, all of this vast information can be prioritized and analyzed and understand easily. So I think uh, we, we, we believe that AI is the next uh, phase on how we can increase productivity and understanding about our activities. Uh, this simple uh, slide is actually speak thousand words uh, about our business since its inception. 
we can see the trends, we can see uh, so many things. Uh, maybe I can explain a little bit before uh, I close my uh, keynote speech. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is a similar slide. Uh, this is just, uh, uh, we have our own AI system, which we already taught how to read the financial data and television rating, and et cetera. And we wanted to see the AI to use a heat map so that we can see the highest uh, month uh, sales and also the lowest one uh, across uh, different years and different months. What's interesting is that in television, uh, it's very related with the consumer spending. And Indonesia, since it's a Muslim country, uh, we need to understand the patterns during Ramadan. How is this? Because usually in television during Ramadan is the highest uh, revenue. Uh, and I would like to understand that. So AI doesn't know Ramadan. We already taught the machine uh, how to read financials, how to read rating and shares. And uh, uh, like in, in half an hour, even less, we tell the machine how to read uh, uh, Islamic calendar. So now it enables it to read in the Islamic calendar. So we want to combine this as a sort of exercise so that uh, our friends here understand how we communicate with AI, because it's totally different with computers. With computers, when you say A, uh, one plus one is two, three plus four is seven. With AI, it's a bit different thing. Okay, so we requested the AI to combine these two information. Okay, next. Uh, after asking the AI to combine, this is the reply from the AI. So basically, it encountered problems uh, combining these two data. And rather than attempting to combine both in a single heat map, AI uh, suggested something. Maybe let's do it uh, in a different way. Uh, our uh, chief data analyst responded in a I'm, I'm a bit uh, surprised on how he responded. So he responded this statement with this statement. Okay, next. Please try hard to visualize it by combining both heat maps. This is recorded from my CEO, <laughs> who expert in data analysis. I was like, you responded this in the AI machine? How? And then this is the response from the AI. Okay, next. Understood. Given the importance of this request, I will try a different approach to ensure both Ramadan and pre Mubarak months, as well as the lower revenues value across different years, are highlighted effectively in the hit map. Let's attend. This is AI speaking. Next. This is the result. The green one is the Ramadan. Yes, and now we understand, we know the pattern, all of the things. So this is how we interact with AI. Uh, not only for the screen, but also for data analytics. It helps us a lot uh, quickly to understand the past behavior, future project projection. And, and also right now we try to help uh, uh, our team program maker to discuss rundown. Because in television, rundown is very important. Uh, and AI using all the specific data can give us some guidance. Not always accurate, but you have your challenges. <laughs> in conclusion, the relation between AI and the television industry is one of the transformative potential. As we have seen through the case study of TV1, AI is not only changing how content is produced, but also how television management strategies are shaped. To thrive in this dynamic environment, the industry must be prepared to adapt, invest in AI, and overcome the challenges that lie ahead. The television industry, driven by AI, is poised for a future filled with innovation, quality content, and enhanced viewer experiences. By, by embracing the possibilities uh, that AI offers, it can continue to captivate audiences in this evolving digital age. Uh, last slide. Uh, well, thank you very much. Maybe I just add this one last statistic uh, from Databox. We launched our AI on April 2023. This is a survey that Databox did in 2023 as well, the following month, May. We didn't coordinate at all. I was very surprised to see this. But from this survey, it indicated that Indonesia is actually one of the countries that, has, that are most ready, most optimistic about the AI potential. 
So I think uh, we should uh, embrace uh, AI. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, young, uh, even uh, uh, pensioners who are focusing on, on AI and it's an it's a exciting work ahead. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> I do apologize. Thank you so much, Pak Taufan, for the very actually interesting, yeah, how uh, TV One as the as your part, of course, embracing the AI. Yeah. So actually, I would like to give the opportunity in the on-site participants from the Bakri campus to have a live interactions with Pak Taufan. Is any from the uh, Bakri campus in the on-site wants to ask the questions before we go to the questions in the Zoom chat box? All right. Okay, so we have a question there. <laughs> so here uh, for us, I mean, in the virtual, we, we want also to hear yeah, your discussion there. <laughs> okay, any? If not, I will go to the online uh, question first. Uh, Prof Lee, you want to say something, Prof? I'll ask a question. All right, all right. Thank you so much. <laughs> I think it's an easy one. How you applied artificial? I was very impressed how you applied artificial intelligence to your finances. Um, at the same time, do you have a, a way to validate the answer from AI? So you're going to use an old-fashioned technique to actually ensure that the AI answer matches up with your um, uh, data that you would generate normally. Yes, it's fascinating these days that we use AI as part of our reference, but we don't believe it uh, in totality because sometimes the answers is quite, um, not sometimes, at first, the answers are, are quite um, uh, wrong. But the nice thing about AI, we can challenge it, the AI itself. Are you sure this is the right answer? Can you think of something else? And then it tried something else, and then it does come up with the right answer and it, it, it kind of learns by itself yes, yes. Uh, but uh, still we 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 think that uh, we're not going to totally believe uh, what uh, any inputs that it gives us uh, it's, it's it's good that we have another preference so that we can understand a different point of view that we we haven't seen yes especially uh, our employees uh, in average we are about 15 uh, years already in the company so it makes us kind of have the same kind of thought. So it's good to have a different kind of thought uh, from outside view. And because we are number one, sometimes even getting outside thought from outside view is quite challenging as well, because we see they, they see us as the being the expert on this field. So having an AI who doesn't have the feeling just like explain itself, uh, it, it's quite uh, interesting on that side. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Prof. Lee, and also Pat Aupan. So, all right, we will go to the uh, questions from the Zoom chat box, Pat Aupan. Okay, so the question is coming from uh, Dr. Adrian Guinto from Philippines, Pat Aupan. So the question is, is the integrity of the data subjected to AI, yeah, subjected to AI, will not be compromised compared if you will be using other software in processing the data? Okay, um, I'm not sure if I understand correctly. Uh, the data that we provide to the AI is our own data. Uh, we use the AI to provide us perspective from our data. Uh, when we talk with our team, sometimes we have such a limited perspective, maybe because of our day-to-day -day activities, maybe we are more focused on daily, monthly, yearly, or the next five years, maybe uh, past five years, next one, two years. But with AI, what's amazing is that we provide a lot of data, not only from TV1, maybe from different kind of TV station data that are available public, and it give us it can give us a, a reference, which uh, I already spoke with Mr. Lee as well. We may not believe the the information that they are provided, but it's a perspective that it kind of makes us think uh, about some other thing uh, that that are outside of our thought. Like thinking outside the box can be helped by the AI perspective. Right. 
Okay, thank you so much, Pak Taufan. And uh, we will address two more questions, Pak, before <clears throat> we, we end the sessions. There are two more questions. So the next question is actually regarding the adoptions or the adoption situations. Yeah, once uh, this is coming from Pak Ferdi Sanjatiana. So the question is, how do you prepare your human resource to be ready to adapt and working with AI? So is there any impact on the work culture and this ad adaptations uh, period? Uh, it, it, it was funny that the first person who criticized this initiative was uh, our shareholders mm -hmm. because they thought uh, with this initiative, we're going to uh, let go a lot of uh, employees because uh, the mentality of the shareholders is how we can provide uh, employment to as many people in Indonesia. So, and and that thought came also from the internal company as well that uh, they thought because of the struggling industry that we face, we need to make efficiency. And one of them, of course, is to uh, have uh, less employees. Uh, that was the first misunderstanding. Um, but after we we discussed with the team that AI is the future and we need to work with AI, we need to understand the, the AI and we make them uh, work together it's like our presenters uh, combine uh, forces with the uh, AI avatar. I think right now the spirit is much more welcoming. Uh, people are, are, are involving and try to use AI in different ways. Uh, Usually, when when our presenters maybe ask uh, uh, um, somebody from the that came to to the television uh, without knowing too much, with the AI now she or he knows a lot of different kind of key points to talk about. So it makes the discussion uh, much deeper. So I, I think for now we we are in a good point that we have uh, the situation uh, embracing the AI itself. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Batofan. So this is the last questions from the participants, although there are many other questions following actually in the Zoom chat box right now, but hopefully we can continue the discussion later on through the email, yeah, Batofan, yeah? All right. So uh, the next question is the last questions uh, is actually regarding the bias, Batofan. So actually, uh, this question is coming from Wibowo, yeah, from Wibowo. So the question is actually what safeguards are in place to prevent bias in AI-generated news delivery? Uh, that's, a, that's actually an excellent question. Uh, why we launch uh, AI on April uh, 2023? We actually plan to launch this uh, next year. 2024 after the election, uh, but we felt at that time uh, there are a lot of fake news going around, uh, especially with the Donald Trump this, uh, and then different kind of presidents, different kind of even with our own president as well, Mr. Jokowi, a lot of fake news uh, that seems real. Usually in, in the in the past, fake news are, are chain emails. These days you can see the pictures, you can see the video, you can hear the voice. It seems that they're the one who's actually being recorded, but it's 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 uh, used by AI. So we've decided on April that we have to safeguard the industry, to safeguard the uh, attention of the Indonesian people from fake news. Um, that's why we need to, uh, we launched AI first, uh, not only as a business perspective, but we want also to educate it, to educate Indonesian uh, people that there is such thing as AI who can generate fake news. So people will understand. Now they are very much more selective. Is this real? No, this is AI. No, people are, are selective, not only in the world of uh, technological uh, industry, but uh, mass people as well. Um, the second thing is uh, because TV1 is, is born heavy on journalist, journalism, we have the guidance, we have the rules, we have other people to respond to. If we don't generate news like Hawk News, somebody will criticize us. If it's social media, nobody criticizes. 
Uh, in the publisher, nobody criticizes. So we have the safeguard, uh, the discipline, and the responsibility to always give the factual news. Uh, and this became uh, why most of the Indonesian people rely on TV One. After seeing a lot of maybe news from social media, is this real? If TV One reports it, then it's real. If it's not, then maybe it's a hope. It's, it's not sure yet. So we, we are becoming the uh, uh, place of reference, not only in the traditional media, but also in the new media. Okay, thank you so much, Patofan, for very inspiring and yet actually comprehensive. Since now we know that is the fact and also how actually the television industry, particularly for TV1, embracing the AI, the AI actually for the, of course, for the public, for the public sake. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much once again, Patofan. Thank you so much. All right. So the committee can share the screen again. Okay, so as the recognitions and also the appreciation from the BCOMPAC 2023 committee, we would like to give a token of appreciation to Patofan Eko Nugroho Rotorasiko. So in this occasion, we would like to welcome Professor Sofia as the Rector of Universitas Bakri to give a token of appreciation to Patofan as the keynote speaker. Please welcome Professor Sofia. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Pak Taufan, you know, as a keynote speech, and then, you know, it's very interesting, and then, you know, opening up our knowledge about AI. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank Okay, thank you so much once again, Patofan, for your time. And also, thank you, Professor Sophia. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we will welcome our next keynote speaker. So here with us today already, we have Professor Lee, the Milia PhD from the Central Queensland, Australia. So it's such a pleasant experience to have Professor Lee, the Milia PhD joining us on site in the Bakri campus. But before Professor Lee deliver his speech, let me read his profile first. So Professor Demilia joined the Central Queensland University in 2002 and became the Dean of the School of Business and Law in 2013. So as Dean, he built a new school from the remnants of two former school, commands with the 45 staff and now manage 95 staff across the several campuses grown to the number of course on over from 12 to now on 26 course included vocational training as a new business venture. And also he is responsible for the learning of thousands of students at the School of Business and Law that was recently ranked by the Times Higher Education Index in the 300 ones. So Professor Demilia is an organizational psychologist and continues to teach supervised doctoral students and publicists in organizational behavior, the effect of sick work on well-being, and recently in machine learning. So prior to working in the university sector, Professor Demilia worked for BHP in the steel divisions. So here he worked in a human resource management and developed consulting skill by working on long-term secondment with McKinsey and Co. and kept with the company. So Professor Demilia was a director of the Australian and New Zealand Excellent Academy of Management for uh, 15 years, as well as serving as a treasurer and president in 2008. So Professor Demilia's service to his profession is recognized by being granted the Life Fellow of the Australian and New Zealand Academy of Management, a companion of the British Academy of Management. So without further ado, please welcome Professor Lee Demilia, PhD. The time is your prop. Um, thank you very much for your warm welcome. Um, thank you very much for the uh, invitation to come to this uh, wonderful event. Um, I wanted to be respectful and say something in Indonesian, but I'm not sure that I can say it. Um, Selamat pagi sumanyu. Does that sumanyu? All right. Well, thank you. That's about as much as I could man manage. I'm not that smart, but um, I wanted to be respectful. I 
really enjoyed the uh, the prayer this morning. I had no idea what the man was saying, but the important thing is I could feel the emotion, and I could feel the love that you feel for your uh, for your for your nation and to your religion. So I congratulate you as a country for your uh, consideration. Um, so perhaps uh, we go to the first slide, please. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you might have to help with my English. <laughs> my English is called Australian. I'm not sure if it's clear enough for you. Uh, if I'm speaking too fast, please do this. This will mean slow it down and I'll do my best. Um, so I've called this talk the hype about sustainability. Um, hype, I guess, has a marketing spin to it, but I'm not trying to say that I'm anti-sustainability. I'm trying to say that it's actually a very important concept for us to understand because I think sustainability speaks to a couple of things, our present and our future. And our future, even in uh, Sophia's um, opening remarks, is, uh, has a question mark. On one hand, we can be pessimistic about what climate change means. On the other hand, we can actually see it, uh, sustainability has an opportunity. Um, how do we solve these challenges? How do we actually um, adapt to what the uh, future looks like for us? Um, so let me give you, an, oh, I should say, on one hand, sustainability sounds very simple, doesn't it? Um, but I'm gonna give you some definitions later, but I grew up in a poor family and we practiced sustainability before we actually called it sustainability. So for a poor, poor family, sustainability means grow your own vegetables, live from the land, um, think about how you reuse things. Don't throw or discard things straight away. So I think we practiced uh, sustainability and I'm sure it happens in Indonesia. When you're poor, you are sustainable. You reuse, you recycle, and you think about how you best use your things. The trouble is that in industry, we seem to forget those practices. When we think about a corporation, because they're not our personal resources, we seem to be a bit more wasteful sometimes. But if we think at a micro level, sustainability always makes sense. I hope that uh, anecdote um, helps you to identify with where I'm coming from in this speech. If we go to the second slide, please, I just want to give you an overview of what I'm going to talk about for the next 20 minutes. Um, and that's a little bit about why we should care. I'm going to define sustainability, but I'm going to put it in more simple terms at the end as well. I want to talk a little bit about the divide between academics and practitioners. I think we as academics have played a pivotal role in raising the whole issue of sustainability because it's through our research. It's through our media conversations that we start to tell our community why we should be very careful. Um, however, what academics think is important for sustainability is not the same as what practitioners do. Practitioners are more focused on certain of those sustainable development goals. And I'll talk a little bit about why that may be. Um, the next point is, uh, I already previewed that for me, sustainability for the private sector is a business opportunity. How do we profit from what on one hand looks like uh, pessimism? How do we consider it as a growth opportunity rather than anything else? But it's not clear enough? Yeah. And finally, I want to talk about what are the barriers to sustainability? Um, and of course, in 20 minutes, we're not going to cover everything we possibly could, but my intent is to overview some of these particular areas. So can we go to the next slide, please? Um, you've all seen these. These are the sustainable development goals, and we are meant to achieve this by 2030. 2030 is not that far away. Um, that's what, uh, six years away? And of course, we've made progress at different rates on some of these, but these all make sense. The obvious question is, can we actually do all these things um, and survive as communities? Because we survive on profit, don't we? But we want no poverty. We want no hunger. So it almost seems like the sustainable development goals are almost contradictory. On one hand, it's about preserving, but how do we have growth and preserving what we have? The balancing act is, is, quite, is quite large. If we go to the next slide, there's just a couple of photographs that actually start to tell us why we're concerned about this. So sustainability, we're worried about forest degradation. Now forests, of course, are just one source of, um, of, of a product, I guess. It's one way in which we house ourselves. It's one way in which we actually do something. But the most important thing about forests is it actually cleans our air. 
So we get our oxygen through our forests. So we're concerned about the degradation that happens in forests. We're concerned, of course, about things like landfill. Um, and as a population, as it grows, we're going to continue to uh, create more and more landfill. And one of our challenges, of course, is what do we do with our waste? Um, in the city I live in, next, starting next year, where the council is giving a number of incentives for us to remove our waste. How can we reuse our waste so it doesn't go to landfill? The government has actually said in five years, we will no longer have a landfill. So what do we do? That's our challenge. So the government will provide incentives, but for us as people, as consumers, it's how do we respond differently to the way in which we use things. Um, of course, I've not been in, in uh, Indonesian supermarket, but in Australia, every time you go to a supermarket, everything is packaged. Your apples come in a box. The box is made of paper. It's made of plastic wrapping. So you just want one apple, but you have to throw away so much product to get to the, to the product you actually want. Um, of course, we're concerned about our waterways for a number of reasons. And of course, uh, life above the water and below the water is an SDG. But we're concerned about our waterways because, again, it's a source of food. It's a source of business. How do we preserve our waterways and, of course, our air quality, uh, which is pivotal to driving climate change? We go to the next slide, please. So I want to talk about two drivers for why we're concerned about uh, sustainability, and one is pure population growth. I'm not sure if that link will work. Can you try and click on that link? Because if the link work, it takes you, it takes us to the um, the World Bank live map. Can we access the net? Okay, here we go. Hopefully it's going to work. There we go. So rather than bore you with the numbers, which I did anyway, in case the Zoom link didn't work, I wanted to just show you on the world map what population growth looks like. So slide anywhere through there, and you can see across the decades um, that every decade, world population grows about a billion, 1.2 billion. So this is something like about a 20% increase decade on decade on decade. So at the moment, if I do my maths correct, in 2020, the world population was about 7.8 billion, um, with projections that by 2030, it'll go to about 8.5, 8.6 billion. These are massive numbers, because when we say billion, it sounds like million, but it's actually a big multiplier on top of that again. So what's the problem with, uh, if we go back to the slide, please. The issue with that population growth, of course, is that it places pressure on all, all our natural resources. That's 8.6 billion people that need to eat. That's 8.6 billion people that need to live with decent air quality, um, water quality. That's 8.6 billion people that are generating waste. So our challenge is how do we actually feed these people? And of course, we've got a complicating factor because we actually fight in terms of our land use, should our land be used to grow vegetables and feed ourselves, or should we use it for mining? Australia is a country vast in natural resources, including coal and iron ore, but coal is actually um, in quite close proximity to some of where our people live. So the issue for us is, what do we do with this beautiful piece of land? Do we grow vegetables? Do we farm it and grow cattle and sheep? Or do we rip off the top of the the, um, the soil and actually pull up the coal. This is a live debate in our country each and every day. Um, what's the best use of our natural resources? Um, if we go to the second slide, please. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is work automation. Oh, one back. Yes, that one. Thank you. Work automation sounds um, like it's not a concern for sustainability, but let me dress it up for you. Um, I was very pleased to hear that at TV1, they're using artificial intelligence not to replace labour, but to augment it. But despite the great work that TV1 is doing, there are estimates now that something like 30% of our jobs will disappear due to automation. So think about 30% of 
of jobs disappearing, what that means, because those people still want to live. They may not be drawing a wage, but those 30% of people who are now unemployed will still need to eat. They will still need to sleep. They still need to be housed. So how do we actually now create a community that has to care for more people who are disadvantaged through not, not having employment? So we need to think about it. Certainly there's implications for some of those sustainable development goals, such as hunger for poverty and for decent work. And I'm gonna pick up the issue with decent work in my own country. Um, of course, I'm happy to criticize Australia because I'm not here. Uh, no one else can hear me in Australia in terms of the criticism I, I'll make of my own country. Um, so two key drivers, population growth and changes in our future world in terms of who contributes uh, to the economy. I'm much like, I'm sure like Australia, Indonesia survives in part because you pay taxes, taxes go back into your community and your community generates health uh, and education benefits and so on. Um, the next slide, please. So you've probably seen a cloud map like this before and it's sustainability. And there's all these buzzwords come out, you know, it's, is it the biosphere? Is it energy? Is it about consumption? Is it about recycling? Is it global warming? Sustainability is all these things. It's an umbrella term that tries to wrap up all these particular things. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? So I made the point earlier, are the SDGs a contradiction? On one hand, we're talking about raising our living standards or moderating our living standards, but whichever way we cut it, we're placing a burden on the earth. With a rising population in each and every country, how do we actually do these things? How do we keep growing as a society, but how do we not continue to harm the planet, whether it's air, water, or, um, or, or land quality? Um, so the concern with sustainability actually goes back a few centuries now. The European um, forests were vast and the original business people could see that they could make a lot of money by cutting down their forest. But guess what they'd also learnt not that long after? Once I cut that tree, it doesn't grow back fast enough for me to then make more profit. So in a sense, we started thinking about our resources do have a finite life. We think that everything is infinite, but our natural resources are finite. We can't replace that tree as fast as we want to do it. Of course, now we farm trees, but do you think a tree that's been growing for 10 years gives us the same quality as a tree that stood for 150 years? The product is vastly, vastly different. And I made the point earlier in our country, we have a debate about what is the best use for land at the moment. Could we go to the next slide, please? So let's go to the formal de definitions. The United Nations and the World Commission on Environment uh, had very similar definitions for sustainability. They said it's development or growth that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. So we're back to this idea of balancing. How do we, how do we support the current population but not destroy the ability to take care of our future populations? Another couple of authors actually uh, reinterpreted this a bit differently and they said, well, we've got to integrate economic vitality environmental robustness and social equity to develop resilient, healthy, prosperous communities. Social equity is a fancy word for saying, let's look after everyone. Let's especially cater for the poor because they lack the resources to actually um, persevere. If we go to the next slide, I want to change all these words into something far simpler because there's a lot of words there. Some people have tried to summarize sustainability in terms of three P's or three E's. And if you look at these uh, words carefully, they're actually meaning the same things. A concern for three things, people, prosperity, and profits, or reinterpreting it, a concern for the economy, the environment, and equity. So in each one of these things, we're looking at this balancing act between what we need for today but more importantly, what we need for tomorrow, because tomorrow it's a greater challenge to balance. If we take on the, the principle that uh, population growth will continue and we also are living longer. Once upon a time, you think about Darwin's theory of natural selection, you know, we passed away when we were 60, 70, and that created better opportunities for others, but we're living longer. My father passed away two years ago. He was 91 and he proudly said, and a half. 
So the chances are I'm going to live till I'm about 91. Our medical technology is so advanced that many of us will have a good long life, but how do we, we're still gonna be consumers. So how do we protect ourselves from these, uh, from these future challenges? Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Because again, this sounds quite simple. Let's look at three Ps or three Es. But decision-making has a cultural bias. If it's not a cultural bias, it's a political bias in terms of what uh, a particular nation or society actually values. It's really easy for me to say, um, in Australia, let's use an Australian example, we should stop coal mining today because if we stop burning carbon, the planet will be uh, healthier quicker. But do you think our prime minister would listen to me? Do you think our state premier would listen to me? Of course, they're intelligent people. On one hand, they're going to understand it. But on the other hand, here's the cultural or, or political bias. Stopping the coal sector means the loss of about six, $7 million a day into the state revenue. It means the employment of about 25,000 people. So governments know they have to act, but governments also have to create a transition economy. So right now in my state, the government is busily saying, well, we know coal's a problem, but we have to still employ 20 odd thousand people. So we're trying to build our renewable industry at the same time. So we're building a bridge from our current world to our new world in terms of how we would power our nation. You can see this all the time. We've seen the Kyoto uh, uh, conferences, the Paris, the UN climate conferences. We can't agree on targets. Of course we can, but we can't for political and social unrest. So we have to always manage these things. However, while debate continues, the international agency report um, issued, uh, yeah, we can, we can go to the link if you want. Um, I'm just concerned it'll take a few seconds again. Um, but maybe I've tried to summarize it down the bottom. While we think about energy growth, last year was the greatest amount of emissions again. So global energy for CO2 grew by another 0.9% or 321 MTs. I'm not smart enough to know what MTs are, but it's a big number. I think it's megatons. We got engineers in the room. MT stands for? All right, we can all go to school and learn that one. Um, yeah, but it, it's our greatest ever amount of emissions. Despite all the conferences, despite all the understanding, we continue to put out more energy. Code for global warming, and as Sophia said earlier, if we don't get uh, global warming quickly under cons consideration, it's going to have a number of impacts. And some scientists already say it's irreversible. Um, the good news, if there's any good news, is that our emissions were actually less than feared because we are making some progress in terms of reining in um, uh, that destruction. Go to the next slide, please. We can also think in terms of sustainability, in terms of the environment. How do we use our environment, but not deplete the environment? Can we put back into our in our, to the environment, the resources that we are extracting at the same time? Um, is that too much of a challenge? But that's the challenge we have to try and meet. We can think about economic sustainability, which is how do we produce those goods and services in a cost-effective way that maintains our ability to be profitable, but maintain employment as well. Because usually when we talk about uh, profitability, we talk about removing people from work. And removing people from work is probably the silliest thing we can do in many ways, because people also contribute back via taxes. If they're not working and paying taxes, then we have to find a way to actually um, still care for them. Uh, so I think I've already made that point around there. Can we go to the next slide, please? So I said earlier that academics have driven the debate and government is now listening and has, has listened for a decade or two. Um, but government's got two key things to do. It's got to provide the incentives. So in my country right now, the government is thinking about how do we provide incentives for people to drive uh, electric vehicles? So one strategy is there'll be no road tax uh, for the first couple of years. Um, they're talk and if you're not using, um, and the other thing is if you take an electric vehicle, in Australia, when you buy a litre of, of petrol, you're also paying something like 20 cents in tax. So if you're not 
using electric vehicles, sorry, by using electric vehicles, you're not paying road taxes, you're also not paying um, taxes on the fuel, and that has an impact on the economy, of course. So one, provide incentives. But the second thing is, governments have to provide some form of compliance. And I know compliance has a negative connotation. It's about having the big stick and hitting people. But if you don't enforce some of these things, um, then why would companies actually cooperate? I, I was saying earlier this morning to Jerika that in Australia, we, there is no need for us to report on our environmental progress. Annual reports do not ask for it. You just have to say a statement for marketing purposes like, we care for the environment. You know, we donated $10 million to something. And it sounds like you're doing something, but are you actually doing something that's of meaningful change? So we'll talk a little bit about reporting standards a little bit later. Could we go to the next slide, please? So here's what academic thinks are important. Sustainable development goal number three, providing for good health, providing for clean water and sanitation, providing um, uh, the infrastructure for industry, innovation and, um, and infrastructure. What do practitioners think are important? A little bit different. But practitioners, of course, are concerned with the viability of their company. They're concerned about people's pay and they're concerned about economic growth. How do I do that when you want me to lose less power? If I use more power, I can make more, more goods. So how do, you, how do I balance these, these things now? Um, the second most important thing practitioners think about is responsible consumption and production uh, and so on. Now, part of this reflects our values. Maybe as academics, we think more about social things. Maybe as business people, we're thinking more about profitability things. But we have to work out these differences. Um, the next slide, please. So let's look at what's happening in Australia. These are easy wins for decent work. I'm going to maintain, uh, try and hide my cynicism. But these are our big employers. The University of Melbourne, Melbourne last year paid back $45 million in underpaying its people. Uh, we as workers are entitled to receive fair pay. My former company owed 30,000 people $430 million. Qantas, our big aircraft that I flew on here, it owed $7 million to 638 workers. So just in those three three images, what have we got? My maths isn't very good, but 430 and 45 is about 475 plus seven. $482 million was not paid to Australian workers. And yet we think we're a developed country who treat people fairly. It's quite disappointing to see that um, my country is doing this. And we blame complex industrial laws. Oh, it was just too hard to understand what we had to pay our people. I think I think that's wrong. <laughs> But anyway, let's go to the next slide, please. So I said before, a lot of people are concerned by what sustainability means for their, for their nation, for their country, for their local area. But I actually want to take up the challenge that it's a catalyst for innovation. Think about new businesses that can be actually generated by thinking about how do we reduce or enhance our sustainability. Can you reduce your supply chain as an example? Your supply chain and in business is the most expensive commodity to have. So can we save on transport? If you identify the links in your supply chain, each time you remove something or reduce its cost, you're actually making your organization more efficient and you're reducing those transport costs and emission costs. So we're saving on finances and on carbon. Can we think in terms of lean manufacturing? Can we only produce your goods as required? Currently, our mindset is one to produce as much as possible because it reduces the lower costs, the unit costs. But if those products are just sitting in a warehouse and having to be moved multiple times, that's also uh, not a very uh, good way, good in, uh, use of capital. Can we supply education that meets the capacity to pay? Think about how big this the population across the world is and how many people still do not have access to education. Can we supply that education at a price point that everyone can afford? Um, what's another thing? Uh, can we develop food types that are eco-friendly but still provide better yield? I think these are some of our challenges. We've looked at genetic modification of food. That doesn't mean that's successful. 
but the next iteration of that could be something good. Um, it's happening in my country, and I'm sure it's happening in your country as well. Our public transport no longer runs on petroleum. Um, some of them are solar powered. Some of them have, well, gas isn't all that good either. It's still carbon. But can we think about new forms of powering? Um, in Australia, we're looking at a hydrogen revolution at the moment. How, how do we use hydrogen to, they obviously didn't like what I was saying, so they shut down my presentation. Oh, it's back. Uh, but finally, can we develop eco-friendly products that we can actually use as building materials that insulate? One of the biggest costs in our country is home insulation. So especially in my part of the world, because it's hot, um, uh, they make houses to take in all the wind, take all the fresh air that it comes in. But guess what? In winter, our houses are cold. So can we find a way to build products that actually are friendly on both sides in a warm climate and in a cooling climate? Can we go to the next slide, please. How am I going for time? Am I running out of time? I, I wasn't watching my clock. We still good? Let's look at what sustainability looks like in the private sector. So uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers did a review of um, 1,100 companies in 31, uh, 1,100 odd companies in 31 countries. It's a little bit dated, so I think the news is better than what it is. But three or four years ago, most companies, and this was done by looking at annual reports like I was speaking about earlier. In the annual reports, 72% of companies refer to SDGs. That's, a, that's an impressive number, isn't it? Three quarters understand SDGs. If you look further, now less than 60% mentioned SDGs in their sustainability section. Less impressive is that 34% of people then referred to SDGs in their strategy section. Um, and sadly, only 14% had specific targets. So the good news, industry is aware. International business is aware that there is a problem but only 14% had some sort of strategy to actually deal with the problem. Can we go to the next slide, please? So what are the barriers? Well, I think it's, a, it's our mindset. Sustainability is a, is a psychology. It's our mindset that the transition to um, a better economy means more investment. But we actually are focused on short-term gains, aren't we? So our business model has to be rethought in terms of what this actually means. Do we want short term high profits or do we want longer term enduring and sustainable profits? So as an example, decent work may cost employers in the short term, but does it buy loyalty? And sometimes if you treat your people well, they actually treat you even better as an example. So our business strategy should change. I'm going to use an example. Does Chevron operate in Malaysia? Oh, sorry, Indonesia? No, in here? Yeah, okay. So Chevron, they make their money by uh, drilling for oil. If you were Chevron right now, you know that that industry is no longer profitable in a decade, two, three decades. So when do you start the transition? When do you start, do you search for more oil or do you help now design new technology to reduce emissions? Do you invest in clean energy? These are big decisions to be made, but these are the decisions that all businesses like Chevron need to start making. I'll give you an anecdote. Norway is a country rich in, in, um, in petrol, but you know what they cleverly do? They sell their oil and they invest all their money in what they call their sovereign investment fund. Norway is one of the richest landlords in the world, but their own country, they discourage the use of oil because they'd encourage the use of actually um, clean energy. So they're big on renewables, the use of uh, hydrogen and, uh, and, and water to drive their industry. Next slide, please. So let's come back to the business strategy. Uh, is your business strategy then reinforced to be sustainable? Is it reinforced in your mission value, uh, vision and values? Are your senior leaders truly aligned with the new expectations? Is there a clear change management process that actually uh, runs across the organization? As leaders, do we model responsible use of our resources? Can you imagine a CEO who drives around and pollutes the environment with a big, big, big fancy car, but then tells you we can't use power? 
So our values and our behavior have to be consistent with the message that we're trying to share. Um, do your remuneration systems actually support the direction that you want people to go to? Are they thinking in terms of their sustainable practices? Can we start to explore new partnerships and collaborations to achieve these goals? Because as individual organisations, we may not do that, but working with new partners, we may find a better way to actually um, meet these challenges. The next slide, please. What are unintended consequences? Some organisations genuinely want to do the right thing, but they fail. And one of the reasons they fail is the marketing message is incorrect. Sometimes in our marketing message, we put out too much information. And we, when we have too much information about our products or our services, it actually confuses people. We overload them. And what does our simple brain do? We shut down. We don't want to make the decision. Um, I don't know if you've ever done this, but I, sometimes I stand in the grocery aisle and I pick up a product and it says it's got these properties. And I'm going, I don't even know what they mean. It's supposed to be good. And, and if I can't understand it, how can I then make a decision to actually purchase that particular product? So one, we have to rethink how we sell our message about being sustainable. There's a negative product perception bias. If you see a new product on the shelf and you're going to spend money on this new product, do you, do you try it? There's a perception that if it's an untested product, it's not going to be useful. So you think, am I going to spend now $10 on something that doesn't work? What Gucci does on its website, it actually tells you how green it is, but it doesn't tell you that at the point of purchase. It deliberately does that because it doesn't want you to think that it now has an inferior product. As a brand recognition, Gucci is always associated with something that's high end and quality, but it doesn't want you to know that it's green in case you now have a negative view on what green actually means. The third thing here is that sometimes you have to back up your claims. So there's an American product um, called Keurig that produce coffee pods. If we go to the next slide, please. This is the Keurig uh, coffee pod. It actually is recyclable. There's no problem with its claims. Here's the problem. Many facilities in the US can't actually process that uh, recyclable product. So all the green customers became very upset saying, I bought this product because you, were you told me it's recyclable. When I take it to landfill, it's being rejected because it can't be recycled. So they took out court action. $10 million later, Keurig learnt an expensive lesson. You cannot make claims that your product is sustainable unless you can also demonstrate that in your local community, you can recycle the product. So there's some unintended consequences of trying to do the right thing, but it actually backfires um, on you at the same time. Can we go to the next slide, please? And I think it's my final slide. So I've tried to um, address or position this talk in part about saying that sustainability has got two major issues. And one, it's our growing population, it's resource intensive, and can our plant, planet continue to feed, fuel, and satisfy our future? Um, I talked briefly about some examples of environmental damage and that sustainability seeks to balance our current needs against our future needs and how do we actually do that? Do we need a new business and personal mindset for how we approach these challenges? And SDGs may be a threat, but I have tried to argue that it's actually a catalyst for innovation and I actually am optimistic that we can actually solve this. Uh, we actually solve our problems when we accept the problem is real that it's urgent and we direct our resources accordingly. Thank you for your attention, uh, both in the room and online. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Prof Lee, for sharing with us in the Become Back 2023. So once again, I would like to invite all of the participants. If you have a questions to Prof Lee, for the online participants, you may drop the questions in the Zoom chat box. And for the on-site participants, if you have a questions, you may raise the hand. So here we in the virtual can see also. All right. So first, perhaps we can we can go to the online question. Uh, online question first, Prof Lee. All right. So the questions. Okay. So the questions is coming 
from I choose the interesting one. <laughs> this coming from Iris Prisma, bro. So the question is: through advanced advances in technology, can we really significantly reduce our impact on the environment in the long run? Or we are just alloc reallocating our ecological impact? I think it's a very good question, and I'm not an environmental scientist to fully answer that question. Um, but I think any any attempt we make uh, has to help. So how can we think about what's the best technology? I mean, I believe that technology will reduce our, our reliance. Uh, therefore, we will use less fuel. We will find cheaper ways of doing it. So that's a, that's a great strategy. Whether we create another unintended consequence of that action, I think the future will tell. That was a good question. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. And we go to the uh, next questions. So this is coming from Adrian Pratama from Bakri University. All right. So the question is uh, related to the companies properly, <laughs> but not there <laughs> in the online. All right. So properly the question looking is... looking in the room for the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you? You're in another room. But Sorry. here in the Zoom chat box. All right. So the question is, Several companies in Indonesia or other countries across various sectors face difficulties integrating ESG or environmental, social, and governance principle into their business activities. So they are uncertain about where to start and which guideline to utilize. So furthermore, there is no regulation mandating the adoption of ESG principle resulting in low public awareness of environmental issues. So conversely, companies require funds from investors or banks that come with various requirements linking to ESG principles. So eventually, this condition could potentially elevate the occurrence of greenwashing in their effort to secure funding for their companies. So what is your opinion on this phenomenon, roughly? Yeah, again, it's a very good question because it actually understands the issue at hand. Um, the only problem with um, the, the comment about greenwashing, that greenwashing actually leads to those claims of that can't be sustained. So let's come back to the other principle. I made the point that uh, we require government to provide incentives, but similarly, private sector can get involved because the private sector needs to actually see where the business opportunity is. And I guess in one of my slides, I tried to outline what some of those business opportunities could be. But again, I think this is a time for that innovators uh, whether it's private and public partnerships can actually co collaborate to actually explore where those actually benefits can accrue, um, but they exist. I think sometimes we sit back waiting for someone else to actually provide the first lot of seed funding. And that's where in, in Australia, at least, the government will tend to do that. But I think the private sector should actually see the reality of the business opportunity that's at hand and invest. Okay, thank you so much, Prof. Lee, for the answer. And I think I'm going to address one last question, Prof. Lee. All right, so this is uh, the last questions. Uh, yeah, this is <clears throat> also related with the previous one, I think. How can we ensure that the sustainability initiative that were carried out in the company actually can improve in the company image itself in the eye of the public? Because after all, the corporations need added value from the extra costs in cure for this step. Uh, yeah, so I guess I made the point earlier that it's our business mindset about wanting to see profits accrue rapidly rather than seeing profits that are more sustainably delivered across time. Um, but if you see it always as a cost, then we're never going to see the, the, the solution. So we've got to stop thinking about sustainability as a cost and see it as an opportunity to actually profit in the longer term. All right, so it's related with the mindset, yeah, probably, yeah. All oh, right, yes. okay, great. So last change for the on-site uh, participants in the Berkeley campus, in the room. So do you have any question that you want to address uh, so we can hear also in the virtual? If mm -hmm. not, yes, yes. Sometimes yes, to my Mark? students, Sometimes to my students, I offer them uh, you know, ten dollars for a question. I think in the future it's like okay, it will be more interesting. Yeah, for a question. Please, quick. All right. Yes, please welcome back. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, Rosalie. I think like uh, we are trying to consider you as a, a because your background is in organizational psychologist. 
Would there be like a, some kind of like a, some tricks or from, from like a social psychology or organizational psychology that could, you know, like a, be used to fight against the so-called this uh, politicization of this uh, issue? Because I think like uh, in many countries, there are some populism, so like, a, the, like a, you said before, that people would like to vote for somebody and that they will try to, you know, like from the far right or the far left or this kind of thing, you know? So what is your, your opinion about that? That's a tough question, Arif. <laughs> it's a tough question. Um, and we don't have a day to answer it. I think the problem is sometimes we, we look to our leaders for solutions, but the solutions are never simple ones. Um, if Donald Trump thought that there was an environmental problem, well, he, Donald Trump doesn't believe in environmental problems. Um, he recently said, he repeated uh, uh, fake news. And in Australia at the moment, we're, we're exploring the opportunity of actually building offshore wind farms. Mm -hmm. So these are wind farms in the ocean. And there was a report that said that offshore wind farms kill whales and dolphins. And Donald Trump repeated this statement. There was no evidence ever that wind farms actually kill anything because they don't exist. <laughs> so the problem with our simple leaders, and I'll include Donald Trump as a simple leader, is that their solutions are always simple. But we know the sustainability, we know that climate change, we know that the dangers that we face are intractable, not intractable, but they are wicked problems. There's no simple solution. So we've got to collaborate around what are the better ways to actually unpack these problems. But as an organizational psychologist, I have no magic in how we're going to do that. Arif. Thank you for all your questions. All right, thank you so much for all the questions in for the online and also the on-site participants. All right, thank you so much once again, Prof Lee. All right, so we will continue to the next agenda is the recognition and also the appreciation from the Be Compact 2023 committee. So we would like to give a token of appreciation to our keynote speaker, Professor Lee Dimilia, PhD. So in this occasion, we would like to welcome Dr. Dudi Rudianto as the Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Social Science, Universitas Bakri. Please welcome Dr. Dudi. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Prof. Lee, your coming and your participation as keynote speaker. And I hope you coming again in the next event. Thank you so much, Prof. Lee. Thank you very much, Rudy. Okay, thank you so much, Prof. Lee and Pak Dudi. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so now we will welcome our next keynote speaker. So already here with us today in the Zoom platforms, please welcome Dr. Wan Norbani Wan Nurdin as the Director of Transnational Education, ICEPS, UITM Malaysia. So it's such a pleasant, pleasant experience to have Dr. Wan. How are you, Dr.? I'm okay. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, Thank you, uh, Miss Anti. Um, All right, uh, Dr. Wan, so yeah. allow me to read your profile first before oh, okay. you start delivering the keynote speech. All right. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, Dr. Wan is currently the Director of the Transnational Education Department in the Institution of Continuing Education and Professional Studies, or ICEPS, UITM Malaysia, where she develops, manage, and execute the TNE business agenda for UITM. So she holds a PhD in a communication from Auckland University of Technology, New Zealand, and also a senior lecturer at the Faculty of Communication and Media Studies, University Technology Mara, or UIT. Malaysia. So one's research focuses on communication technologies, their development and impact on academia, practice, and communities. She also served as a reviewer on rated journals and conferences in the field of public relations, communication, and media. So she is also a council member in the Institute of Public Relations Malaysia, one of the oldest national bodies in Malaysia, and one of the members in the advisory board for Yayasan Era Surya, a Malaysian NGO that focuses on on environment, youth and sustainability, 
And also currently she has a book accepted for the publication and she writes journal articles on communities, publics, digital conservations, and reputation studies. So she practices also Iyengar yoga, push walks, and also hikes during her free time. So without further ado, please welcome Dr. Ma, the time is yours. Okay, thank you, Ms. Santi. So before I share my uh, slides, I would like to uh, thank uh, Universitas Bakri for having me here, uh, especially to the active and forever young uh, Madam Rector, Professor Insinyur Dr. Sophia. Uh, thank you for having me. And also uh, Dr. Dudi for the invitation to speak today. Um, and thank you for Dr. Jurika uh, for arranging this. I know I've been quite notorious in the sense that I have been giving you <laughs> everything so late because I was just thinking about what I should say. I think sustainability is a topic that everybody has uh, talked about and it has been there for uh, you know many decades and we've been talking about it and I think there has been some uh, development and also some changes and positive changes going forward. I also would like to uh, kirim salam saya kepada um, Pak Tri Andika uh, because I've been in uh, Universitas Bakri and the trendy Jakarta uh, and I've been there and I've met these wonderful people so I have to you know kirim salam because I'm not sure whether they are in the um, audience or not. So Pak Tri Andika, Ibu Yanti, my uh, PhD student and Ibu Ali and also Mbak Halilah for, uh, for making my trip, my first trip to Jakarta and also to Universitas Bakri, a memorable and uh, a great one. So I wish I could be there, but then there's, you know, so many traveling this year, so I decided to just join you online. Okay, let me share my, my slides. Okay, can everyone see my slide? Let me just do this. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Right. So uh, the topic that I have decided finally to, to talk today is about advancing sustainability. So, um, eh, no, this is your, your sorry. <laughs> advancing SDG goals uh, from circular economy to responsible communication. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and also the university that I'm from. Um, and also I will look at two to focus. So the first focus will be on circular economy because that is actually has been going on. And we started SDG uh, initiative uh, looking at circular economy. And I want to propose the, uh, the SDG 18. Actually, it's already been proposed, uh, you know, to, to have responsible communication as our as the 18th SDG. So a little bit about myself. Um, like uh, Miss Anti was telling everybody, I'm the director of transnational education. So with the Institute of Continuing Education and Professional Studies. So we are actually a, a marketing arm for UITM. I've been with UITM almost 19 years. So I've been teaching, I think, and also holding management posts, um, you know, um, starting with the head of program to the deputy dean. And now I'm the director of, of the NE. Um, and my research interest, I think, has already been, been shared just now. A little bit about UITM. UITM is the largest public university in Malaysia. So we have hang on, almost, I think, you know, 170,000 uh, local international students. We have 13 autonomous state campuses. Uh, the main campus is actually in Sha'alam, where I'm at. And for UITM, we have actually catered our um, the goals or the our strategic plan and our strategic goals actually to fulfill or to try to achieve not only uh, you know the research part or the academy or teaching and learning part of it, but also uh, in terms of the sustainability part. So the global goals for twenty twenty one sustainability report. UITM uh, assembles a lot of initiatives and programs uh, that we have undertaken. And this is actually part of the Global Goals Agenda um, where we align our uh, Global Research University 2025 together with national and global shared visions. So a lot of this are actually focusing on the ecosystem mindset and skill set of the people that have been reformed. We call it reform. So what we're trying to do is reset, recover and restore where we uh, focus on uh, most of our research based on the SDG team. So 
look at it, this is the 2021 active research team based on 17 SDG. So a lot of money has been contributed to focus on different different um, SDGs. So number one into them. Also have this. Um, I'm just going to give you like a few focus. Um, that UITM has when it comes to sustainability projects. So we have the Green Center, uh, where it is actually, uh, you know, under the portfolio of the Deputy Vice Chancellor. So we are focusing on strategic team, which is the smart campus uh, and aim to uphold the sustainability agenda of the university. Um, so a lot of green initiatives are actually being done um, uh, in this center. Uh, to actually focus on, uh, you know, um, the six key clusters is actually setting an infrastructure where waste, water, energy and climate change, education and research and transportation. So each of these cluster will have, um, you know, their own initiatives and activities. We also have, you know, one example that we do for uh, empowering women, empowering women on gender equality, whereby um, we have uh, one project uh, called the Empowering Women in Chemistry. So it is uh, the Faculty of Applied Sciences. They helped a, um, a breakfast event to assist women chemists to expand their networks on contacts both locally and internationally. As you can see, women in SNT is still, I think we do not have the numbers. I mean, the numbers are there, but better than before. But I think, you know, we need more, they need more encouragement, they need more supports. So this is one of the example. Uh, we also have the uh, Good Health and Wellbeing, SDG3, where we have uh, some project uh, focusing on Parkinson's disease, uh, which was actually uh, handled by our faculty of pharmacy. Um, and they have done uh, research pertaining to that matter. Okay, so going back, going into my um, talk or my speech today is I have two parts. So the part one is actually I'm focusing on circular economy. Part two, I'll be focusing on responsible communication. So the part one focuses on a campaign that we did a couple of years back uh, to actually, this is actually well, more than three years back because it's actually before COVID. Um, where we re relook at the idea of recycling, um, and I think we we have to somehow look at now the generation is different. So the actual recycling uh, campaign that was started, I think it was actually in the Malaysia tenth uh, plan, uh, was actually you know a couple of decades ago. So it's actually something that is focusing on a different generation. So nowadays, the new generation, the Gen, Gen Z and Generation Alpha, they need more involvement. I think um, this is what we did uh, with, um, uh, there's this, uh, with, I call it Community Relations 3.0, a case of recycling initiative, social media and mobile application. So what we have done is that, um, yeah, this is also in line with the initiative of the Malaysia's Roadmap towards zero, uh, zero single-use plastics. So the three parties that was involved in these case studies are this, um, sorry, okay, um, Yayasan Era Surya. So this is actually a non-profit organization that I'm involved in, which deals with a lot of uh, sustainability uh, activities and youth and also um, youth environment and sustainability. So they, they deal with a lot of that key uh, focus. So the we had these era student entrepreneurs as well. So these are the people who are uh, the circular economy expert that came out with the app. So it is a partnership between a non-profit organization and UITM because I've got my, we've gotten now students involved in a non-profit and a for-profit organization in a quest to engage with the current public on an all issue, which is waste recycling. It is a, it's an all issue. That's what I, I'm saying. But the engagement is needed in the sense that we have to refresh this all ideas of recycling. Uh, so what we did was we engaged young adults and in behaviors of recycling and try to inculcate in how they can minimize waste through social media and web and mobile application. We, we did a mobile app. So the app called is called My Returns. So this is the app that we tried, we promoted. Um, 
as to what transpired is they need to have, I think, the idea of they need to somehow know what is the app is all about, what does it do, how can they contribute into the app, how can they participate, how can they uh, use the app, yeah? So, um, and then part two is they talk to the uh, public, the audience. So they participated in a showcase exhibition at the local mall presenting about the project. My returns the app and also promoting awareness and on the recycling of social media and circular economy. So this is some of the things at the very beginning. But what I want to focus is actually the app somehow or another uses that circular economy model in the sense that we have a consumer that uses the product and we have the waste collectors. So the app it's actually, you know, collaborating with waste collector and then they have that and also the waste concessionaires and then the organization of remanufacturing in a sense that when all these data that comes into the app would somehow be going back to the brand owners. So let's say Coca-Cola produces, um, I don't know, uh, maybe this is just a number, 10,000 uh, bottles or cans a day. Um, so how many comes back to them in terms of recyclable, recyclable material? So these are the things that, that I think the uh, brand owners want to find out. And we also would have some sort of like contribution in terms of making the environment better. Um, and there's some um, benefits that comes with this app whereby, you know, a certain amount of contribution or a certain amount of recycling activities would somehow give you back in terms of, uh, you know, it can be mandatory, but mandatory is very, 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 very few. But we have, you know, um, uh, coupons, we have coupons, we have discounts. And so all these are being uh, developed as an, as we speak right now. I mean, it is actually being, they, are, they have launched it to a couple of suburbs, but still, uh, it is. It needs more promotion. Yeah. So the mobile app created for this campaign it is with a purpose to encourage youth to participate and engage in the recycling initiative through points and rewards. So, um, and also I think the idea here is the communication part, the engagement part is actually very important, especially when we're dealing with Gen Z and Gen Alpha. So, um. I want to show you something. I'm hoping that I'm the truth to... is you can actually use plastic for many things. The issue here is actually the plastic, uh, where we evaluate from different perspectives what plastic can do and what the effect it has to our environment. But I think in my own opinion, the issue here is not plastic itself, but us, the human, how we behave and our consumerism. Because the plastic itself is just a thing. What we do with it is what happened. But I think it's time we start thinking about our attitude and our behavioral patterns towards single-use plastics. Okay. All right. So this is where we're talking about an old issue, which is recycling. So how we reimagine recycling and it is being re revisited and re-emulated and beyond. Um, there's also the truth is you can actually use plastic for many things. Okay, and also in terms of inculcating recycling among youth, because nowadays I think um, the idea needs to bring we need to bring it back, but we need to refresh it. Earlier we went to a community cleanup. And that's where I truly realized how big of an issue global plastic pollution is and how difficult it is to separate and segregate waste. I'm really heartbroken to see all the things. It's just that from what I see from my own opinion, is just that this country is somehow lack a various awareness, but the responsibilities of every individual, every people in this country towards their own consumers to their own uh, plastic stuff, their own waste and everything, it's just not there. And we all know that when we throw things into our rubbish bins and the garbage collectors come, sometimes some of this trash gets into the rivers. And as you can see behind me, that's how it ends. Okay, so that's the first focus. The first focus is to reevaluate, to revisit the the actual the old issue, which is recycling and dealing with Gen Z and Gen uh, Alpha, 
there needs to be an involvement and engagement that you have to get them to see, you know, what can they do? And social media plays a really important role. Communicating through social media plays a really important role. Even the app was actually, you know, the, the idea of using the app was actually promoted through social media. So in through social media, we got a lot of traction uh, and, and engagement with the youth. But this needs revisit, revisiting again, you know, after COVID, after, you know, we have to revisit this campaign again. So it is something that, you know, my colleagues and I feel that it is very important, especially for, for the youth of today, for our current uh, target audience, which is the Gen Gen Y, Gen Z, and Gen Alpha. Um, the second part of my focus is actually because when we talk about you know communicating engagement is actually very very important. Is that uh, I want to talk a little bit on uh, responsible communication because responsible communication post. Yeah, COVID and also, you know, having all this fake news and, you know, irresponsible reporting and so on and so forth. We, this is actually, it goes in, it should be embedded in all the other 17 SDGs. So what we have done um, as communicators, okay, let me just give you a bit of uh, some um, definition of responsible communication. Responsible communication is, is the responsible management of the communication process. Content of the communication impacts of the communication support. It is targeted, human transparent, truthful, caring of its economic, social, and environmental impacts. Okay, so this somehow encapsulate what we we uh, we want to actually propose. Um, so these are some that I found. Um, before I go into the practicality or the what we have done when it comes to promote promoting or proposing responsible communication to the UN, I want you to look at two um, campaigns or two. One is actually an advertisement. The other one is actually a brand, not selling its product but promoting self empowerment and self esteem. This is actually an old campaign. Uh, but I think it is very powerful whereby the uh, research or this uh, campaign was actually held in five cities, you know, New Delhi, Sao Paulo, I think it was, uh, in the US, if I'm not mistaken, London, and, uh, you know, five different cities all around the world. And the results are similar. So what it says that, you know, everybody thinks about themselves, especially women, thinks about is it's not something that's bizarre, but, you know, everybody has that kind of, you know, like of self-empowerment but um, or self-esteem. Let me uh, play for you the video. Let me stop sharing and then share the video. Mm. Oops. Mm. Yeah. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll just play, you know. Uh, I we had an option of two pathways to walk, and they led to two doorways. Given the choice between a door labeled beautiful or a door labeled average, which would you choose? Dove's latest campaign set up entrances in Shanghai, San Francisco, London, Sao Paulo, and Delhi. They watched as women made the decision to walk through the beautiful door or the average door. I went through the average door. Really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I didn't even hesitate. Surprisingly, many women walked through the average door. In a recent survey by Dove, 96% of women do not choose the word beautiful to describe their appearance. I walked into that door which said average and I didn't feel really good after that. 
todos os dias eu passo pela porta comum e ontem foi um dia único e eu optei por passar pelo bonita. The powerful results sparked a conversation about how women perceive their own beauty. And Dove wants them to be able to always choose beautiful. I wanted to go through the average door, but my mom just pulled me over to the hospital door. Maybe I could walk in that door. You can. It was quite a triumphant feeling. It was like telling the world, I think I'm beautiful. The hashtag choose beautiful campaign sends a meaningful message, and we hope it helps to inspire women all over the world. Be sure to tune in. Okay. So as you can see, Duff can actually um, promote his product, but this campaign somehow another was actually sponsored by Duff. But the idea is actually to promote self-empowerment and self-esteem because the idea now in the era of mental health and how everybody is feeling, I think, uh, vulnerable a lot of the time so this is actually a very important campaign that needs to be revisited over and over again to actually you know tell women all around the world that you are beautiful and you can feel beautiful nobody can tell you that you're not you know so for me at this age i seriously couldn't get less because you know i think whatever i want but i have a gen z I am the mother in that that uh, video whereby you know, I will pull my daughter to go into the beautiful uh, door because you know she doesn't think she's beautiful. I, you know, these are the things that you know uh, we have to actually, uh, you know, as a as a human being, as a mother, as an uh, educator, I think this this should be something that's important. And for a brand, uh, for Dove to be that brand to promote this, and I think it's wonderful because responsible communication that we are promoting right now. So let me just share back my uh, screen with you. Um, oops. How do I do this? Hang on, okay. Uh, stop share, okay, new share. There's one more, one more that I want to show you. Maybe I shouldn't be sharing anything yet. Uh, I'll just show you the video because there's two videos that I want to share with you. So one is Dove promoting this campaign on Everybody is Beautiful. But the other one is about Julie's. Julie's is our local brand, uh, you know, that uh, produces biscuits. Um, but this is actually a Hari Raya uh, advertisement, which I find that it is very interesting because of the message that it's trying to convey. And it has subtitles because it is actually in Bahasa. But some of you will understand it, right? Um, so let me just share with you. Oh, where is it? <laughs> I have so many. Is this the one? No. Yes, this is the one. Um, okay, can everyone see? Yes, yes, we can see. Awesome. Okay. So I am playing. Oh. Oh, director. Director, kalau anak I tak boleh balik jumpa I, kenapa I tak boleh pergi jumpa diorang? Nak pergi macam mana? Nah, tu apa? Itu kata prop, tak boleh bergerak tau. Ha? Ini iklan raya tau, iklan raya. Ha? Kamu bila nak? Kamu bila nak? Ah, susahnya. Kamu bila nak? Bila, kamu bila nak? Eh, hey, tak ada benda lain aku nak tanya. 
pasal crypto ke, pasal global warming ke, pasal mental health ke, pasal gender inequality ke, tak ada ke? Kawin, kawin, kawin. Kita tak boleh ubah skrip. Eh? Ini iklan raya tau, iklan raya. Eh, ha. eh selain sidapu, water eye, ada lagi tak tempat lain? Ada. Ha. Lepas ni awak meninggal ya. Eh? Eh? Kendang kanci. Bili, 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 ya. Bili lah. Awak kan nak masak. Besok bima awak ni ya. Ha? Bawa kan dah meninggal, ya. Skrip yang cakap. Ha? Eh? Skrip yang cakap. Yes, no. No, I want no, no, no. Ha, feeling. Okey, sekarang ni keluarkan air mata sebelah kiri. Sebelah kiri saja satu. Eh, jangan lap, jangan lap, jangan lap. Biar, biar. Direktor. Apa sah saya seorang yang kena masak? Mana ada beradik lain? Kita tak kena ubah sikit ni. Ini kelan raya tau. Actually, tuan director, saya boleh masak tau. Boleh tak saya masuk dalam sini? Mana orang semua ni datang? Aku tak faham tu lah. Okay, so... um. How do I stop share? Okay, so let me show, stop sharing. Okay, a little bit of context, especially uh, maybe, I don't know whether probably is in there. Um, the idea of uh, a Raya or our Eid celebration, um, the advertisement is always about, uh, you know, a mother or parents are being left out, you know, at the village and while the kids are in the city and they don't visit their parents and, and you know, they things like that and this stereotyping that women has to do the cooking and also every time you go home or go back to uh, your hometown you know your aunties will ask you if you're not married yet why aren't you married so these are some of the stereotyping or stereotypes that has been going on so when Julie's addressed that I think it's actually interesting and I find that this is actually uh, that uh, advertisement I think it was two, three years ago. So, but after that, you can see there's just more, uh, the, the content is changing. The content is changing. So it's no longer about uh, uh, children abandoning parents and so on. Okay, let me go back to my slides. Oops, where is it? Okay, so um, so we've seen uh, the Duff campaign um, uh, on empowerment and also the stereotyping, okay? The stereotyping, uh, addressing stereotype. Stereotyping, okay. So the brand, what they're doing right now, they are, they are um, using different kind of content in terms of promoting their brands or their reputation. So brand con countering stereotyping and empowering women. So this is what Julie has, has done in the recent ad. And if you can see that, you know, uh, after that, there are also similar ads uh, focusing on different issues, um, uh, but, you know, at the same time promoting their product. So uh, when we talk about responsible communication, we're talking about, you know, you have to look at what you are saying and in the sense that, you know, you got to be truthful. So this is actually a collaboration between LSPR and... Um, uh, global alliance uh, about coronavirus COVID and this has actually been projected in LSPR uh, website and also in the uh, global alliance um, website as well in terms of points, uh, 12 points to make a responsible communication about coronavirus. This is actually post after uh, coronavirus. Before you communicate, think about the impact of your message beyond your organization. Uh, do not hide the impact of the pandemic. Uh, be realistic in your communication based on facts. Yeah, Use straightforward, plain language to minimize uh, drama dramatizing the situation. Include hope in the spirit of the communication. Spread good examples and practices. Identify and legitimize people's emotion. Give priority to mes messaging from official sources. Avoid sharing fake news. Be critical of sources of information. Don't saturate networks with messages. 
Okay, this is also another thing that's actually quite interesting. Don't spend time criticizing public communication. Try to cooperate with them to improve. Support the work of the media providing accurate information in the right moment. Good humor is an antidote, antidote to crisis as long as it is not frivolous. Okay, so this is um, something um, is actually an actual example um, in terms of uh, responsible reporting. So Global Alliance last year, I think, I have come up with um, a call, an open call to the PR profession and communication, marketing communication profession to add a new goal to the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. So what they have done is that they have uh, submitted a letter to the Secretary General of the United Nations to make the 18th SDG as a responsible communication. It has been signed by 100 over organization, association, communication association all around the world. Uh, in that letter, that letter has, been, has been signed, supported by 100 over uh, association and international organization all over the world. Uh, to support you know, the idea of making the um, 18th goal as the responsible communication. Um, so what the um, Global Alliance is actually uh, an association, a uh, organization that somehow represents a lot of nations in this um, all around the world to promote public relations, communication and marketing communications activities. You can go to Global Alliance, they have a lot of activities and also some uh, a lot of case studies, real life case studies for students and academics to use. Uh, and then what they say is when we talk about responsible communication, it means it, it is an open dialogue about global challenges such as climate change, poverty reduction and democracy. Consider dialogue as the most powerful weapon, freedom of opinion and press. This is actually quite tricky because in some uh, um, countries, this is actually not supported. Uh, it has guidelines. You know, when we talk about freedom of speech or freedom of opinion, it is within some conditions. Ethical approach to organization and institutional communication based on facts, um, fight against fake news and any kind of propaganda. Malaysian uh, government have um, a couple of sites uh, to counter fake news. You can actually check whether uh, the news is fake or not. Educate uh, individuals to use their communication powers, especially through social media. And that is also another thing. And I think in terms of our students, what is important is the digital media literacy. I think the idea of how do you use social media. Social media is a powerful tool, uh, tools that, you know, you use, uh, anybody can say their opinion. Anybody can actually mobilize and uh, public opinion, you know. Uh, public and private support for rigorous journalism, support diversity at the deep level and equality of genders, empathy to those who suffer from hunger, poverty, lack of opportunities, war, forced migration and discrimination, and positive and inclusive language. Yeah, So you can actually go and have a look uh, more in terms of that in the Global Alliance website. Um, okay. Um, the conclusion is that what we need what we need now, especially in the era of social media, is to incorporate responsible communication in advancing our social uh, our SDG goals. So in terms of building awareness and engagement, I think that's very important, especially now when we talk about the younger generation or Gen Z, Gen Alpha, they they want to be they they want to engage. Uh, and they engage in their own kind of, you know, special language and terms. So we have to, to understand that in order for us to actually get them to, to follow through or to actually uh, help us execute our SDG goals, these are the things that we need to do. Transparency and accountability is also very important. Uh, a lot of organization are uh, publishing publishing their uh, accountability report, you know, in terms of uh, the SDG goal and environmental initiatives. Uh, promoting inclusivity and diversity is also very important, especially when we talk about um, women empowerment, uh, we talk about different race and genders. <coughs> Collaboration and partnership in the in the in my current job, um, what we do is we provide um, programs, UITM programs to uh, nations that doesn't that are starting their universities programs in that particular area, uh, because UITM is actually the largest uh, public university. So we are our our ranking is actually good. But our programs are are not as 
expensive to be franchised when we talk about uh, you know to to uh, Middle East Nisha and these are the things that I feel that collaboration and partnership with countries that can that we can support and help establish education is also you know contributing to the SDG we have to measure the impact and also we have to report address challenges responsibly I think that's actually very important empowering individual for actions I think this uh, is something that needs uh, more care and um you know and support uh, harnessing technology responsibly you know with ICEP so we are using a lot of AR, uh, you know we're using a lot of new technologies uh, we have MOOCs we have uh, micro credential where uh, education is actually uh, you know flexible uh, it can be consumed anywhere uh, anytime and the role of media in shaping narratives, I think that's actually very important. We still need the media to actually help us in shaping the narrative, the correct narrative, the truthful narrative, the more transparent narrative. Um, and I think that's it. Oops. Yes, that's it. Thank you so much, everyone, for having me. So that's the end of my presentation. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Wan, for sharing with us in a Be Compact 2023 and also already share about the real example and also the contribution that you already done uh, with your, uh, I mean, like the youth in your school and also the community involvement also and show us the example in the advertisement, in the advertisement also. All right. So, Dr. Wan, uh, now we will addressing some questions from the participants. Okay, Dr. Wan, can you still hear my voice? Because your screen... Okay, all right. Because okay. previously um, yeah, it's because freezing. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Dr. Wan. All right. Uh, we have the first questions is coming from Aldi Ara Ahmad. So the question is, um, actually, how might organization bridge the gap between the circular economy practices and responsible communication? to accelerate progress towards the SDG and uh, particularly for fostering a more sustainable and socially responsible global impact. Yeah. Uh, Dr. White? Okay. All right. Uh, okay. okay. So let me just read back because... <laughs> Yeah, okay, the line different. is not very clear, so I can't use that. Okay, how am I... Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, between circular economy practices and responsible communication to accelerate yes. progress SDG, fostering a more sustainable and socially responsible global how can we bridge it okay enough in the sense that this actually uh what the organization are doing is actually measuring their footprints their you know uh, recycling footprints their uh you know data footprints and so on and so forth but i think the 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 is to communicate your findings uh, in the in their annual reports. That is actually a requirement. But also, what they need to do is actually engage. I think they need to do a bit more in terms of engaging the youth. The youth needs to be part of these responsible communication uh, activities in order for them to actually, how do you say, transition whatever it is that they're doing to, to the current youth. Uh, and I think what uh, I have given, I think in terms of Dove, in terms of Julie's, I think there's a few more Gillette, you know, the campaign whereby it doesn't have to do, it doesn't, it doesn't connect at all to the products and services, but it, it somehow highlights the actual issues that we are facing right now. So I think that somehow can, uh, it's a start to responsible communication being part of the circular economy. Uh, you know, for us to actually be more sustainable and socially responsible. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Aldi. Okay, so uh, we go to the next questions coming from John Mar and Raxial. So the question is, is the use of social media to promote the focus and goals of SDG actually persuade the new generation to take action in a local and global scale as a new generation tends to not care if it is there's an interest with them? Yeah. I know because I have uh, one Gen, Gen Z at home and one Gen Alpha. They seriously don't, don't, I mean, it's not that they don't care. You just have to get them involved, the engagement. Uh, so... 
like you know like uh, with the the program that we did with recycling uh that was actually gen y so they actually when we talk about recycling it is something that is you know everybody does it well not everybody does it but it's an old issue it's, it's something that you know people keep telling them what to do but giving them the experience of what is it how do you recycle uh, plastic and also showing them how it is interconnected not only what they do but what they do when they consume it it goes back to the producer and then somehow or another it can actually help to uh, promote or uh, contribute to the idea or to, to the to the initiative for recycling as a whole. So yeah, social media, because this is their toys. I always tell my, my students that this is your toy. You grew up with social media. You, you cannot live without it. So they want to be able to engage through social media. So you got to use their toy. You got to use the medium that they use. And when we talk about um, the, new, the new generation, they have these social media influencer who are an environmentalist. Uh, who have a lot of followers. We can engage with these environmentalists, you know, a young environmentalist who wants to do sustainable activities. So these are the things that we can actually do. So you, you, you go into their playground. So social media is, is a way, is actually a very strategic way for us to actually engage with the younger generation and to make them care. I hope that answers your question, John. Yes, it's answered actually. All right, Dr. Lan. So from the campus, yeah, from the campus, since the Zoom account is raising the hand. So yes, please welcome Ibu. Assalamualaikum, Doctor. Waalaikumsalam, Ibu Ali. Is it yeah. Ibu Ali? Kenapa lah tak datang? Kita, kita semua rindu lah dengan Dr. <laughs> Nanti nanti sebab tahun ini terlampau banyak traveling so saya punya anak sudah complain so tak apa I just want to uh, maybe uh, to resume about uh, your presentation is about uh, this all about sustainability then how we can popularize the sustainability itself maybe uh, just our uh, question here and sebenarnya nak 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 siapa aja karena kami semua rindulah dekat doktor okay I terima kasih <laughs> uh, thank you wali ibu eli um i i think you know when i i first visited univakri i i feel really at home because everybody was so friendly but i insyaallah saya akan datang lagi ya mungkin tahun depan we'll do more research collaboration and i think i said also i'm talking to uh, pak triandika betul of... betul research collaboration in sustainability doctor jomlah yes, jom yes <laughs> it's a digital media literacy and i think that it's actually very important we get involved with gen y gen z dengan gen alpha and boleh um, masukkan Ibu Yanti juga because her, she, her topic of research is on Gen Z yeah, in Jakarta. Okay, so we'll talk about that later. Okay, so your, how do we popularize it? Okay, um, when we talk about the SDG Go, it is, again, it is an old topic. You know, uh, the, the new generation or currently everybody is into trending. Everything that's trending, everything that is, you know, everything that's popular. So how do you make it popular? By engaging young people, of course, uh, you know, younger generation. We have a lot, like I said just now, the social media influencer. We have, uh, I think, the twins from the UK who promotes environmental uh, uh, activities and projects that, you know, they have, and they have a lot of followers. So uh, in terms of, I mean, for our generation, it's all about, changing mindset I think the changing mindset the, the recycling is for me you know frankly speaking it's not it's not so successful the reducing of plastic so it's not that if we're not there yet uh they asked a certain state that are banning plastic you know um a hundred percent so we have to bring in our own recycle bags to the supermarket if you want to go and do your grocery shopping or whatever shopping but there are states in Malaysia that are, you know, doing it only on weekends. So it is not the the, the how do you say? Uh, it's not the, the same standard everywhere. So what I would suggest is that you know when when we did the revisiting of the recycling project with the the Gen Y and Gen Z, I think it sort of opens up their mind that you know this is 
important because they they don't care about the the program or the campaign, but they care that you know about the world. They want to be able to live, you know, in this world as it is, and they don't want, uh, you know, to live in a not a polluted world, you know, a not so good world with not we don't have fresh air and so on and so forth. So these are the things that I think the the objective or the the focus has to be tweaked a little bit in the sense that we have to make the objective instead of you know you have to reduce uh you have to reduce reuse and recycle you know so in, instead of the three r what we have maybe what we can do is to change the idea that you know uh, reduce consumption you know so you buy what you want or what what uh, how do you say you only buy what you need uh, you don't buy, uh, you know, the things that you don't need. But there are a lot of youth nowadays, uh, Dr. Ali, that they, they cycle everywhere. Malaysia is very hot. I cannot do that, you know. I am all for sustainability. But, you know, cycling in Malaysia is not a good idea. But there are youth and also youth association that are doing that. And we have these social enterprises that helps women, helps the villagers to promote their products and services, all started by the younger generation. And I feel that it is actually improving. And I have students who wear recycled clothes. You know, I do that, you know, recycled clothes. I think it's it's good. And now in Malaysia, we have all these, you know, pre-loved stores that are better. Before this is you know, not good. People would just throw away the clothes that they don't want. But now we have good recycling boutiques where you can actually go and buy, you know, recycle or pre-loved stuff. So there's the idea, if you actually you're going to look at it more broadly, is for the government or for the organization or institution to actually gather all these smaller activities and, and brought, bring them into together and to make it a, such a big campaign that will have a better impact. I'm not saying that they don't have an impact, but the impact is actually quite small, yeah, because we have smaller groups doing it. So I hope that somehow, you know, gives you an idea of where we're going, uh, you know, how we can make it happen, how we can popularize it. Um, they know. It's not that they don't know, they know. But the thing is, you know, how to, the idea is to keep on doing it and making it a habit. And now it is not a habit yet. Now it is, you know, oh, I have to recycle today, you know, or I have to go in. So it's, it's not a habit yet. So making it a habit and something that you don't think twice to do it. I hope it answers your question, Ibu Ali. Terima kasih. Salam daripada Ibu Yanti dan Bu Durita. Hi, Apa khabar? Hi. Nak juga join uh, dekat collaboration because uh, she's from accounting. Dia tak disebut, dia protes lah, doktor. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, tak apa. Um, kita semua sama je. Kadang-kadang saya pun terlupa. So, tak apalah kita kita sama-sama. Nanti kita boleh buat, uh, you know, maybe, you know, responsible reporting can actually get the accounting accounting um, lecturer to to be in as well. So, that will be another research project. Okay, yeah. thank you. Right. Can't wait. <laughs> InsyaAllah. Okay. All right. It's very interesting and also enthusiastic session for Dr. Wan. Thank you so much once again, Dr. Wan, for supporting the Be Compact 2023. Thank you so much. All right. So the committee. Okay. So as the recognition and also the appreciation from the Be Compact 2023 committee, we would like to give a token of appreciation to Dr. Wan Nurbani Wan Nurdin from the UITM. So in this occasion, we would like to welcome Dr. Jurika Lucianda as the conference chair of Be Compact 2023 to give a token of appreciation to Dr. Wan. Please welcome Dr. Jurika. Thank you, Busanti. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wan Nurbani Wan Nurdin for your contributions as a Kenyan speaker in Be Compact 2023. Thank you so much, Ibu Jurika. All right, once again, thank you so much, Dr. Wan, and also all of the participants that already involved actively in asking the questions in the Zoom chat box and, of course, in the Battery Campus. Thank you so much once again. All right. Okay. All right.
ladies and gentlemen, so distinguished participants and attendees of Be Compact 2023. So we hope the session from all the keynote speakers today has bring a new perspective, new ideas, or even a new collaborations of research ahead. So now the time has come for the lunch break. So we will have a lunch break until 1 p.m. Jakarta time, or it's equal to GMT plus seven. Yeah, please kindly check your time zone. Once again, please kindly check your time zone. Because after this, after the lunch, we will have the online parallel presentation sessions and all the presenters will be divided into six breakout rooms. So each of the room will be led by the session chairs. So we have the session chairs in a breakout room one. We have Dr. Supachart Iam Ratanakul from the King's Mongkut University of Technology, Thonburi, Thailand. In a breakout room two, we have Ms. Karin and Karyan from the University Tunku Abdul Rahman, Malaysia. In a breakout room three, we have Dr. Jo Ting Wei from Providence University, Taiwan. And at the breakout room four, we have Dr. Ma Elena Estebal from Technological Institute of the Philippines. And at breakout room five, we will have Dr. Saddam Hazaya from the Southwestern University of Finance and Economics, China. And at the breakout room six, we will have Dr. Yo Jin Ai from the Multimedia University, Malaysia. So once again, all of the participants that will presenting and also attending yeah, the session or the academic online presentation session can join yeah, the breakout room after the lunch break. So once again, thank you so much for your kind attention in the first sessions of the Become Back 2023. And we will meet again in the same Zoom room at 1 p.m. Jakarta time or GMT plus 7. So once again, please kindly check your time zone and see you again in the Zoom at 1 p.m. Thank you so much. Thank you so much and have a good lunch.
Welcome to Universitas Bakri. Our university has a vision to become globally recognized university through engagement with industries and experiential learning methods. Established as Bakri School of Management in 2006, Universitas Bakri has transformed into one of leading universities in Indonesia in 2010 with 12 study programs. Today, Universitas Bakri has magister programs of management and communication with hundreds of well-maintained international institution cooperations in the form of student exchange and collaboration research. The big transformation of one decade has successfully brought Universitas Bakri into number one position in climate change action in 2022 and 15th position of the best university in Indonesia based on world ranking institution times higher education. Untuk meningkatkan daya saing bangsa, kelompok usaha Bakri mendukung penuh Universitas Bakri di dalam proses perkuliahan, penelitian, dan inovasi. Melalui kolaborasi yang erat, bersama-sama kami siap menghasilkan sumber daya manusia yang unggul. As industrial university that applies experiential learning method, Universitas Bakri has cooperation network with various agencies, universities, and many national and overseas industrial sectors. Not only students can interact with lecturers, but also with national and international figures, practitioners, CEOs, Board of Directors in Bakri Group Companies. Saya memilih Universitas Bakri karena dihadapkan dengan dua pilihan. Apakah mau menjadi seorang followers atau menjadi seorang leaders. Dan saya memilih untuk menjadi seorang leaders. Universitas Bakri membekali saya kualitas pendidikan yang luar biasa dari para dosen. Dan ini yang menjadikan saya seorang entrepreneur sejati. Situated in a strategic environment in Epicentrum Jakarta, increases mobility and opportunity for students to feel close experience with variety stakeholders. Universitas Bakri also supports character building with professional value, caring, and innovative, along with student activity unit that develops student skills to follow local, national, and international competition. Pendidikan yang berkualitas dan menghasilkan para lulusan yang memiliki jiwa kewirausahaan dan inovator yang kreatif tanpa batasan bisa memimpin lapangan pekerjaan di dalam negeri maupun di luar negeri hanya bisa didapatkan di Universitas Bakri. Based on goals to develop cutting edge human resources, Universitas Bakri as part of academic ecosystem that supports every student to achieve many achievements as well as to create innovation and solution for Indonesia and the world. Universitas Bakri, experience the real things. Welcome to Universitas Bakri. Our university has a vision to become globally recognized university through engagement with industries and experiential learning methods. Established as Bakri School of Management in 2006, Universitas Bakri has transformed into one of leading universities in Indonesia in 2010 with 12 study programs. Today, Universitas Bakri has magister programs of management and communication with hundreds of well-maintained international institution cooperations in the form of student exchange and collaboration research. Big transformation of one decade has successfully brought Universitas Bakri into number one position in climate change action in 2022 and 15th position of the best university in Indonesia based on world ranking institution times higher education. Untuk meningkatkan daya saing bangsa, kelompok usaha Bakri mendukung penuh Universitas Bakri di dalam proses perkuliahan, penelitian, dan inovasi. 
Melalui kolaborasi yang erat, bersama-sama kami siap menghasilkan sumber daya manusia yang unggul. As Industrial University, that applies experiential learning method. Universitas Bakri has cooperation network with various agencies, universities, and many national and overseas industrial sectors. Not only students can interact with lecturers, but also with national and international figures, practitioners, CEOs, board of directors in Bakri Group companies. Saya memilih Universitas Bakri karena dihadapkan dengan dua pilihan. Apakah mau menjadi seorang followers atau menjadi seorang leaders? Dan saya memilih untuk menjadi seorang leaders. Universitas Bakri membekali saya kualitas pendidikan yang luar biasa dari para dosen. Dan ini yang menjadikan saya seorang entrepreneur sejati. Situated in a strategic environment in Epicentrum Jakarta, increases mobility and opportunity for students to feel close experience with variety stakeholders. Universitas Bakri also supports character building with professional value, caring, and innovative, along with student activity unit that develops student skills to follow local, national, and international competition. Pendidikan yang berkualitas dan menghasilkan para lulusan yang memiliki jiwa kewirausahaan dan inovator yang kreatif tanpa batasan bisa memimpin lapangan pekerjaan di dalam negeri maupun di luar negeri hanya bisa didapatkan di Universitas Bakri. Based on the goals to develop cutting edge human resources, Universitas Bakri as part of academic ecosystem that supports every student to achieve many achievements as well as to create innovation and solution for Indonesia and the world. Universitas Bakri, experience the real things. All access to learn, share their knowledge, and enhance their research capabilities. Enhancement, empowerment, creating impact and value are the most needed aspect that researchers and scholars encounter. The process has become one of the issues that we are aware of and need to be tackled. To tackle the problem arising in the research communities, we should collaborate among all stakeholders to accelerate the impact to our society. Thus, Research Synergy Foundation support and commit to all stakeholders by creating a global research ecosystem. We are a digital social enterprise platform that focuses on developing a global research ecosystem. We build collaborative networks among researchers, scholars, professors, and practitioners globally for the realizations of knowledge accelerations and to contribute more to society and humanity. From 2017 to 2021, more than 20,000 scholars have participated in our programs from Asia, Australia, Africa, America, and Europe continents. With the average of the increasing number of members by more than 5,000 each year, we continuously strengthen the global research ecosystem by having four support systems that are ready to help members from across the world. First, we have ScholarVane. It's a system that we developed for scholars to contribute more. Supported by an established IT system and professional team, one of the superior services we provide is the Integrated International Conference Management and Operating System. ScholarVane system has been conducting the International Conferences platform both in person and virtual effectively and efficiently in terms of time, cost, and resource. From 2017 to 2021, the system has served from 85 countries. Scholar vein coverage areas include but are not limited to the online submission system, pre, during, post of conference, scientific review system, global marketing system, and publication system. All in one scholar system for transparency and credibility in 
Review Track is a home for thousands of researchers and reviewers from all around the globe. With who we partner to create a global network to assist in the assessment and feedback of your research. Artificial intelligence powers our reviewer track, ensuring that the scientific process runs smoothly. The main goal is to emphasize the importance of the ethical process of blind or double-blind peer review. Call for reviewers and collaboration with our university partners are just a few of the projects under reviewer track. We also provide reviewer workshops and training, annual reviewers recognition event, and many more. As a result, reviewer track represents our dedication to uphold scientific integrity. Research Maggie Institute is committed to being your research learning partner. By providing some learning programs such as online lecturing session, as expert forum, as editor forum, global research ecosystem network group, RSF Research Academy, scientific and academic writing e-coaching clinic series toward publication in reputable indexed journal. Research Nagi Institutes provide the most needed research learning topics, cutting-edge research tools, and expert opinion from different backgrounds to put a global perspective for all researchers and scholars. Research Synergy Press, we are providing and managing international journals for your institution toward global and reputable indexers. The mission of Research Synergy Press is to deliver breakthrough professional journal management using strategic paper collaborations. Increasing diversity and resulting in good quality of scientific research for all researchers professional and academician through a standardized scientific process. We help you to manage international journals to global standards. You can even publish your scientific work in our journals, conference proceedings, and books. And now, Research Synergy Press publishes more than dozens of international journals, conference proceeding series, and single conference proceeding. Empowerment and encouragement are the two keywords that drive our social programs for leveraging the impact, such as Conference Grant, International Service Program, Paper Writing Collaboration, Connecting Research Parties or Stakeholder Gathering, The Annual Social Entrepreneurship Challenge, Shared Value Co-Creation Programs, we believe that every individual, organizations, and research community has the same opportunity to share the value of creating an impactful program together with us. As a social enterprise, our aim is to provide a good research ecosystem and platform for researchers to share, discuss, and disseminate their ideas. In addition, it helps you to improve your research and contribute to the knowledge. Therefore, creating social impact and value is our priority. In the other hand, you can collaborate with us to our worldwide scholars and initiate betterment for the academy, society, and humanity. The the of of research Synergy Foundation Global Research Ecosystem is the perfect combination among researchers, scholars, professors, and practitioners. We embrace all of our members to lend in hand, take action for a better society, and grow together with the Research Synergy Foundation.
Lombok, kehidupan masyarakat di Kabupaten Lombok Barat, Kabupaten Lombok Utara, dan Kabupaten Lombok Timur berlangsung pulih. Dalam hidup ini akan selalu ada tantangan baru dengan peluang dan harapan untuk membuat hidup orang banyak menjadi lebih bermakna. Di United Tractors, kerjasama adalah hal yang utama. Bersama-sama bekerja dengan segenap hati untuk bisa berbagi dan berkontribusi. Meskipun berasal dari latar belakang beragam, kami mewujudkan tujuan yang sama, yakni mengabdi untuk negeri. Inilah bakti kami dalam membangun negeri. United Tractors, perusahaan distributor alat berat terkemuka di Indonesia. Berdedikasi untuk menjadi mitra usaha yang dapat memberikan solusi terbaik. Menjunjung tinggi kerjasama dalam sinergi demi mencapai keberhasilan bersama. United Tractors hadir dalam menjawab tantangan di bidang distribusi alat berat untuk berbagai sektor di Indonesia, seperti sektor konstruksi, kehutanan, pertanian, perkebunan, transportasi, hingga pertambangan. Kami berkomitmen untuk memberikan yang terbaik dengan menghadirkan produk-produk dari merek ternama dunia, yaitu Komatsu, UB Trucks, Kania Puma Dan Tadano Dimanapun mitra usaha kami berada, kami siap untuk memberikan layanan purna jual prima dengan tim mekanik yang handal selama 24 jam. Serta jaminan kualitas melalui layanan beauty call. Dalam bekerja, kami menjalankan tugas dan tanggung jawab dengan sepenuh hati. Selalu menjadi yang terdepan dan proaktif dalam memberikan solusi terbaik. Dengan penuh integritas dan totalitas dan keterbukaan untuk bisa menjawab seluruh kebutuhan pelanggan. Komitmen ini juga didukung dengan luasnya jaringan distribusi kami yang tersebar di seluruh pelosok Nusantara. Di setiap kesempatan, kami menyambut peluang baru. Kami bersinergi dengan prinsipal untuk menghadirkan teknologi terkini yang terintegrasi dengan UT Command Center, sebuah terobosan digitalisasi dibangun UT secara masif. UT Command Center merupakan pusat kendali operasi untuk memberikan solusi demi menjamin kualitas dan meningkatkan produktivitas alat berat mitra usaha UT. Melalui UT Command Center, Pelanggan dapat mengetahui informasi terkini dari unit secara langsung, serta status suku cadang yang dipesan melalui UT Mobile Apps. United Tractors percaya bahwa kesuksesan bisa dicapai dengan bersinergi dan mengedepankan kepentingan bersama. 
agar kami bisa tumbuh dan berkembang bersama pelanggan. Dedikasi ini juga tertuang ke dalam lini bisnis kami. Melalui bisnis mesin konstruksi. Mengembangkan infrastruktur negeri melalui bisnis industri konstruksi. Hingga menyalurkan listrik melalui bisnis energi untuk berbagai lini kehidupan. Di United Tractors, kami juga bergerak bersama dengan masyarakat untuk membuat perubahan demi pembangunan berkelanjutan. Dengan menjaga kelestarian alam, meningkatkan taraf pendidikan, mendorong kemandirian masyarakat, menyediakan akses kesehatan, hingga membantu memulihkan negeri. Kepercayaan yang diberikan kepada United Tractors membuat kami tidak akan pernah berhenti untuk terus meningkatkan kinerja dan memberikan inovasi. Kami akan terus maju, bergerak bersama, bersinergi memberikan nilai lebih dan berkontribusi bagi negeri demi kehidupan yang lebih baik. We believe that everyone Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri saat ini hadir dengan empat program studi strata satu dan dua program studi magister. Di umur yang terbilang muda, kami bersyukur telah meraih sejumlah capaian strategik, baik di level nasional maupun internasional. 
Pada level internasional, berdasarkan pemberkatan Times Higher Education, selama 2 tahun berturut-turut, di tahun 2021 dan tahun 2022, Universitas Bakri meraih peringkat perguruan tinggi swasta terbaik di Jakarta yang mendukung agenda pembangunan berkelanjutan atau SDGs. Sedangkan pada level nasional di tahun 2021, kami juga telah memasuk dalam jajaran 100 besar perguruan tinggi berprestasi di tingkat nasional, serta sejumlah capaian lainnya baik di bidang penelitian, kerjasama, dan pengembangan fasilitas. Dalam struktur organisasi di Universitas Bakri, untuk mencapai daya saing internasional, mulai tahun 2019 telah membentuk kantor International Office. Sebagai organisasi pendidikan, tentunya kami telah memenuhi standar mutu yang ada. Saat ini, kami telah menerapkan ISO 21001-2018 di dalam lingkungan pendidikan kami. Semua program studi di lingkungan FACE saat ini telah mendapatkan penjaminan mutu dari pihak eksternal dalam negeri, yaitu BAN PT dan LAMEMBA dan memiliki akreditasi internasional adopsi pada AUN QA dan FIBA A serta memiliki 40 standar mutu yang meliputi bidang pendidikan pengajaran, penelitian, pengabdian kepada masyarakat dan penunjang lainnya. Dalam tiga tahun terakhir, mahasiswa di lingkungan FACE telah banyak mengukir prestasi baik di tingkat nasional maupun internasional. Lebih dari itu, sebagai langkah menghadirkan ekosistem internasional, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri telah menerima mahasiswa asing dan sejak tahun 2017, kami telah menerima mahasiswa asing dari beberapa negara, di antaranya dari negara Jepang, Pakistan, Filipina, Irak, dan Timur Leste. Tak hanya itu, kami telah melakukan banyak kerjasama, baik dalam skala nasional maupun internasional. Pada akhirnya, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial berkomitmen penuh dalam mendukung visi UNES Bakri dalam mencapai a globally recognized university.
Welcome to Universitas Bakri. Our university has a vision to become globally recognized university through engagement with industries and experiential learning methods. Established as Bakri School of Management in 2006, Universitas Bakri has transformed into one of leading universities in Indonesia in 2010 with 12 study programs. Today, Universitas Bakri has magister programs of management and communication with hundreds of well-maintained international institution cooperations in the form of student exchange and collaboration research. Big transformation of one decade has successfully brought Universitas Bakri into number one position in climate change action in 2022 and 15th position of the best university in Indonesia best on world ranking institution times higher education. Untuk meningkatkan daya saing bangsa, kelompok usaha Bakri mendukung penuh universitas penelitian dan inovasi. Melalui kolaborasi yang erat, bersama-sama kami siap menghasilkan sumber daya manusia yang unggul. As industrial university that applies experiential learning method, Universitas Bakri has cooperation network with various agencies, universities, and many national and overseas industrial sectors. Not only students can interact with lecturers, but also with national and international figures, practitioners, CEOs, board of directors in Bakri Group Companies. Saya memilih Universitas Bakri karena dihadapkan dengan dua pilihan, apakah mau menjadi seorang followers atau menjadi seorang leaders. Dan saya memilih untuk menjadi seorang leaders. Universitas Bakri membekali saya kualitas pendidikan yang luar biasa dari para dosen, dan ini yang menjadikan saya seorang entrepreneur sejati. Situated in a strategic environment in Epicentrum Jakarta, increases mobility and opportunity for students to feel close experience with variety stakeholders. Universitas Bakri also supports character building with professional value, caring, and innovative, along with student activity unit that develops student skills to follow local, national, and international competition. Pendidikan yang berkualitas dan menghasilkan para lulusan yang memiliki jiwa kewirausahaan dan inovator yang kreatif tanpa batasan bisa memimpin lapangan pekerjaan di dalam negeri maupun di luar negeri hanya bisa didapatkan di Universitas Bakri. Based on goals to develop cutting edge human resources, Universitas Bakri as part of academic ecosystem that supports every student to achieve many achievements as well as to create innovation and solution for Indonesia and the world. Universitas Bakri, experience the real things.
Okay, Excellency, distinguished guests, delegates, ladies and gentlemen. So once again, welcome back to the all participants to the Bakri International Conference on Communication, Management, Politics and Accounting or Compact 2023. So currently we are preparing to start the academic online parallel presentation sessions. So once again, to all presenters, please kindly join your breakout rooms as can be seen in the conference program. And once again, uh, we will have six session chairs in the six breakout room. Okay, so in a breakout room one, once again, we have Dr. Supa Chart from the King's Mongkut University of Technology, Thornbury, Thailand. And a breakout room two, we have Miss Karin from the University Tunku Abdul Rahman, Malaysia. So in a breakout room three, we have Dr. Jo Ting Wei from the Providence University, Taiwan. In a breakout room four, we will have Dr. Ma Elena Estebel from the Technological Institute of the Philippines. In a breakout room five, we will have Dr. Saddam Hazaya from the Southwestern University of Finance and Economics, China. And last, we have the breakout room six, Dr. Yeo Jian Ai from the Multimedia University, Malaysia. So once again, the committee already activated. Uh, the committee can activate the breakout room in a few seconds. All right. Okay. So now the breakout rooms, the, the six breakout rooms already active. So you may choose. Yeah. So you should choose the breakout room that you are going to present or for the attendee that you will hear the presentations from the researchers. Okay. Please join the breakout room one until the breakout room six. So you may select the button on the breakout rooms with the with having the four square on your Zoom panel, so you may choose independently, all right? So thank you so much, and we will see again in this main room for the closing ceremony, since we will have the awarding ceremony for the best presentation, best student achievement, best paper, and of course, to the session chair's recognitions. So thank you so much for your kind attentions, and please enjoy the discussion in the breakout room one until breakout room six. Thank you so much. All right, once again, to all the participants that are still in a break, in a still main, in the main room. So once again, please kindly join the breakout rooms. So there are six breakout rooms and you can join. Just simply click uh, the four square in your Zoom panel below the Zoom panel. And there will be breakout room, room one, room two, room three, four, five, and six. So you may select the room and then you can join. And if you found any difficulties or wants to ask something, you may drop the questions in this main room because this main room is intended to be the assisting room. Yeah. So please let us know if you face some difficulties in uh, moving or in uh, choosing the breakout room. All right. Okay. So... Okay, so Dr. Wei, how are you, Doc? All right, Dr. Wei, you will be in breakout room three. Yeah? Are you okay in choosing the breakout room three? Uh, we cannot. I cannot hear your voice. 
<laughs> Perhaps you can unmute first. Okay, you can unmute first. You still mute? Okay, so I think the committee can give the permissions first. As the co-host. Sorry. sorry. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, Hi, Dr. Yeah. Wei. Nice yeah, to yeah, see hello. you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Nice. Okay. So you may go to the breakout room three, yeah, to start the uh, academic online. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see. Thank you. All right. See you. Okay. For the other participants, so once again, please kindly choose the breakout room. Okay. Okay. Because we will start the academic online presentation session right away. Thank you so much for your attention.
Welcome to Universitas Bakri. Our university has a vision to become globally recognized university through engagement with industries and experiential learning methods. Established as Bakri School of Management in 2006, Universitas Bakri has transformed into one of leading universities in Indonesia in 2010 with 12 study programs. Today, Universitas Bakri has magister programs of management and communication. With hundreds of well-maintained international institution cooperations in the form of student exchange and collaboration research. Big transformation of one decade has successfully brought Universitas Bakri into number one position in climate change action in 2022 and 15th position of the best university in Indonesia best on world ranking institution times higher education. Untuk meningkatkan daya saing bangsa, kelompok usaha Bakri mendukung penuh Universitas Bakri di dalam proses perkuliahan, penelitian, dan inovasi. Melalui kolaborasi yang erat, bersama-sama kami siap menghasilkan sumber daya manusia yang unggul. As industrial university that applies experiential learning method, Universitas Bakri has cooperation network with various agencies, universities, and many national and overseas industrial sectors. Not only students can interact with lecturers, but also with national and international figures, practitioners, CEOs, board of directors in Bakri Group Companies. Saya memilih Universitas Bakri karena dihadapkan dengan dua pilihan, apakah mau menjadi seorang followers atau menjadi seorang leaders. Dan saya memilih untuk menjadi seorang leaders. Universitas Bakri membekali saya kualitas pendidikan yang luar biasa dari para dosen, dan ini yang menjadikan saya seorang entrepreneur sejati. Situated in a strategic environment in Epicentrum Jakarta, increases mobility and opportunity for students to feel close experience with variety stakeholders. Universitas Bakri also supports character building with professional
Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri saat ini hadir dengan 4 program studi serata satu dan 2 program studi magister. Di umur yang terbilang muda, kami bersyukur telah meraih sejumlah capaian strategik, baik di level nasional maupun internasional. Pada level internasional, berdasarkan pemberkatan Times Higher Education, selama 2 tahun berturut-turut, di tahun 2021 dan tahun 2022, Universitas Bakri meraih peringkat perguruan tinggi swasta terbaik di Jakarta yang mendukung agenda pembangunan berkelanjutan atau SDGs. Sedangkan pada level nasional di tahun 2021, kami juga telah masuk dalam jajaran 100 besar perguruan tinggi berprestasi di tingkat nasional, serta sejumlah capaian lainnya baik di bidang penelitian, kerjasama, dan pengembangan fasilitas. Dalam struktur organisasi di Universitas Bakri, untuk mencapai daya saing internasional, mulai tahun 2019 telah membentuk kantor International Office. Sebagai organisasi pendidikan, tentunya kami telah memenuhi standar mutu yang ada. Saat ini, kami telah menerapkan ISO 21001-2018 di dalam lingkungan pendidikan kami. Semua program studi di lingkungan FACE saat ini telah mendapatkan penjaminan mutu dari pihak eksternal dalam negeri, yaitu BAN PT dan LAMEMBA. dan memiliki akreditasi internasional adopsi pada AUN QA dan FIBA A, serta memiliki 40 standar mutu yang meliputi bidang pendidikan pengajaran, penelitian, pengabdian kepada masyarakat, dan penunjang lainnya. Dalam 3 tahun terakhir, mahasiswa di lingkungan FACE telah banyak mengukir prestasi, baik di tingkat nasional maupun internasional. Lebih dari itu, sebagai langkah menghadirkan ekosistem internasional, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri telah menerima mahasiswa asing dan sejak tahun 2017 kami telah menerima mahasiswa asing dari beberapa negara, di antaranya dari negara Jepang, Pakistan, Filipina, Irak dan Timur Leste. Tak hanya itu, kami telah melakukan banyak kerjasama baik dalam skala nasional maupun internasional. Pada akhirnya, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial berkomitmen penuh dalam mendukung visi UNES Bakri dalam mencapai a globally recognized university. Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri saat ini hadir dengan 4 program studi serata satu dan 2 program studi magister. Di umur yang terbilang muda, kami bersyukur telah meraih sejumlah capaian strategik, baik di level nasional maupun internasional. Pada level internasional, berdasarkan pemberkatan Times Higher Education, selama 2 tahun berturut-turut di tahun 2020, dan tahun 2022 Universitas Bakri meraih peringkat perguruan tinggi swasta terbaik di Jakarta yang mendukung agenda pembangunan berkelanjutan atau SDGs. Sedangkan pada level nasional di tahun 2021 kami juga telah masuk dalam jajaran 100 besar perguruan tinggi berprestasi di tingkat nasional serta sejumlah capaian lainnya baik di bidang penelitian, kerjasama dan pengembangan fasilitas.
Dalam struktur organisasi di Universitas Bakri, untuk mencapai daya saing internasional, mulai tahun 2019 telah membentuk kantor International Office. Sebagai organisasi pendidikan, tentunya kami telah memenuhi standar mutu yang ada. Saat ini, kami telah menerapkan ISO 21001-2018 di dalam lingkungan pendidikan kami. Semua program studi di lingkungan FACE saat ini telah mendapatkan penjaminan mutu dari pihak eksternal dalam negeri, yaitu Ban PT dan Lamemba, dan memiliki akreditasi internasional adopsi pada AUN QA dan FIBA A, serta memiliki 40 standar mutu yang meliputi bidang pendidikan pengajaran, penelitian, pengabdian kepada masyarakat, dan penunjang lainnya. Dalam tiga tahun terakhir, mahasiswa di lingkungan FACE telah banyak mengukir prestasi, baik di tingkat nasional maupun internasional. Lebih dari itu, sebagai langkah menghadirkan ekosistem internasional, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri telah menerima dan sejak tahun 2017, kami telah menerima mahasiswa asing dari beberapa negara di antaranya dari negara Jepang, Pakistan, Filipina, Irak, dan Timur Leste. Tak hanya itu, kami telah melakukan banyak kerjasama, baik dalam skala nasional maupun internasional. Pada akhirnya, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial berkomitmen penuh dalam mendukung visi UNES Bakri dalam mencapai a globally recognized university. Welcome to Universitas Bakri. Our university has a vision to become globally recognized university through engagement with industries and experiential learning methods. Established as Bakri School of Management in 2006, Universitas Bakri has transformed into one of leading universities in Indonesia in 2010 with 12 study programs. Today, Universitas Bakri has magister programs of management and communication. With hundreds of well-maintained international institution cooperations in the form of student exchange and collaboration research. Big transformation of one decade has successfully brought Universitas Bakri into number one position in climate change action in 2022 and 15th position of the best university in Indonesia, best on world ranking institution, times higher education. Untuk meningkatkan daya saing bangsa, kelompok usaha Bakri mendukung penuh Universitas Bakri di dalam proses perkuliahan, penelitian, dan inovasi. Melalui kolaborasi yang erat, bersama-sama kami siap menghasilkan sumber daya manusia yang unggul. As industrial university, that applies experiential learning method. Universitas Bakri has cooperation network with various agencies, universities, and many national and overseas industrial sectors. Not only students can interact with lecturers, but also with national and international figures 
practitioners, CEOs, board of directors in Bakri Group Companies. Saya memilih Universitas Bakri karena dihadapkan dengan dua pilihan. Apakah mau menjadi seorang followers atau menjadi seorang leaders. Dan saya memilih untuk menjadi seorang leaders. Universitas Bakri membekali saya kualitas pendidikan yang luar biasa dari para dosen. Dan ini yang menjadikan saya seorang entrepreneur sejati. Situated in a strategic environment in Epicentrum Jakarta, increases mobility and opportunity for students to feel close experience with variety stakeholders. Universitas Bakri also supports character building with professional value, caring, and innovative, along with student activity unit that develops student skills to follow local, national, and international competition. Pendidikan yang berkualitas dan menghasilkan para lulusan yang memiliki jiwa kewirausahaan dan inovator yang kreatif tanpa batasan bisa memimpin lapangan pekerjaan di dalam negeri maupun di luar negeri hanya bisa didapatkan di Universitas Bakri. Based on goals to develop cutting edge human resources, Universitas Bakri as part of academic ecosystem that supports every student to achieve many achievements as well as to create innovation and solution for Indonesia and the world. Universitas Bakri, experience the real things. Welcome to Universitas Bakri. Our university has a vision to become globally recognized university through engagement with industries and experiential learning methods. Established as Bakri School of Management in 2006, Universitas Bakri has transformed into one of leading universities in Indonesia in 2010 with 12 study programs. Today, Universitas Bakri has magister programs of management and communication with hundreds of well-maintained international institution corporations in the form of student exchange and collaboration research. Big transformation of one decade has successfully brought Universitas Bakri into number one position in climate change action in 2022 and 15th position of the best university in Indonesia based on world ranking institution times higher education. Untuk meningkatkan daya saing bangsa, Kelompok Usaha Bakri mendukung penuh Universitas Bakri di dalam proses perkuliahan, penelitian, dan inovasi. Melalui kolaborasi yang erat, bersama-sama kami siap menghasilkan sumber daya manusia yang unggul. As industrial university that applies experiential learning method, Universitas Bakri has cooperation network with various agencies, universities, and many national and overseas industrial sectors. Not only students can interact with lecturers, but also with national and international figures, practitioners, CEOs, board of directors in Bakri Group Companies. Saya memilih Universitas Bakri karena dihadapkan dengan dua pilihan. Apakah mau menjadi seorang followers atau menjadi seorang leaders. Dan saya memilih untuk menjadi seorang leaders. Universitas Bakri membekali saya kualitas pendidikan yang luar biasa dari para dosen. Dan ini yang menjadikan saya seorang entrepreneur sejati. Situated in a strategic environment in Epicentrum Jakarta, increases mobility and opportunity for students to feel close experience with variety stakeholders. Universitas Bakri also supports character building with professional value, caring, and innovative, along with student activity unit that develops student skills to follow local, national, and international competition. Pendidikan yang berkualitas dan menghasilkan para lulusan yang memiliki jiwa kewirausahaan dan inovator yang kreatif tanpa batasan bisa memimpin lapangan pekerjaan di dalam negeri maupun di luar negeri hanya bisa didapatkan di Universitas Bakri. Based on goals to develop cutting edge human resources, Universitas Bakri as part of academic ecosystem that supports every student to achieve many achievements as well as to create innovation and solution for Indonesia and the world. Universitas Bakri, experience the real things.
Welcome to Universitas Bakri. Our university has a vision to become globally recognized university through engagement with industries and experiential learning methods. Established as Bakri School of Management in 2006, Universitas Bakri has transformed into one of leading universities in Indonesia in 2010 with 12 study programs. Today, Universitas Bakri has magister programs of management and communication with hundreds of well-maintained international institution cooperations in the form of student exchange and collaboration research. Big transformation of one decade has successfully brought Universitas Bakri into number one position in climate change action in 2022 and 15th position of the best university in Indonesia, best on world ranking institution, times higher education. Untuk meningkatkan daya saing bangsa, kelompok usaha Bakri mendukung penuh Universitas Bakri di dalam proses perkuliahan, penelitian, dan inovasi. Melalui kolaborasi yang erat, bersama-sama kami siap menghasilkan sumber daya manusia yang unggul. As industrial university that applies experiential learning method, Universitas Bakri has cooperation network with various agencies, universities, and many national and overseas industrial sectors. Not only students can interact with lecturers, but also with national and international figures, practitioners, CEOs, board of directors in Bakri Group companies. Saya memilih Universitas Bakri karena dihadapkan dengan dua pilihan, apakah mau menjadi seorang followers atau menjadi seorang leaders. Dan saya memilih untuk menjadi seorang leaders. Universitas Bakri membekali saya kualitas pendidikan yang luar biasa dari para dosen, dan ini yang menjadikan saya seorang entrepreneur sejati. Situated in a strategic environment in Epicentrum Jakarta, increases mobility and opportunity for students to feel close experience with variety stakeholders. Universitas Bakri also supports character building with professional value, caring, and innovative, along with student activity unit that develops student skills to follow local, national, and international competition. Pendidikan yang berkualitas dan menghasilkan para lulusan yang memiliki jiwa kewirausahaan dan inovator yang kreatif tanpa batasan bisa memimpin lapangan pekerjaan di dalam negeri maupun di luar negeri hanya bisa didapatkan di Universitas Bakri. Based on the goals to develop cutting edge human resources, Universitas Bakri as part of academic ecosystem that supports every student to achieve many achievements as well as to create innovation and solution for Indonesia and the world. Universitas Bakri, experience the real things.
Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri saat ini hadir dengan 4 program studi serata 1 dan 2 program studi magister. Di umur yang terbilang muda, kami bersyukur telah meraih sejumlah capaian strategik, baik di level nasional maupun internasional. Pada level internasional, berdasarkan pemberkatan Times Higher Education, selama 2 tahun berturut-turut, di tahun 2021 dan tahun 2022, Universitas Bakri meraih peringkat perguruan tinggi swasta terbaik di Jakarta yang mendukung agenda pembangunan berkelanjutan atau SDGs. Sedangkan pada level nasional di tahun 2021, kami juga telah memasuk dalam jajaran 100 besar perguruan tinggi berprestasi di tingkat nasional, serta sejumlah capaian lainnya baik di bidang penelitian, kerjasama, dan pengembangan fasilitas. Dalam struktur organisasi di Universitas Bakri, untuk mencapai daya saing internasional, mulai tahun 2019 telah membentuk kantor International Office. Sebagai organisasi pendidikan, tentunya kami telah memenuhi standar mutu yang ada. Saat ini, kami telah menerapkan ISO 21001-2018 di dalam lingkungan pendidikan kami. Semua program studi di lingkungan FACE saat ini telah mendapatkan penjaminan mutu dari pihak eksternal dalam negeri, yaitu BAN PT dan LAMEMBA, dan memiliki akreditasi internasional adopsi pada AUN QA dan FIBA A, serta memiliki 40 standar mutu yang meliputi bidang pendidikan pengajaran, penelitian, pengabdian kepada masyarakat, dan penunjang lainnya. Dalam tiga tahun terakhir, mahasiswa di lingkungan FACE telah banyak mengukir prestasi, baik di tingkat nasional maupun internasional. Lebih dari itu, sebagai langkah menghadirkan ekosistem internasional, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri telah menerima mahasiswa asing dan sejak tahun 2017, kami telah menerima mahasiswa asing dari beberapa negara, di antaranya dari negara Jepang, Pakistan, Filipina, Irak, dan Timur Leste. Tak hanya itu, kami telah melakukan banyak kerjasama, baik dalam skala nasional maupun internasional. Pada akhirnya, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial berkomitmen penuh dalam mendukung visi UNES Bakri dalam mencapai a globally recognized university. Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri saat ini hadir dengan empat program studi serata satu dan dua program studi magister. Di umur yang terbilang muda, kami bersyukur telah meraih sejumlah capaian strategik, baik di level nasional maupun internasional. Pada level internasional, berdasarkan pemberitaan Times Higher Education selama dua tahun berturut-turut di tahun 2021 dan tahun 2022, Universitas Bakri meraih peringkat perguruan tinggi swasta terbaik di Jakarta yang mendukung agenda pembangunan berkelanjutan atau SDGs. Sedangkan pada level nasional di tahun 2021, kami juga telah memasuk dalam jajaran 100 besar perguruan tinggi berprestasi di tingkat nasional, serta sejumlah capaian lainnya baik di bidang penelitian, kerjasama, dan pengembangan fasilitas.
dalam struktur organisasi di Universitas Bakri untuk mencapai daya saing internasional mulai tahun 2019 telah membentuk kantor internasional office. Sebagai organisasi pendidikan, tentunya kami telah memenuhi standar mutu yang ada. Saat ini kami telah menerapkan ISO 21001-2018 di dalam lingkungan pendidikan kami. Semua program studi di lingkungan FACE saat ini telah mendapatkan penjaminan mutu dari pihak eksternal dalam negeri, yaitu BANPT dan LAMEMBA, dan memiliki akreditasi internasional adopsi pada AUN QA dan FIBA A, serta memiliki 40 standar mutu yang meliputi bidang pendidikan pengajaran, penelitian, pengabdian kepada masyarakat, dan penunjang lainnya. Dalam tiga tahun terakhir, mahasiswa di lingkungan FACE telah banyak mengukir prestasi, baik di tingkat nasional maupun internasional. Lebih dari itu, sebagai langkah menghadirkan ekosistem internasional, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri telah menerima mahasiswa asing dan sejak tahun 2017, kami telah menerima mahasiswa asing dari beberapa negara di antaranya dari negara Jepang, Pakistan, Filipina, Irak, dan Timur Leste. Tak hanya itu, kami telah melakukan banyak kerjasama baik dalam skala nasional maupun internasional. Pada akhirnya, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial berkomitmen penuh dalam mendukung visi UNES Bakri dalam mencapai a globally recognized university. Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri saat ini hadir dengan empat program studi strata satu dan dua program studi magister. Di umur yang terbilang muda, kami bersyukur telah meraih sejumlah capaian strategik, baik di level nasional maupun internasional. Pada level internasional, berdasarkan pemberkatan Times Higher Education, selama dua tahun berturut-turut di tahun 2021 dan tahun 2022, Universitas Bakri meraih peringkat perguruan tinggi swasta terbaik di Jakarta yang mendukung agenda pembangunan berkelanjutan atau SDGs. Sedangkan pada level nasional di tahun 2021, kami juga telah memasuk dalam jajaran 100 besar perguruan tinggi berprestasi di tingkat nasional, serta sejumlah capaian lainnya baik di bidang penelitian, kerjasama, dan pengembangan fasilitas. Dalam struktur organisasi di Universitas Bakri, untuk mencapai daya saing internasional, mulai tahun 2019 telah membentuk kantor internasional office. Sebagai organisasi pendidikan, tentunya kami telah memenuhi standar mutu yang ada. Saat ini, kami telah menerapkan ISO 21001-2018 di dalam lingkungan pendidikan kami. Semua program studi di lingkungan FACE saat ini telah mendapatkan penjaminan mutu dari pihak eksternal dalam negeri, yaitu BANPT dan LAMEMBA, dan memiliki akreditasi internasional adopsi pada AUN QA dan FIBA A, 
serta memiliki 40 standar mutu yang meliputi bidang pendidikan pengajaran, penelitian, pengabdian kepada masyarakat, dan penunjang lainnya. Dalam tiga tahun terakhir, mahasiswa di lingkungan FACE telah banyak mengukir prestasi, baik di tingkat nasional maupun internasional. Lebih dari itu, sebagai langkah menghadirkan ekosistem internasional, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri telah menerima mahasiswa asing dan sejak tahun 2017, kami telah menerima mahasiswa asing dari beberapa negara, di antaranya dari negara Jepang, Pakistan, Filipina, Irak, dan Timur Leste. Tak hanya itu, kami telah melakukan banyak kerjasama, baik dalam skala nasional maupun internasional. Pada akhirnya, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial berkomitmen penuh dalam mendukung visi UNES Bakri dalam mencapai a globally recognized university. Welcome to Universitas Bakri. Our university has a vision to become globally recognized university through engagement with industries and experiential learning methods. Established as Bakri School of Management in 2006, Universitas Bakri has transformed into one of leading universities in Indonesia in 2010 with 12 study programs. Today, Universitas Bakri has magister programs of management and communication. With hundreds of well-maintained international institution cooperations in the form of student exchange and collaboration research. Big transformation of one decade has successfully brought Universitas Bakri into number one position in climate change action in 2022 and 15th position of the best university in Indonesia best on world ranking institution times higher education Untuk meningkatkan daya saing bangsa kelompok usaha Bakri mendukung penuh Universitas Bakri di dalam proses perkuliahan, penelitian dan inovasi melalui kolaborasi yang erat bersama-sama kami siap menghasilkan sumber daya manusia yang unggul As industrial university that applies experiential learning method. Universitas Bakri has cooperation network with various agencies, universities, and many national and overseas industrial sectors. 
not only students can interact with lecturers, but also with national and international figures, practitioners, CEOs, board of directors in Bakri Group Companies. Saya memilih Universitas Bakri karena dihadapkan dengan dua pilihan. Apakah mau menjadi seorang followers atau menjadi seorang leaders? Dan saya memilih untuk menjadi seorang leaders. Universitas Bakri membekali saya kualitas pendidikan yang luar biasa dari para dosen. Dan ini yang menjadikan saya seorang entrepreneur sejati. Situated in a strategic environment in Epicentrum Jakarta, increases mobility and opportunity for students to feel close experience with variety stakeholders. Universitas Bakri also supports character building with professional value, caring, and innovative, along with student activity unit that develops student skills to follow local, national, and international competition. Pendidikan yang berkualitas dan menghasilkan para lulusan yang memiliki jiwa kewirausahaan dan inovator yang kreatif tanpa batasan bisa memimpin lapangan pekerjaan di dalam negeri maupun di luar negeri hanya bisa didapatkan di Universitas Bakri. Based on goals to develop cutting edge human resources, Universitas Bakri as part of academic ecosystem that supports every student to achieve many achievements as well as to create innovation and solution for Indonesia and the world. Universitas Bakri, experience the real things.
Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri saat ini hadir dengan 4 program studi SAPA 1 dan 2 program di umur yang terbilang muda kami bersyukur telah meraih sejumlah capaian strategik baik di level nasional maupun internasional pada level internasional berdasarkan pemberkatan Times Higher Education selama 2 tahun berturut-turut di tahun 2021 dan tahun 2022 Universitas Bakri meraih peringkat perguruan tinggi swasta terbaik di Jakarta yang mendukung agenda pembangunan berkelanjutan atau SDGs. Sedangkan pada level nasional di tahun 2021 kami juga telah memasuk dalam jajaran 100 besar perguruan tinggi berprestasi di tingkat nasional serta sejumlah capaian lainnya baik di bidang penelitian, kerjasama dan pengembangan fasilitas. Dalam struktur organisasi di Universitas Bakri, untuk mencapai daya saing internasional, mulai tahun 2019 telah membentuk kantor International Office. Sebagai organisasi pendidikan, tentunya kami telah memenuhi standar mutu yang ada. Saat ini, kami telah menerapkan ISO 21001-2018 di dalam lingkungan pendidikan kami. Semua program studi di lingkungan FES saat ini telah mendapatkan penjaminan mutu dari pihak eksternal dalam negeri, yaitu Ban PT dan Lamemba, dan memiliki akreditasi internasional adopsi pada AUN QA dan FIBA A, serta memiliki 40 standar mutu yang meliputi bidang pendidikan pengajaran, penelitian, pengabdian kepada masyarakat, dan penunjang lainnya. Dalam tiga tahun terakhir, mahasiswa di lingkungan FES telah banyak mengukir prestasi, baik di tingkat nasional maupun internasional. Lebih dari itu, sebagai langkah menghadirkan ekosistem internasional, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri telah menerima mahasiswa asing dan sejak tahun 2017, kami telah menerima mahasiswa asing dari beberapa negara, di antaranya dari negara Jepang, Pakistan, Filipina, Irak, dan Timur Leste. Tak hanya itu, kami telah melakukan banyak kerjasama, baik dalam skala nasional maupun internasional. Pada akhirnya, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial berkomitmen penuh dalam mendukung visi UNES Bakri dalam mencapai a globally recognized university. Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri saat ini hadir dengan empat program studi SAPA 1 dan dua program studi magister. Di umur yang terbilang muda, kami bersyukur telah meraih sejumlah capaian strategik, baik di level nasional maupun internasional. Pada level internasional, berdasarkan pemberkatan Times Higher Education selama dua tahun berturut-turut di tahun 2021 dan tahun 2022, Universitas Bakri meraih peringkat perguruan tinggi swasta terbaik di Jakarta yang mendukung agenda pembangunan berkelanjutan atau SDGs. Sedangkan pada level nasional di tahun 2021, kami juga telah memasuk dalam jajaran 100 besar perguruan tinggi berprestasi di tingkat nasional, serta sejumlah capaian lainnya baik di bidang penelitian, kerjasama, dan pengembangan fasilitas. Dalam struktur organisasi di Universitas Bakri, 
untuk mencapai daya saing internasional mulai tahun 2019 telah membentuk kantor internasional office. Sebagai organisasi pendidikan, tentunya kami telah memenuhi standar mutu yang ada. Saat ini kami telah menerapkan ISO 21001-2018 di dalam lingkungan pendidikan kami. Semua program studi di lingkungan FACE saat ini telah mendapatkan penjaminan mutu dari pihak eksternal dalam negeri, yaitu BANPT dan LAMEMBA, dan memiliki akreditasi internasional adopsi pada AUN QA dan FIBA A, serta memiliki 40 standar mutu yang meliputi bidang pendidikan pengajaran, penelitian, pengabdian kepada masyarakat, dan penunjang lainnya. Dalam tiga tahun terakhir, mahasiswa di lingkungan FACE telah banyak mengukir prestasi, baik di tingkat nasional maupun internasional. Lebih dari itu, sebagai langkah menghadirkan ekosistem internasional, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakery telah menerima mahasiswa asing dan sejak tahun 2017, kami telah menerima mahasiswa asing dari beberapa negara, di antaranya dari negara Jepang, Pakistan, Filipina, Irak, dan Timur Leste. Tak hanya itu, kami telah melakukan banyak kerjasama, baik dalam skala nasional maupun internasional. Pada akhirnya, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial berkomitmen penuh dalam mendukung visi UNES Bakri dalam mencapai a globally recognized university. Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri saat ini hadir dengan empat program studi serata satu dan dua program studi magister. Di umur yang terbilang muda, kami bersyukur telah meraih sejumlah capaian strategik, baik di level nasional maupun internasional. Pada level internasional, berdasarkan pemberkatan Times Higher Education, selama dua tahun berturut-turut, di tahun 2021 dan tahun 2022, Universitas Bakri meraih peringkat perguruan tinggi swasta terbaik di Jakarta yang mendukung agenda pembangunan berkelanjutan atau SDGs. Sedangkan pada level nasional di tahun 2021, kami juga telah memasuk dalam jajaran 100 besar perguruan tinggi berprestasi di tingkat nasional, serta sejumlah capaian lainnya baik di bidang penelitian, kerjasama, dan pengembangan fasilitas. Dalam struktur organisasi di Universitas Bakri, untuk mencapai daya saing internasional, mulai tahun 2019 telah membentuk kantor internasional office. Sebagai organisasi pendidikan, tentunya kami telah memenuhi standar mutu yang ada. Saat ini, kami telah menerapkan ISO 21001-2018 di dalam lingkungan pendidikan kami. Semua program studi di lingkungan FACE saat ini telah mendapatkan penjaminan mutu dari pihak eksternal dalam negeri, yaitu BANPT dan LAMEMBA, dan memiliki akreditasi internasional adopsi pada AUN QA dan FIBA A, serta memiliki 40 standar mutu yang meliputi bidang pendidikan pengajaran, penelitian, pengabdian kepada masyarakat, dan penunjang lainnya. Dalam tiga tahun terakhir, mahasiswa di lingkungan FACE telah banyak mengukir prestasi, baik di tingkat nasional maupun internasional.
Lebih dari itu, sebagai langkah menghadirkan ekosistem internasional, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri telah menerima mahasiswa asing dan sejak tahun 2017, kami telah menerima mahasiswa asing dari beberapa negara diantaranya dari negara Jepang, Pakistan, Filipina, Irak, dan Timur Leste. Tak hanya itu, kami telah melakukan banyak kerjasama baik dalam skala nasional maupun internasional. Pada akhirnya, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial berkomitmen penuh dalam mendukung visi UNES Bakri dalam mencapai a globally recognized university. Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri saat ini hadir dengan empat program studi serata satu dan dua program studi magister. Di umur yang terbilang muda, kami bersyukur telah meraih sejumlah capaian strategik, baik di level nasional maupun internasional. Pada level internasional, berdasarkan pemberkatan Times Higher Education, selama dua tahun berturut-turut, di tahun 2021 dan tahun 2022, Universitas Bakri meraih peringkat perguruan tinggi swasta terbaik di Jakarta yang mendukung agenda pembangunan berkelanjutan atau SDGs. Sedangkan pada level nasional di tahun 2021, kami juga telah memasuk dalam jajaran 100 besar perguruan tinggi berprestasi di tingkat nasional, serta sejumlah capaian lainnya baik di bidang penelitian, kerjasama, dan pengembangan fasilitas. Dalam struktur organisasi di Universitas Bakri, untuk mencapai daya saing internasional, mulai tahun 2019 telah membentuk kantor International Office. Sebagai organisasi pendidikan, tentunya kami telah memenuhi standar mutu yang ada. Saat ini, kami telah menerapkan ISO 21001-2018 di dalam lingkungan pendidikan kami. Semua program studi di lingkungan FACE saat ini telah mendapatkan penjaminan mutu dari pihak eksternal dalam negeri, yaitu BAN PT dan LAMEMBA, dan memiliki akreditasi internasional adopsi pada AUN QA dan FIBA A, serta memiliki 40 standar mutu yang meliputi bidang pendidikan pengajaran, penelitian, pengabdian kepada masyarakat, dan penunjang lainnya. Dalam tiga tahun terakhir, mahasiswa di lingkungan FACE telah banyak mengukir prestasi, baik di tingkat nasional maupun internasional. Lebih dari itu, sebagai langkah menghadirkan ekosistem internasional, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri telah menerima mahasiswa asing dan sejak tahun 2017, kami telah menerima mahasiswa asing dari beberapa negara, diantaranya dari negara Jepang, Pakistan, Filipina, Irak, dan Timur Leste. Tak hanya itu, kami telah melakukan banyak kerjasama, baik dalam skala nasional maupun internasional. Pada akhirnya, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial berkomitmen penuh dalam mendukung visi UNES Bakri dalam mencapai a globally recognized university.
Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri saat ini hadir dengan 4 program studi serata satu dan 2 program studi magister. Di umur yang terbilang muda, kami bersyukur telah meraih sejumlah capaian strategik, baik di level nasional maupun internasional. Pada level internasional, berdasarkan pemberkatan Times Higher Education, selama 2 tahun berturut-turut, di tahun 2021 dan tahun 2022, Universitas Bakri meraih peringkat perguruan tinggi swasta terbaik di Jakarta yang mendukung agenda pembangunan berkelanjutan atau SDGs. Sedangkan pada level nasional di tahun 2021, kami juga telah memasuk dalam jajaran 100 besar perguruan tinggi berprestasi di tingkat nasional, serta sejumlah capaian lainnya baik di bidang penelitian, kerjasama, dan pengembangan fasilitas. Dalam struktur organisasi di Universitas Bakri, untuk mencapai daya saing internasional, mulai tahun 2019 telah membentuk kantor International Office. Sebagai organisasi pendidikan, tentunya kami telah memenuhi standar mutu yang ada. Saat ini, kami telah menerapkan ISO 21001-2018 di dalam lingkungan pendidikan kami. Semua program studi di lingkungan FES saat ini telah mendapatkan penjaminan mutu dari pihak eksternal dalam negeri, yaitu Ban PT dan Lamemba, dan memiliki akreditasi internasional adopsi pada AUN QA dan FIBA A, serta memiliki 40 standar mutu yang meliputi bidang pendidikan pengajaran, penelitian, pengabdian kepada masyarakat, dan penunjang lainnya. Dalam tiga tahun terakhir, mahasiswa di lingkungan FES telah banyak mengukir prestasi, baik di tingkat nasional maupun internasional. Lebih dari itu, sebagai langkah menghadirkan ekosistem internasional, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri telah menerima mahasiswa asing dan sejak tahun 2017, kami telah menerima mahasiswa asing dari beberapa negara, di antaranya dari negara Jepang, Pakistan, Filipina, Irak, dan Timur Leste. Tak hanya itu, kami telah melakukan banyak kerjasama, baik dalam skala nasional maupun internasional. Pada akhirnya, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial berkomitmen penuh dalam mendukung visi UNES Bakri dalam mencapai a globally recognized university. Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri saat ini hadir dengan empat program studi serata satu dan dua program studi magister. Di umur yang terbilang muda, kami bersyukur telah meraih sejumlah capaian strategik, baik di level nasional maupun internasional. Pada level internasional, berdasarkan pemberkatan Times Higher Education, selama dua tahun berturut-turut, di tahun 2021 dan tahun 2022, Universitas Bakri meraih peringkat perguruan tinggi swasta terbaik di Jakarta yang mendukung agenda pembangunan berkelanjutan atau SDGs. Sedangkan pada level nasional di tahun 2021, kami juga telah memasuk dalam jajaran 100 besar perguruan tinggi berprestasi di tingkat nasional, serta sejumlah capaian lainnya baik di bidang penelitian, kerjasama, dan pengembangan fasilitas.
dalam struktur organisasi di Universitas Bakri untuk mencapai daya saing internasional mulai tahun 2019 telah membentuk kantor international office. Sebagai organisasi pendidikan, tentunya kami telah memenuhi standar mutu yang ada. Saat ini kami telah menerapkan ISO 21001-2018 di dalam lingkungan pendidikan kami. Semua program studi di lingkungan FACE saat ini telah mendapatkan penjaminan mutu dari pihak eksternal dalam negeri, yaitu BANPT dan LAMEMBA, dan memiliki akreditasi internasional adopsi pada AUN QA dan FIBA A, serta memiliki 40 standar mutu yang meliputi bidang pendidikan pengajaran, penelitian, pengabdian kepada masyarakat, dan penunjang lainnya. Dalam tiga tahun terakhir, mahasiswa di lingkungan FACE telah banyak mengukir prestasi, baik di tingkat nasional maupun internasional. Lebih dari itu, sebagai langkah menghadirkan ekosistem internasional, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri telah menerima mahasiswa asing dan sejak tahun 2017, kami telah menerima mahasiswa asing dari beberapa negara, di antaranya dari negara Jepang, Pakistan, Filipina, Irak, dan Timur Leste. Tak hanya itu, kami telah melakukan banyak kerjasama, baik dalam skala nasional maupun internasional. Pada akhirnya, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial berkomitmen penuh dalam mendukung visi UNES Bakri dalam mencapai a globally recognized university. Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri saat ini hadir dengan empat program studi strata 1 dan dua program studi magister. Di umur yang terbilang muda, kami bersyukur telah meraih sejumlah capaian strategik, baik di level nasional maupun internasional. Pada level internasional, berdasarkan pemberkatan Times Higher Education, selama dua tahun berturut-turut, di tahun 2021 dan tahun 2022, Universitas Bakri meraih peringkat perguruan tinggi swasta terbaik di Jakarta yang mendukung agenda pembangunan berkelanjutan atau SDGs. Sedangkan pada level nasional di tahun 2021, kami juga telah memasuk dalam jajaran 100 besar perguruan tinggi berprestasi di tingkat nasional, serta sejumlah capaian lainnya baik di bidang penelitian, kerjasama, dan pengembangan fasilitas. Dalam struktur organisasi di Universitas Bakri, untuk mencapai daya saing internasional, mulai tahun 2019 telah membentuk kantor international office. Sebagai organisasi pendidikan, tentunya kami telah memenuhi standar mutu yang ada. Saat ini, kami telah menerapkan ISO 21001-2018 di dalam lingkungan pendidikan kami. Semua program studi di lingkungan FACE saat ini telah mendapatkan penjaminan mutu dari pihak eksternal dalam negeri, yaitu BANPT dan LAMEMBA dan memiliki akreditasi internasional adopsi pada AUN QA dan FIBA A, serta memiliki 40 standar mutu yang meliputi bidang pendidikan pengajaran, penelitian, pengabdian kepada masyarakat, dan penunjang lainnya. Dalam tiga tahun terakhir, mahasiswa di lingkungan FACE telah banyak mengukir prestasi, baik di tingkat nasional maupun internasional.
Lebih dari itu, sebagai langkah menghadirkan ekosistem internasional, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri telah menerima mahasiswa asing dan sejak tahun 2017 kami telah menerima mahasiswa asing dari beberapa negara di antaranya dari negara Jepang, Pakistan, Filipina, Irak, dan Timur Leste. Tak hanya itu, kami telah melakukan banyak kerjasama baik dalam skala nasional maupun internasional. Pada akhirnya, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial berkomitmen penuh dalam mendukung visi Unis Bakri dalam mencapai a globally recognized university. Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri saat ini hadir dengan empat program studi serata satu dan dua program studi magister. Di umur yang terbilang muda, kami bersyukur telah meraih sejumlah capaian strategik, baik di level nasional maupun internasional. Pada level internasional, berdasarkan pemberkatan Times Higher Education, selama dua tahun berturut-turut di tahun 2021 dan tahun 2022, Univers Bakri meraih peringkat perguruan tinggi swasta terbaik di Jakarta yang mendukung agenda pembangunan berkelanjutan atau SDGs. Sedangkan pada level nasional di tahun 2021 kami juga telah masuk dalam jajaran 100 besar nasional serta sejumlah capaian lainnya baik di bidang penelitian, kerjasama dan pengembangan fasilitas. Dalam struktur organisasi di Universitas Bakri, untuk mencapai daya saing internasional, mulai tahun 2019 telah membentuk kantor internasional office. Sebagai organisasi pendidikan, tentunya kami telah memenuhi standar mutu yang ada. Saat ini, kami telah menerapkan ISO 21001-2018 di dalam lingkungan pendidikan kami. Semua program studi di lingkungan FACE saat ini telah mendapatkan penjaminan mutu dari pihak eksternal dalam negeri, yaitu BAN PT dan LAMEMBA, dan memiliki akreditasi internasional adopsi pada AUN QA dan FIBA A, serta memiliki 40 standar mutu yang meliputi bidang pendidikan pengajaran, penelitian, pengabdian kepada masyarakat, dan penunjang lainnya. Dalam tiga tahun terakhir, mahasiswa di lingkungan FACE telah banyak mengukir prestasi, baik di tingkat nasional maupun internasional. Lebih dari itu, sebagai langkah menghadirkan ekosistem internasional, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri telah menerima mahasiswa asing dan sejak tahun 2017, kami telah menerima mahasiswa asing dari beberapa negara di antaranya dari negara Jepang, Pakistan, Filipina, Irak, dan Timur Leste. Tak hanya itu, kami telah melakukan banyak kerjasama baik dalam skala nasional maupun internasional. Pada akhirnya, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial berkomitmen penuh dalam mendukung visi Unis Bakri dalam mencapai a globally recognized university.
Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri saat ini hadir dengan 4 program studi strata 1 dan 2 program studi magister. Di umur yang terbilang muda, kami bersyukur telah meraih sejumlah capaian strategik, baik di level nasional maupun internasional. Pada level internasional, berdasarkan pemberkatan Times Higher Education, selama 2 tahun berturut-turut, di tahun 2021 dan tahun 2022, Universitas Bakri meraih peringkat perguruan tinggi swasta terbaik di Jakarta yang mendukung agenda pembangunan berkelanjutan atau SDGs. Sedangkan pada level nasional di tahun 2021, kami juga telah memasuk dalam jajaran 100 besar perguruan tinggi berprestasi di tingkat nasional, serta sejumlah capaian lainnya baik di bidang penelitian, kerjasama, dan pengembangan fasilitas. Dalam struktur organisasi di Universitas Bakri, untuk mencapai daya saing internasional, mulai tahun 2019 telah membentuk kantor International Office. Sebagai organisasi pendidikan, tentunya kami telah memenuhi standar mutu yang ada. Saat ini, kami telah menerapkan ISO 21001-2018 di dalam lingkungan pendidikan kami. Semua program studi di lingkungan FACE saat ini telah mendapatkan penjaminan mutu dari pihak eksternal dalam negeri, yaitu Ban PT dan Lamemba, dan memiliki akreditasi internasional adopsi pada AUN QA dan FIBA A, serta memiliki 40 standar mutu yang meliputi bidang pendidikan pengajaran, penelitian, pengabdian kepada masyarakat, dan penunjang lainnya. Dalam tiga tahun terakhir, mahasiswa di lingkungan FACE telah banyak mengukir prestasi, baik di tingkat nasional maupun internasional. Lebih dari itu, sebagai langkah menghadirkan ekosistem internasional, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial Universitas Bakri telah menerima mahasiswa asing dan sejak tahun 2017, kami telah menerima mahasiswa asing dari beberapa negara, di antaranya dari negara Jepang, Pakistan, Filipina, Irak, dan Timur Leste. Tak hanya itu, kami telah melakukan banyak kerjasama, baik dalam skala nasional maupun internasional. Pada akhirnya, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Ilmu Sosial berkomitmen penuh dalam mendukung visi UNES Bakri dalam mencapai a globally recognized university.
We believe that everyone should have equal access to learn, share their knowledge, and enhance their research capabilities. Enhancement, empowerment, creating impact and value are the most needed aspect that researchers and scholars encounter. Recently, upholding integrity in the scientific process has become one of the issues that we are aware of and need to be tackled. To tackle the problem arising in the recent communities, we should collaborate among all stakeholders to accelerate the impact to our society. Thus, Research Synergy Foundation support and commit to all stakeholders by creating a global research ecosystem. We are a digital social enterprise platform that focuses on developing a global research ecosystem. We build collaborative networks among researchers, scholars, professors, and practitioners globally for the realizations of knowledge accelerations and to contribute more to society and humanity. From 2017 to 2021, more than 20,000 scholars have participated in our programs from Asia, Australia, Africa, America, and Europe continents. With the average of the increasing number of members by more than 5,000 each year, we continuously strengthen the global research ecosystem by having four support systems that are ready to help members from across the world. First, we have ScholarVane. It's a system that we developed for scholars to contribute more. Supported by an established IT system and professional team, one of the superior services we provide is the Integrated International Conference Management and Operating System. ScholarVane system has been conducting the International Conferences platform both in person and virtual effectively and efficiently in terms of time, cost, and resource. From 2017 to 2021, the system has served over 8,448 scholars from 85 countries. ScholarVane coverage areas include but are not limited to the online submission system, pre, during, post of conference, scientific review system, global marketing system, and publication system. All-in-one scholar system for transparency and credibility in every scientific forum and activity. Review Track is a home for thousands of researchers and reviewers from all around the globe. With who we partnered to create a global network to assist in the assessment and feedback of your research. Artificial intelligence powers our reviewer track, ensuring that the scientific process runs smoothly and reliably. The main goal is to emphasize the importance of the ethical process of blind or double-blind peer review. Call for reviewers and collaboration with our university partners are just a few of the projects under reviewer track. We also provide reviewer workshops and training, annual reviewers recognition event, and many more. As a result, reviewer track represents our dedication to uphold scientific integrity. Research Maggie Institute is committed to being your research learning partner by providing some learning programs such as online lecturing session, as expert forum, as editor forum, global research ecosystem network group, RSF Research Academy, scientific and academic writing, e-coaching clinic series, tour, publication in reputable indexed journal. Research Nagi Institutes provide the most needed research learning topics, cutting-edge research tools, and expert opinion from different backgrounds to put a global perspective for all researchers and scholars. Research Synergy Press, we are providing and managing international journals for your institution toward global and reputable indexers. The mission of Research Synergy Press is to deliver breakthrough professional journal management using strategic paper collaborations. Increasing diversity and resulting in good quality of scientific research for all researchers professional and academician through a standardized scientific process. We help you to manage international journals to global standards. 
You can even publish your scientific work in our journals, conference proceedings, and books. And now, Research Synergy Press publishes more than dozens of international journals, conference proceeding series, and single conference proceeding. Empowerment and encouragement are the two keywords that drive our social programs for leveraging the impact, such as conference grant, international service program, paper writing collaboration, connecting research parties or stakeholder gathering, the annual social entrepreneurship challenge, shared value co-creation programs, we believe that every individual, organizations, and research community has the same opportunity to share the value of creating an impactful program together with us. As a social enterprise, our aim is to provide a good research ecosystem and platform for researchers to share, discuss, and disseminate their ideas. In addition, it helps you to improve your research and contribute to the knowledge. Therefore, creating social impact and value is our priority. In the other hand, you can collaborate with us to our worldwide scholars and initiate betterment for the academy, society, and humanity. The the of of Research Synergy Foundation Global Research Ecosystem is the perfect combination among researchers, scholars, professors, and practitioners. We embrace all of our members to lend in hand, take action for a better society, and grow together with the Research Synergy Foundation. We believe that everyone should have equal access to learn, share their knowledge, and enhance their research capabilities. Enhancement, empowerment, creating impact and value are the most needed aspects that researchers and scholars encounter. Recently, upholding integrity in the scientific process has become one of the issues that we are aware of and need to be tackled. To tackle the problem arising in the recent communities, we should collaborate among all stakeholders to accelerate the impact to our society. Thus, Research Synergy Foundation support and commit to all stakeholders by creating a global research ecosystem. We are a digital social enterprise platform that focuses on developing a global research ecosystem. We build collaborative networks among researchers, scholars, professors, and practitioners globally for the realizations of knowledge accelerations and to contribute more to society and humanity. From 2017 to 2021, more than 20,000 scholars have participated in our programs from Asia, Australia, Africa, America, and Europe continents. With the average of the increasing number of members by more than 5,000 each year, we continuously strengthen the global research ecosystem by having four support systems that are ready to help members from across the world. First, we have ScholarVean. It's a system that we developed for scholars to contribute more. Supported by an established IT system and professional team, one of the superior services we provide is the Integrated International Conference Management and Operating System. 
Scholar Vane System has been conducting the International Conferences platform both in person and virtual effectively and efficiently in terms of time, cost, and resource. From 2017 to 2021, the system has served over 8,448 scholars from 85 countries. Scholar vein coverage areas include but are not limited to the online submission system, pre, during, post of conference, scientific review system, global marketing system, and publication system. All-in-one scholar system for transparency and credibility in every scientific forum and activity. Review Track is a home for thousands of researchers and reviewers from all around the globe, with whom we partner to create a global network to assist in the assessment and feedback of your research. Artificial intelligence powers our reviewer track, ensuring that the scientific process runs smoothly and reliably. The main goal is to emphasize the importance of the ethical process of blind or double-blind peer review. Call for reviewers and collaboration with our university partners are just a few of the projects under reviewer track. We also provide reviewer workshops and training, annual reviewers recognition event, and many more. As a result, reviewer track represents our dedication to uphold scientific integrity. Research Negi Institute is committed to being your research learning partner by providing some learning programs such as online lecturing session, as expert forum, as editor forum, global research ecosystem network group, RSF Research Academy, scientific and academic writing e-coaching clinic series toward publication in reputable indexed journal. Research Negi Institutes provide the most needed research learning topics, cutting-edge research tools, and expert opinion from different backgrounds to put a global perspective for all researchers and scholars. Research Negi Press, we are providing and managing international journals for your institution toward global and reputable indexers. The mission of Research Synergy Press is to deliver breakthrough professional journal management using strategic paper collaborations. Increasing diversity and resulting in good quality of scientific research for all researchers, professional and academicians through a standardized scientific process. We help you to manage international journals to global standards. You can even publish your scientific work in our journals, conference proceedings, and books. And now, Research Synergy Press publishes more than dozens of international journals, conference proceeding series, and single conference proceeding. Empowerment and encouragement are the two keywords that drive our social programs for leveraging the impact, such as conference grant. International Service Program Paper Writing Collaboration Connecting Research Parties or Stakeholder Gathering The Annual Social Entrepreneurship Challenge Shared Value Co-Creation Programs We believe that every individual, organizations, and research community has the same opportunity to share the value of creating an impactful program together with us. As a social enterprise, our aim is to provide a good research ecosystem and platform for researchers to share, discuss, and disseminate their ideas. In addition, it helps you to improve your research and contribute to the knowledge. Therefore, creating social impact and value is our priority. In the other hand, you can collaborate with us to our worldwide scholars and initiate betterment for the academy, society, and community. The Agent of of change. Change. Research Synergy Foundation Global Research Ecosystem is the perfect combination among researchers, scholars, professors, and practitioners. We embrace all of our members to lend in hand, take action for a better society, and grow together with the Research Synergy Foundation.
Okay, so for all the participants, so I suppose that all of you are already giving your best effort in delivering your research presentations. However, we still have to wait for a few minutes in order to do the recapitulations of the score that is already filled by the session chairs to determine the best presentations. So please kindly wait for a few minutes while we are finishing the recapitulation for the best presentations. Thank you so much and we will be back in a few minutes. Welcome to Universitas Bakri. Our university has a vision to become globally recognized university through engagement with industries and experiential learning methods. Established as Bakri School of Management in 2006, Universitas Bakri has transformed into one of leading universities in Indonesia in 2010 with 12 study programs. Today, Universitas Bakri has magister programs of management and communication. With hundreds of well-maintained international institution cooperations in the form of student exchange and collaboration research. 
big transformation of one decade has successfully brought Universitas Bakri into number one position in climate change action in 2022 and 15th position of the best university in Indonesia, best on world ranking institution, times higher education. Untuk meningkatkan daya saing bangsa, kelompok usaha Bakri mendukung penuh Universitas Bakri di dalam proses perkuliahan, penelitian, dan inovasi. Melalui kolaborasi yang erat, bersama-sama kami siap menghasilkan sumber daya manusia yang unggul. As industrial university that applies experiential learning method, Universitas Bakri has cooperation network with various agencies, universities, and many national and overseas industrial sectors. Not only students can interact with lecturers, but also with national and international figures, practitioners, CEOs, board of directors in Bakri Group Companies. Saya memilih Universitas Bakri karena dihadapkan dengan dua pilihan, apakah mau menjadi seorang followers atau menjadi seorang leaders. Dan saya memilih untuk menjadi seorang leaders. Universitas Bakri membekali saya kualitas pendidikan yang luar biasa dari para dosen, dan ini yang menjadikan saya seorang entrepreneur sejati. Situated in a strategic environment in epicentrum Jakarta, increases mobility and opportunity for students to feel close experience with variety stakeholders. Universitas Bakri also supports character building with professional value, caring, and innovative, along with student activity unit that develops student skills to follow local, national, and international competition. Pendidikan yang berkualitas dan menghasilkan para lulusan yang memiliki jiwa kewirausahaan dan inovator yang kreatif tanpa batasan bisa memimpin lapangan pekerjaan di dalam negeri maupun di luar negeri hanya bisa didapatkan di Universitas Bakri. Based on the goals to develop cutting edge human resources, Universitas Bakri as part of academic ecosystem that supports every student to achieve many achievements as well as to create innovation and solution for Indonesia and the world. Universitas Bakri, experience the real things.
Welcome to Universitas Bakri. Our university has a vision to become globally recognized university through engagement with industries and experiential learning methods. Established as Bakri School of Management in 2006, Universitas Bakri has transformed into one of leading universities in Indonesia in 2010 with 12 study programs. Today, Universitas Bakri has magister programs of management and communication. With hundreds of well-maintained international institution cooperations in the form of student exchange and collaboration research. Big transformation of one decade has successfully brought Universitas Bakri into number one position in climate change action in 2022 and 15th position of the best university in Indonesia, best on world ranking institution, times higher education. Untuk meningkatkan daya saing bangsa, kelompok usaha Bakri mendukung penuh Universitas Bakri di dalam proses perkuliahan, penelitian, dan inovasi. Melalui kolaborasi yang erat, bersama-sama kami siap menghasilkan sumber daya manusia yang unggul. As industrial university, that applies experiential learning method. Universitas Bakri has cooperation network with various agencies, universities, and many national and overseas industrial sectors. Not only students can interact with lecturers, but also with national and international figures, practitioners, CEOs, board of directors in Bakri group companies. Saya memilih Universitas Bakri karena dihadapkan dengan dua pilihan Apakah mau menjadi seorang followers atau menjadi seorang leaders Dan saya memilih untuk menjadi seorang leaders Universitas Bakri membekali saya kualitas pendidikan yang luar biasa dari para dosen Dan ini yang menjadikan saya seorang entrepreneur sejati Situated in a strategic environment in Epicentrum Jakarta Increases mobility and opportunity for students to feel close experience with a variety of stakeholders. Universitas Bakri also supports character building with professional value, caring, and innovative, along with student activity unit that develops student skills to follow local, national, and international competition. Pendidikan yang berkualitas dan menghasilkan para lulusan yang memiliki jiwa kewirausahaan dan inovator yang kreatif tanpa batasan bisa memimpin lapangan pekerjaan di dalam negeri maupun di luar negeri hanya bisa didapatkan di Universitas Bakri. Based on goals to develop cutting edge human resources, Universitas Bakri as part of academic ecosystem that supports every student to achieve many achievements as well as to create innovation and solution for Indonesia and the world. Universitas Bakri, experience the real things.
We believe that everyone should have equal access to learn, share their knowledge, and enhance their research capabilities. Enhancement, empowerment, creating impact and value are the most needed aspects that researchers and scholars encounter. Recently, upholding integrity in the scientific process has become one of the issues that we are aware of and need to be tackled. To tackle the problem arising in the research communities, we should collaborate among all stakeholders to accelerate the impact to our society. Thus, Research Synergy Foundation support and commit to all stakeholders by creating a global research ecosystem. We are a digital social enterprise platform that focuses on developing a global research ecosystem. We build collaborative networks among researchers, scholars, professors, and practitioners globally for the realizations of knowledge accelerations and to contribute more to society and humanity. From 2017 to 2021, more than 20,000 scholars have participated in our continents. With the average of the increasing number of members by more than 5,000 each year, we continuously strengthen the global research ecosystem by having four support systems that are ready to help members from across the world. First, we have ScholarVane. It's a system that we developed for scholars to contribute more. Supported by an established IT system and professional team, one of the superior services we provide is the Integrated International Conference Management and Operating System. ScholarVane system has been conducting the International Conferences platform both in person and virtual effectively and efficiently in terms of time, cost, and resource. From 2017 to 2021, the system has served over 8,448 scholars from 85 countries. ScholarVane coverage areas include but are not limited to the online submission system, pre, during, post of conference, scientific review system, global marketing system, and publication system. All-in-one scholar system for transparency and credibility in every scientific forum and activity. Review Track is a home for thousands of researchers and reviewers from all around the globe. With whom we partner to create a global network to assist in the assessment and feedback of your research. Artificial intelligence powers our reviewer track, ensuring that the scientific process runs smoothly and reliably. The main goal is to emphasize the importance of the ethical process of blind or double-blind peer review. Call for reviewers and collaboration with our university partners are just a few of the projects under reviewer track. We also provide reviewer workshops and training, annual reviewers recognition event, and many more. As a result, Reviewer Track represents our dedication to uphold scientific integrity. Research Nagi Institute is committed to being your research learning partner by providing some learning programs such as online lecturing session, as expert forum, as editor forum, global research ecosystem network group, RSF Research Academy, scientific and academic writing e-coaching clinic series toward publication in reputable indexed journal. Research Nagi Institutes provide the most needed research learning topics, cutting-edge research tools, and expert opinion from different backgrounds to put a global perspective for all researchers and scholars. Research Nagi Press, we are providing and managing international journals for your institution toward global and reputable indexers. The mission of Research Synergy Press is to deliver breakthrough professional journal management using strategic paper collaborations. Increasing diversity and resulting in good quality of scientific research for all researchers, professional and academicians through a standardized scientific process. 
we help you to manage international journals to global standards. You can even publish your scientific work in our journals, conference proceedings, and books. And now, Research Synergy Press publishes more than dozens of international journals, conference proceeding series, and single conference proceeding. Empowerment and encouragement are the two keywords that drive our social programs for leveraging the impact, such as conference grant, international service program, paper writing collaboration, connecting research parties or stakeholder gathering, the annual social entrepreneurship challenge, shared value co-creation programs. We believe that every individual, organizations, and research community has the same opportunity to share the value of creating an impactful program together with us. As a social enterprise, our aim is to provide a good research ecosystem and platform for researchers to share, discuss, and disseminate their ideas. In addition, it helps you to improve your research and contribute to the knowledge. Therefore, creating social impact and value is our priority. In the other hand, you can collaborate with us to our worldwide scholars and initiate betterments for the academy, society, and community. The Agent Agent of change. Change. Research Synergy Foundation Global Research Ecosystem is the perfect combination among researchers, scholars, professors, and practitioners. We embrace all of our members to lend in hand, take action for a better society, and grow together with the Research Synergy Foundation.
So, Excellency, distinguished guests, delegates, ladies and gentlemen, so once again, welcome back to this main room of the Bicompact 2023. So once again, thank you so much for all the excitement today at the Bakri International Conference on Communications, Management, Politics, and Accounting, or Bicompact 2023. So thank you also for staying with us through the sessions. We, once again, we would like to remind to all participants to kindly fill the feedback forms of Bicompact 2023. Moreover, we would like to reminds once again about uh, to the all participants about how to claim and get the e-certificates so once again please kindly do the instruction as the committee already said and also the committee will help in type in the zoom chat again so as we have already informed before by the end of today conference we will announce the best presentation the best student achievement the best paper and also recognition for the session chair so the first awarding session is the best presentation award. So the session chairs had selected the best presentation based on several criteria. So in the assessment. So once again, thank you so much to all the presenter that already gave his or her best effort in delivering the research through the presentations. So today in the Become Back 2023, there are six best presentations or six best presenters. So on this occasion, we would like to give a special token of appreciation and recognition to the best presenters. So we would like to invite, please welcome, Bapak Dr. Dudi Rudianto as the Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Social Science, Universitas Bakri, to give away the e-certificate as the token of appreciation and recognition to the best presentations of Bicompact 2023. Please welcome Bapak Dr. Dudi. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ibu Santi. Uh, I will to announce the best presentation be compact 20 and 23. Uh, congrats for the best presentation. Who is that? Okay, the best presenter <laughs> certificate in the 2023. Uh, congrats for Nur Edi Nomalisa from Universitas Momedia Yogyakarta. Okay, congrats. Pak Edi Nur Edi normal normalisa. And then certificate of best presentation. We Anggia Rik Madini from Bakri University. Congrats, Dwi Anggia. And the next. Wow, <laughs> the best presenter again, Bapak Arif B. Suharko, Bakri University, Congrats, Pak Arif. Oh my God, <laughs> the next, the best presenter, Prof. Muhammad Taufik Amir from Bakri University again. Congrats, Prof. Muhammad Taufik Amir. Oh, the best presenter again. Bapak Sri Fugadi Sukso. And the title, Carbon Emission Disclosure. From Accounting Perspective. Congrats, uh, Sri Fugadi Susilo and team. Okay, the next, Zara Aulia Zen of Best Presentation again from Bakri University. Congrats, Zara Zen. Good job. Okay, thank you so much, Pak Dudi, and also congratulations to all six best 
presenters in BCOMPAC 2023. So thank you so much. Okay, now we will continue to the next awarding session. Okay, so the second awarding session is the best student achievement. So the conference program committee had selected among students who have outstanding and great performance in the Big Compact 2023. So the assessment was done during the, submiss the submissions and of course, today's conference performance. So in Big Compact 2023, we have four awards, yeah? So we have the best students, we have the runner up one, runner up two, and runner up three. So we hope that this will be a motivation for all the awardees and also to other students to always strive for their best and to also encourage others to be involved in active environment of research and also knowledge. So in this occasion, we would like to welcome Dr. Jurika Lucianda as the conference chair of Big Compact 2023 to give away the e-certificate as the token of appreciation and recognition to the best student achievement in Big Compact 2023. Please welcome Ibu Jurika. Okay, so hold on for a while, Ibu. Still unmute. Okay, yeah. Hold on for a while, Ibu. Uh, we have some technical issue here. All right. So while uh, having while waiting, I do apologize for this. So while waiting for the announcement, yeah. Perhaps Ibu Jurika want to say something while we are fixing this problem for the students' encouragement, Ibu. Okay, thank you, Busanti. This is the uh, for the student achievement is encourage student to doing uh, research here yeah, for the for the now and future. Uh, I think we still need we're still waiting for the this student achievement, is that right, Busanti? Yes, Ibu. So while we are preparing actually now we are in contact some minor technical issue so perhaps while we are doing some recovering things okay right hold on okay perhaps you want to say something Ibu, the encouragement statement for all the students particularly yes i, I hope uh uh the chief student achievement it's encourage student for research for the for for now and the future so that was that's why we released uh the student achievements to encourage them to doing research. Okay, so hopefully that uh, in this big compact is uh, become a trigger, yeah, Bujurika, yeah, a yes, trigger for right. all the students, yeah, to be involved more deeply in the research, yeah. So actually, in this achievement, so there will be four students, yeah, there will be four students. Okay, now we are back, Bujurika. All right, so now I will uh, give again the floor to you, Ibu Jurika, to congratulate the best student achievement. Yes, please welcome Ibu. Oh, so congratulations to Amara Faratahar for the, the student achievement, the best student achievement. Okay, run up at once. The certificate award, uh, awarded to Iksan Aditimulo, Aditimulo for the best achievement, student's achievement. And the next 
Ooh, we see, we see your her. Okay, congratulations to Ratu Anggin Dwi Fortuna from Ratu University. And the next runner up three. Congratulations to Amara Tufani from Bakri University. Okay, so that's all Ibu Jurika. So there are four students that are already achieving the best student achievement. So hopefully by this recognition and also achievement also will be their added value, yeah, Ibu, yeah. For the after yes, the graduations. Sure. All right. Yes. Thank you so much, Ibu Thank Jurika. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we are moving on to the third award category is for the best paper award. So the conference scientific review committee already select the best paper during the submission and review process. So the criteria for determining the best paper are first, submitting the full paper within the time. Second, no notes in ethical consideration, pass the plagiarism checking and also citation appropriateness. Third is no revision or only having a minor revision in the previous review during submission. Fourth is format or template alignment. Fifth, novelty of the content. And last but not least is academic, practical and societal contribution or the impact. So in the Bakri International Conference on Communication, Management, Politics and Accounting or BCOM back 2023, we have two best papers, okay? So on this occasion, we would like to give a special token of appreciation and recognition. So once again, please welcome Bapak Dr. Dudi Rudianto as the Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Social Science, Universitas Bakri, to congratulate the best paper. Please welcome Bapak Dudi. Okay, I will announce the best paper in the Compact 20 and 23 is... The winner is OOO Collaboration Auto Triputu Permayanti Kadek Enik Suyatini Kadek Juli Andriani Dominika and Holly Lahata The team researchers from Baku University Congratulations for the team and the best teacher. And then the next, the best paper. Oh, the team researchers include Ahmad Fauzi, Jurika Julianda, <laughs> Padil Permana, Tiffany, and Mila Novita. Congratulations for the team and of the best paper. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, thank you, okay. Pak Dudi, and also okay, congratulations welcome. to the best paper, yeah. So for the best paper, for sure, you will be recommended to the Scopus Journal oh, publication. Oh, 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 oh. Congratulations, all right. Okay, so we will proceed because we still have one more awarding session. So moving on to our last award category is for the session chairs. So on behalf of mm. the organizing committee, we would like to appreciate and also thanks to all the session chairs today because with his or her contributions during the presentation sessions, the scientific forum, the feedback, the discussions and knowledge sharing environment has been built to encourage the participation from all the participants. So once again, perhaps in this occasion, I would like to invite Pak Dudi and also Ibu Jurika together to give a token of appreciation to all the session chairs involved in a Big Compact 2023. So once again, please welcome Bapak Dudi and also Ibu Jurika. Thank you, Bu Santi. Please the first, Bu Jurika. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for all participants and uh, session chair. To all session chairs, I appreciate to Dr. Suparchat 
Wan Ratu Nadatanako from Thailand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then the next essential recognition to Miss Karen Angkarian from Malaysia. Thank you so much, Miss Karen. The next recognition to appreciation from Dr. Ju Ting Wei from Taiwan. Thank you so much for Dr. Ju Ting Wei. Okay, thank you, Pak Dudi. Thank you to Dr. Ma Elena Estevel from Technology Institute of the Philippines for your contribution as session chair. And thank you to Dr. Saddam Ahazea from Southern University of Finance and Economic, Chengdu, Sichuan, China, for your contribution. <laughs> thank you to Dr. Yeo Jian Ai from Multimedia thank University of Malaysia for your contribution as session chair. Thank you, Prof. All right. So once again, thank you to all the session chair for the very great involvement and also your support in Big Compact 2023. And of course, thank you to Ibu Yurika and also Padudi. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, so for the last agenda in the closing ceremony is the closing speech. So once again, <laughs> okay, next slide. Oh, this is the, the reminder yeah, to claim the e-certificate, the e-certificates. Yeah. So once again, please do not forget to claim your certificate of attendance in the Global Research Ecosystem Community Platforms. Next slide. Next. <laughs> 
All right, so we would like to invite as the final agenda of Be Compact 2023, the final one, we would like to invite the Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Social Science Universitas Bakri, Bapak Dr. Dudi Rudianto, to give the closing speech at Be Compact 2023. But before, Bapak Dr. Dudi, closing, I mean, delivering the closing speech, allow me to read his profile first. Okay. So, Bapak, allow me to read your profile first, ya, Pak? Okay. Yeah. So, Dr. Dudi served as the Dean of the <clears throat> Faculty of Economics and Social Science at Bakri University and holds a permanent lecturer position in the Master of Management Study Program. So, he earned his doctoral degree from Pajajaran University in 2007 and has wide experience as a financial and investment management trainer in various private companies, state-owned entities, and government institutions. So, with expertise in corporate finance, personal finance, investment management, project management, and strategic management. So Dr. Judy actively engaged in publishing publications and providing community service related to financial and investment materials. So now he is currently involved as a lecturer in financial management and investment across undergraduate, master's, and doctoral program at both public and private universities in Bandung and Jakarta. So furthermore, Dr. Dudi is registered as the Senior Accreditation Assessor at BANPT and also LAMEMBA. So despite his background in financial management, he expressed a belief that the realism or the realm of the finance and sustainability are integrally, intricately connected rather than separate entities. So in his perspective, the evolving world demands a broader outlook in financial management, extending beyond evaluating investment and assessing risk. So Dr. Dudi emphasized the growing urgency for sustainable practice, highlighting that challenges such as climate change, resource scarcity, and ecosystem depletion are not solely environmental concern, but also significantly financial challenge. He, unders he underscores the substantial risk this issue posed to the realism of business, industry, and economy at large. So without further ado, please welcome Dr. Dudi Rudianto to deliver the close speech. Please welcome, Bapak. Oke, okay, thank you, Bu Santi. <clears throat> Excellencies, presenter, attendees, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm very honored and delighted to deliver the concluding remark of Be Compact 20 and 23, organized by the Faculty of Economic and Social Science, Bakri University, in partnership with Research Synergy Foundation supported by United Tractor member of Astra, Scholar Spain Reviewer Track, and the other uh, community. The community successfully hosted the event. Breakout session and all presentation were delivered with minimum technical issues. I believe that during the, this conference, we have all had insightful, interactive discussion and great chance to share the outcome of our research. I would like to thank all participants, keynote speaker, presenter, attendees, and session chair from various countries who have already given their best contribution to this Be Compact 20 and 23. Next, my sense gratitude and thank you so much finally to all the committee members for their hard work. Therefore, let me wish all of our energy, enthusiasm, share trust and resolve on our way toward achieving a better future for all. The Compact 2023 said like on the urgent need to engage scholarship in contributing the transformation, resilience, and sustainability of our society. The interdisciplinary nature of sustainability science and development studies and emphasize the crucial role of trans, uh, transdisciplinary research and education. The paper presented at the conference underscore the vital role of universities, higher education institution, government, society, 
and related stakeholder in leading the transition towards sustainability society. Finally, in conclusion, the Be Compact 2023 with the conference theme on advancing sustainability provided valuable insight to the strategic approach needed for a changing world. Last but not the least, thank you so much for the great contribution and hope that the knowledge and touch share in this conference. No network and not friendship will be fruitful for all of us and could increase our professional development in the future. Congratulations, the winner and award section for best student achievement, best presentation, best paper, and session chair recognition. See you at our upcoming event. Keep in touch and thank you so much, very much for your attention and stay safe and healthy. Best regard. Thank you so much, Busanti. Thank you so much, Padudi. Thank you so much for the very touching closing speech <laughs> in the Big Compact 2023. Thank you so much, Bapa. All right. And the next as the recognition, of course, and also the appreciation from the organizing committee, we would like to give a token of appreciation to Bapak Dr. Dudi Rudianto for his closing speech. So in this occasion, we would like to welcome Dr. Jurika Lucianda as the conference chair of Be Compact 2023. Please welcome Ibu Jurika. Okay, thank you, Busanti. <laughs> from me to him. <laughs> My best day. <laughs> Okay, congrats. Uh, thank you, Pak Dudi, uh, okay. for your uh, contribution as a uh, speaker. Yeah, actually, the uh, closing, yeah, closing remarks speakers uh, uh, to the Be Compact 2023. Thank you. All right, so once again, thank you so much, Padudi. Thank you so much, Ibu Jurika. Thank you. All right, so finally, we are at the end of the Bakri International Conference on Communication, Management, Politics, and Accounting, Be Compact 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants and attendees, we hope it has been a beneficial and fruitful day for all of you. So thank you to all the distinguished participants for taking the time to joining us here since the morning until this late afternoon on the Be Compact 2023. So it has been our pleasure to host this hybrid international conference event so see you again on the next be compact perhaps in 2024 so please take a good rest stay healthy and safe thank you and see you again so thank you so much everyone thank you Bye -bye. Thank, thank you, you everyone so okay thank you Pak Dudi, Bujurika. thank you dr way okay